it's going to be a while before you get in that girl's pants. Why you say that? Seriously? We's got the mojo, baby. Yeah, why would you? Why would you knock his game like yeah, that? She's shy. She is very shy. She's very shy. And she's not sure about you. Why do you say that? She's the first boy that's paid attention to her in a while. A while? A while. A while. A while. It's been a while. Would you like to put a money wager on that? Wait, How Wings, you're making a wager on when you can get so this girl's shy. pants? Yes. Either she's going to be so shy that she says yes, or she's going to keep freaking out and saying no. She has never said no yet because the question had been popped when yet. you offered to let her... There's been a hand over her mouth. And she said, no, I'm going home. She left. She left. Yep. She's supposed to come back tomorrow, though. And keep in mind, she got off work today knowing that I knew PK at 8 and still wanted to come over. Well, yeah. And she doesn't live close. She lives like 40 minutes away. Does she leave in, I'll live in Surfside? She lives at Family Kingdom. Okay. So is that like an amusement park or something? It's, it's, right, it's a music park. And she lives near. Oh. So okay, well, it's not too terrible. At least it's not Surfside. It's not it Surfside. It's Surfside. <laughs> is crazy. I, I don't know anything about Surfside, but it sounds like girls from Surfside would put out. That girls bitch is crazy. from Surfside will put out, yes. <laughs> this one I'm not so sure about. <laughs> she seems nice enough, though. She she is very shy because she, she made the uh, the statement today. She asked me, is the house always this full? Because in in my mind, that tells me that she was ready to go today, but she didn't want to do it with everybody in the house. Oh wait, or she could just want to know more about your family dynamic ways, or that. Yeah, or she might have walked into the house of the King of Cocks. Some guy was there dressed as a Confederate soldier. Someone else was dealing meth lab in the back, and and, and bastard Brooke and gangster Grandma were rolling around, and she said, "Is the house always oh, she full?" No, she walked. No, seriously, she walked. My grandma got her on the way here. Cause, uh, when she came in, these two were pretty much working for food. How, how were they working for food? Cleaning up this nasty ass room. Nice. Basically, basically, I had them clean the office for a meal, and she in. called us in between that. I offered to clean the office for not a meal weeks ago. And you're like, no, just leave it, just leave it. And the fries are making little fry babies. Just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, should we start uh, the show? The show should have started that while ago. Yeah, we, 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 we got that, we got that. So. You don't know, we, we got that. <laughs> yeah, I did that. What it is, what it is, is I, have, I put a laminate tile down in my office, and... One thing I didn't think about with laminate tile is it needed to be swept. Mm -hmm. There's two things I didn't think about. One, that it was going to cause an echo. Two, it needed to be swept when I did it. All I thought about it at the time was I want something that's going to hold up to a 400-pound man in a rolling chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. <Okay. laughs> so basically, there was a lot of dirt. So if you walk around here barefooted... Wait, what is that? Oh. That is my phone. That happens. What happened is... Um, I put the truck ad on Twitter, and you know because obviously there's some people that are actually have jobs and stuff to follow me on Twitter in case they wanted a truck. I said I'd, I'd ship it to them. Well, some guy sent sent me a lengthy set of emails that were like 16 deep. We could you know talking about the price, talking about this, talking about when you get there. He actually gave me a legitimate address in South Carolina. He played it up good, and then he calls and asks me that uh, he, he sit there talking to me. He's like, yeah, I'm a big dude too. I'm a big dude. And he's like, um, can I pay you thirty thousand? I'm like, yeah, I'll take thirty thousand. When you want to come do it, he's like, can I pay you thirty thousand cheeseburgers? Uh, oh, wow! My what heart a, broke. What a douche! What a douche! Yeah, it's just like, dude, you're the king of an asshole to do that uh -oh. kind of mess. Wings, I feel obligated to mention that this is painkiller. Do we have a new character on King of Cox? <laughs> <laughs> I just got back, and I believe there's a new character on King of Cox. <laughs> Kyle, by the way, fair warning, we're recording. <laughs> Nobody was going to let me know? I, uh, I just did! Yeah. Wow. Kyle, what if I had opened with something horrible? What like something Lefty would say? 
I can't believe you started without me. I stepped away for a moment. Oh, well, his magic was about why to is, Why am I getting random fucking numbers? Like, here, you want to call me randomly? There you go. <laughs> we oh, see great. it, Wiggs, dude. That number is about to get spammed. <laughs> I'm going to accept my phone. Wow. <laughs> that guy just got fucked. Yeah. <laughs> That's escalating I think, quickly. I don't think anyone hit, <laughs> understands the gravity of what Wings just did. <laughs> It's going to get 100,000 calls now. He's Some guy, like, hit a like... digit wrong, and now he's and, and the worst part would be, like, what if, like, all the people who saw it sent him a text message? Mm-hmm. Like, penis how awful would butt. that be? Yeah, like, that would be he... dreadful. But, because I don't know if you've ever seen what happens when a phone gets, like, 500 text messages at once. It can't it handle it. Mm-hmm. It's like, have you ever turned your phone off, like, on vacation or something like that, came back three days later and turned it on? It goes ape shit, and there's only like 20 or 30 missed, you know, icons. Imagine if it's 500. Whoa, there's another King of Cox participant in the background that went through the door. There's all kinds of people over at Wings' house. <laughs> Dude, you just... And his like, girlfriend just came in. Yeah, man, you need some cameras mounted on the walls. Oh, turn turn Wings' house into Big Brother. Dude. No, <laughs> no, 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 not with what we were talking about earlier. Yeah, get some POV. The Merle Man. The Merle Man! <laughs> Look at these guys. Look at this, the Merle Man. Oh shit, it's the stupid tax. Yeah, about to do the lottery. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's let's scratch him off. All right. Yeah, good luck with that, man. Good luck. <laughs> wow. Good luck to you, sir. I've scratch heard well. of the lottery. You said the super tax. I heard of it as a tax on people who are bad at math. Yeah, I call it the stupid tax. And and, and and look, I play the lottery from time to time. You know, everybody gets in like it's lottery fever. They're like, oh shit, the jackpot six hundred million, Marge better get a ticket. And Dude, you're just I like, wait a minute, wait a minute. It took six. Hand. It took the possibility of six hundred million dollars to lure you to the to your local sit go. Really, and pay a dollar? Oh, I mean, it's it's like fifty million every week at least, right? It's always some, yeah, but something like that. You got to take taxes and the and the state taxes and all their cuts and bullshit. That fifty million, it's probably going to be more like twenty one after. I don't care if it's five thousand dollars. <laughs> if you thought there was a chance you'd win, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's millions and millions of dollars. Probably six hundred. When it's six hundred million, Kyle, you got to try. I guess so, because I do one it. ticket. What I does it cost? Resist. Two dollars. You can yeah, find two dollars in your couch. Six bucks for six exactly. bucks, whatever. You find that's, that's in your totally couch. That's totally true. That's totally true. And I usually do. I go in and I get the. And they're like, "Do you want the bonus multiplier?" And I'm like, "Well, I'd feel pretty fucking stupid if I didn't get it, right?" And I won. <laughs> like, how do how do you feel then? Like, if you if you're that asshole did, who didn't like bump up, bump it up for a dollar more to get the super multiplier, and you just want sixty four thousand dollars instead of sixty four million. You gotta feel like the biggest jerk ever. Your I family's all disappointed. Sorry, once I got my sixty-four thousand, I'd be like, yeah, I don't feel as much as like a jerk. Dude, I am. Uh, I would say I'm pretty close to even on my lottery ticket buying because I won once for like eighty bucks, and I won once for like two hundred seventy-five bucks once. And then you know I don't buy many lottery tickets. So throughout my whole life, I'm I'm definitely at least even with the. The lottery gods. I, I, I keep getting like, screwed on scratch-off cards. I always get screwed. So I was raised by an accountant. And I have an accounting degree. I feel like if I were to be, if I were to buy a lottery ticket, it would be parallel to a minister's daughter being a stripper. Like I should just know better. It, it, like I'm, my training and my childhood have geared me not to buy lottery tickets. I'm more fiscally responsible than that. When he said minister's daughter, did anyone else picture a redhead in a plaid skirt? Hell's yeah. I, I don't buy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy chimes in. Yeah. That guy chimes in. I don't, no, I, I don't buy lottery tickets because I've Bible never Bible. seen anybody win the goddamn lottery. I have. Um, oh. I actually missed out one time. My, I was with my buddies, and they were buying their lottery tickets, and they asked me if I wanted to get one. They were like 10 bucks a piece. I don't know what exactly they were doing. I don't know much about the lottery, but they both bought a $10 ticket. I did not buy a $10 ticket, and the next day, between the two of them, they won like 17, 17 grand. And... Uh, oh. And it was this whole thing where they were like trying to convince me to go pick up their money so they wouldn't have to pay the taxes. And I'm like, fuck you, man. I'm not doing it either. <laughs> so our sponsor today is Jerdudge0711. And the his, man. His channel is Half Minecraft and Half Shooters. Oh, shit. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Blazing no, see, he's starting off like that. He's not, you know, building a bunch of entitled shooter fanboys and then trying to play Minecraft and... Trying to sift through that minefield. 
Hey, don't don't let. And these yes, guys I get did down. say fucking don't entitled because so many people are way. fucking entitled. Yes, Remember, some of you are entitled. Accept it. The word entitled has become a dirty word, right? It's almost not yeah, politically okay. correct anymore. Don't you hate, like 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 we're seeing it right now. See, people ask, you know, like, well, how did this word become bad? We're watching a word become bad right now. Entitled, entitlement. That word is becoming uh, a, a non politically correct word. Undo entitlement. You want four dollars? Lost twelve. Fuck. So lost twelve. <laughs> lost twelve. I think he's got to go back to the store too to get some more free tickets. Yeah, he's got four dollars. <laughs> Keep rolling those dice until he has none. Yeah, but he's got to. You got to go to a different store. You can't buy all of them in a row. I mean, that's just. You, you got to go to different stores. Different. I always imagine that, that, that like the next one on the roll is the winner though. <laughs> I you mean, know that's what? how Mama's I look, paycheck I look at that big stream of tickets he just had, and I thought, man, that's like twenty dollars worth of dollar tickets. I've I've ate a month off twenty dollars before. Bullshit. Bullshit. Ain't a, ain't a bullshit. You have not even started, for twenty dollars. <laughs> when I first started YouTube, I had something like seven hundred dollars in the bank, and I had to wait three months before I got any money. And I had to make that seven hundred bucks last. So all I ate was ramen noodles, and pretty much drank water. What's your you favorite ramen noodle? Ramen let me noodle guess. Let me guess. Much. You like the shrimp, don't you? No, I like the spicy chicken. Who's the, the spicy chicken is the best. The door? Huh? Who's the young girl that just walked by the door in the white t-shirt? Was that your sister? Miranda. Woody's over here scoping out women. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, not that guy. Sit him no. away. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, they want to see you. There's another character in the King of who? Fox who we haven't met before. Hello, my dear. Hi. Who's this young lady? Hi. Hi there. <laughs> What's your name? Miranda. Hey there, Miranda. What are you doing? Miranda, yeah. how, how do you know Wings? Hi, Jada's brother. Oh yeah, you're Miranda. That's right. What? You're you're a, you're a part of the cast and crew. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're mildly famous on the internet. Did you know that? No, I did not know it's that. It's true. There are people who know your name and you know want to see more of you on this man this man's YouTube channel. And I'm one of them, quite frankly. So now the, the serious question is this: Here's what inquiry minds want to know. One oh, at no. one point, oh, no. one of Kenneth's exes called him crook. Is there any legitimacy oh, to that? No. What? Does he have a crooked penis? Is so, wait. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, guys, you ran around the corner. No. <laughs> is it crooked? I gotta know. <laughs> you didn't answer. I was, I was warming her up to the crooked penis oh question, God. guys. It's not crooked, okay? All right, come on. It's, come it's, on. it's a, a little, little crooked, crooked though, right? be honest. Like it kind of no. has a curve? Yeah. No. Kind of like that, that that anchor on your shirt. It's shaped like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> it splays off in two different directions at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's not crooked because his name his yeah. nickname is Crook. Was it how big is crooked? it? I've never heard that before. Hold Did your you hold your fingers up. How big is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he now? Where is he now? Is he here? Yeah, he's here. Okay, oh, he's over here. We need him. We need him. We need him. Bring in Crook. Can Bring, him in. Bring in Crook. What's up? So, <laughs> so, so this is the man. This is so poor guy. There are a million people with an interest in your either crooked or formerly crooked penis. What is the story behind this? <laughs> it just goes upwards a little bit at the end. That's it. <laughs> All right, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There we just we got go. a a a <laughs> cockography it's from the man off. himself. That's an <laughs> auto cockography. <laughs> No, it was complete cockography. <laughs> I like this. this uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pen the unauthorized cockography. It's <laughs> 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 gonna look like a pretzel. <laughs> I don't think there's any other kind. Oh, God. Well, that was nice and awkward. What, where, where should we go from here? Well, I don't know. We haven't talked about Syria. Is that a friendly transition for them? No, fuck that. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. I love pissing off people that, that get pissed off by stupid things. Like, Gar, you didn't know the specific subsect of Islam that Al-Assad is part of. Er, it pisses me off. Like, do people really get mad at stuff like that? You may need to see a professional. Yeah, I saw some comments you. where people thought we were, we were joking about the Syria thing, that it was, a, it was a Call of Duty 4 joke because the bad guy in Call of Duty 4, I guess, was also Al-Assad. <laughs> They were like, guys, they're oh, it's, please it's, let that be a penis picture. It's a cool it's picture. Not a penis picture. <laughs> it's totally a penis. Well, where's picture. the penis picture? Uh, it, it's this. 
Okay, you can't really read it. That's read it off to us, Wings. That's the one man wolf pack, but what does it say? It, it, it's uh, Zach, Zal- Zach Galifianakis. Periods are ridiculous. Females shouldn't be punished for not being pregnant. That's it? That's okay. it. Well, that, really... That's true, but why is that relevant to the show? It's not. It's not. It's just so silent. why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> Back on the top. Uh, oh, you just got called a douche. Also, as you walked out. Uh, let's really? Let's get the empty with a fist pump. It's not the first time. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, haters are here for our amusement. I'm convinced of that. We should just slip in bad facts to every painkiller already now. I like mm-hmm. it. I think yeah, we should so. intentionally like refer to like some world leader, like like Medvedev. Like instead of calling Medvedev Medvedev, call him like. M- Melodev, you know, just completely pronounce it. Like, like, have one of us, you know, be like, no, 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 it's it's Medvedev, and everybody be like, no, 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 and then be like, yeah, you're right. So the leader of the rebels in Syria. Freaking coupons. Talking about it. Wings, you gotta show. Wings, you gotta show, pimp. <laughs> he says, I gotta show. They want me to do a show called The King of Cocks that pretty much follows our. No, everything. no, we want we want you to do the show called Painkiller Already that's going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> These people and keep not talk to... about coupons. I don't mind the girl, personally. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Okay, yeah. good. You don't want PC, to. Lefty's PC Master Race. <laughs> PC Master Race! PC Master Race! Did, did you see ah. Molly Cyrus a couple weeks ago at the, at the award show? We were talking about a thing. Her butt talk... looks like a chicken butt. Just don't, don't point it out. Just don't point it out. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> what? <laughs> Do we this want to do we right want to continue down a path where we where we fuck with this girl or do we want to continue down yeah. the story path? She's yeah. done. All right, I got rid of her. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, so I heard Melodic has a big dick. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm 95 percent sure that the guy leading the rebels in Syria is Saddam Hussein, and that he'll take over if uh, if they win. Fuck that, that's Mickey Mouse. Heard, Saddam Hussein has been leading Saddam Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda for years <laughs> now, from what I understand, <laughs> behind the scenes. Saddam Hussein loved Sunni Islam, didn't he? He loved all of Islam. Yes. Loved them all. He was a man of the people. He yeah. was, they, they referred to him as the chosen one, I believe. His loved father him. his father had a dark past, from what I understand. He he was badly injured in a fire and he had to wear this uh these sort of black prosthetic get up thing and a respirator. It was a whole thing. So his dad was Darth Vader. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was. That I believe that was his Sunni Islam name. Yes. Right. <laughs> Dark, and dark. and little known fact, uh, Saddam Hussein and Barack Obama second cousins. It's the true thing. fact. <laughs> Saddam Hussein These and Barack stats. Hussein Obama. Yeah. These are stats. Careful of the bank. Five minutes, you're gonna get uh, uh, NSA people at your front door. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah. Did you say this over the internet. That guy is on the other side of the room, not even looking toward the mic, and he just talks. <laughs> He's in here. He's, He's in just here. Like... He's like, ah, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> when um, you talk, look this way. And address this microphone. Okay. <laughs> that sounded a little dirty. Hello, microphone. How are you doing today? That's actually, you, go. you can tell That's the difference. That's excellent. The if you do that, that a lot better. It does make a huge difference, yeah. It, it, okay. <clears throat> Woody um, makes me get so close to my microphone, it makes my neck hurt really bad, but one time I leaned away from it, and it wasn't a pretty sight. <laughs> <laughs> but you he shot my close, dog. You sound like lefty, right? Like, you get, like, mm-hmm. that, like, porn... Sort of DJ yeah, you gotta get oh, yeah. Yeah. You gotta get one off and quiet storm. I don't like this anymore. We all just got really creepy. Nobody's impressed. It just got weird. No, you see, it's not fair. Kelly, you left the fucking room. <laughs> it's not fair because Woody's recording is coming live off of his microphone. My audio signal is coming through Google Hangouts. So I sound like shit compared to Woody, even though it should sound better. Let so you I have to hope that. sound good. Uh, in... oh, thank you. Yeah, but in hindsight, it swings. It fucks up. <laughs> well, Lefty has a good mic, but it, it's something beyond that. He's doing. He has it set up and tuned in in a way that makes him sound great. You know, we'll do the the Minecraft live stream, and Lefty hops on, and all of a sudden we have like a professional audio person in the stream, and everyone else feels inadequate. I'm not. I just. I just turn knobs, and I hope it sounds okay. That's all. Everybody else comes in. They're really quiet. And right. There's no bass to voice. <laughs> and like it, so what like, happens? This is a new YouTuber. Left here. All new YouTubers do this, right? They come out. They're like talking into an Astro Boom mic. That's where they start. The next thing they do is they buy a desktop mic, and they have it with like no vibration dampening next to their keyboard, and they're like, "Do I sound thirty percent sexier now?" No, you don't. <laughs> you got that thing completely dialed in wrong. And uh, it's... shock mounts, kids. Shock mounts. 
shock mounts. It, it, I've got a boom. Yeah, mount. I use a stage stand. Yeah. See, this is expensive. Always you have you you I have take, your stand. Uh, I take I'm two pairs. I take two pairs of women's underwear that I found in the drawer next to my computer desk, and I fold them, and then I sit the microphone on top of that, and that seems to get rid of quite a bit of the vibration from the Xbox. See, Kyle was in that stage we were just addressing. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> if you put, like, a towel or something, matter of fact, I'm going to put a notebook under mine. It does help the vibrate. The damn vibration. Yeah, you just need a little, something like that, like... I was recording and and I saw this like in uh, in Audacity there was this notable you know like audio signature and I literally sat the mic on top of the underwear and it immediately this dropped out. Yep, it makes a huge difference. Women's underwear is a little flimsy. But... Not uh not this girl. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle's got some big love. It. Wait, there's two ways that could go. There's two ways that could go. <laughs> I don't even see the good way. Let me ask you. Yeah, it could be like like some leather bustier crazy shit. Or, or she needs a lot of she's there's she's a can it fit on heavy the flow kind of gal like and yeah, a heavy sure flow kind of gal fit Christ. over the hood of a Volkswagen Bug and then I, Kyle just folds it up and it, it's like a towel. <laughs> I have a story about something like that. So there was this one summer where we were doing a lot of construction work uh, with my dad, and we had to, you know, we hired some help. We hired this guy who was an ex-con. His name was Billy. He said back in prison they called him the Georgia Bulldog because of his violent temperament. Uh, he was fucking ripped. So he, he, his body type reminded me a lot, like uh, like maybe Brad Pitt from Fight Club, just super muscular, super cut. But he was the, he his fingers were deformed in a way that made them difficult to do things. They were they were weird fingers, you know, some were too short and one of them didn't have enough joints and one of them didn't have a fingernail and he just went with it. And he'd had this really fucked up life. So he had this criminal past and he had this whole thing going on and I remember I always remember he was up on the roof like hammering these shingles and, and uh, he had a funky way of holding the nail because of his weird hand Kyle, and every now and then he just smashes desk contracted. Is he available? He would <laughs> every now and then he would smash his hand in this horrible. He'd just scream and he'd duct tape, tape his fingers. Anyway, I went to go pay this guy one day and he was drinking and he starts telling me his life story, the sob story about his father abusing him and like being in a, an area where there weren't many white people and having to deal with, deal with racism where all these black guys would jump him and having an experience where he defended himself with a two by four with nails sticking out of it and he hit a guy in the head with it. And then once all that was over. He reaches into like one of those old metal cookie jars that your grandma might have around, and you know you always open that thing hoping for those sugar cookies, but it never is. You know, it's it's sewing needles or something like that. Yeah. In his Change. were women's underwear, enormous women's <laughs> underwear. He whips these things out and stretches them out in front of him, arms outstretched fully, and this is a grown man, and he did not have to close his arms very much. They were huge. I could not fit into these underwear, and I don't have enough friends to get next to me to make them... D we couldn't all fit in there. Could I fit in those underwear, Kyle? No. No one could. <laughs> yeah, you could, fit in. Yeah, you could fit in these underwear, but they were just huge, and they were not sexy. Even if they were, if they were like big and like, you know, like some sexy underwear, I'd have still been like, cool, cool deal, man. That's a little big, but... Okay, they were like these big giant granny panties that he kept as some sort of a fuck trophy. It was <laughs> ridiculous, and I'm like 14 or something. I had to get out of there. I'd use it as a bra for the front of my car. Oh, you totally <laughs> could. These things, you, <laughs> could, you, want to do. you could dry your whole car with one of these. It was like a super absorbent <laughs> fucking uh, diaper almost. It was huge. <laughs> <laughs> I've told this story before, so I'll tell it and fast forward. My, my friend joined a fraternity, and as a freshman, they had an award that they gave everybody called the hog and it was whoever slept with the biggest woman and, and he was sleeping with a lot of big women but no one really notable until the one until the one and uh he won the hog that year and, and the, the big thing that i keep stealing the line but was that her hood her underwear could fit over the front of a volkswagen bug that is fucking awesome <laughs> that was her claim to fame. oh That's wow awesome. so i do have to say that when i hear about i've heard about contests like that in like i don't know and like a Law and Order episode when it goes wrong. That 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 it happens a lot in scenarios like that. Yeah, that's where I've seen. It. I've never seen something like that in real life. I didn't know shit like that actually happened. That's fucked up. I've got to say that's the kind of stuff that leads to to like a carry type situation where everybody gets burned alive. I would not fuck with somebody like that. I I mean I don't know that she was the victim in this thing. I, I mean she's the hog. <laughs> Okay, all right. She probably doesn't want to win the title, but I think she wanted to get some loving. 
Dude, this is totally like the, the, girls need the love plot of the movie Carrie, or the book Carrie. You know, send, it's, send her over to Wings House. I'll, I'll lay it down for. Yeah, <laughs> take her to Wings House. <laughs> I'll lay it down for some real loving. All right, but don't none of that fake loving just because she's a big girl. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, I'll make you internet famous. <laughs> hey, baby, you want to make some internet videos? <laughs> General pussy pleasing. General pussy pleasing. <laughs> Uh, that's your that's your new that's your new nickname in addition to the the, the other one I uh, I talked about earlier. Um, what about major nipple nibbling? <laughs> I don't care for that. That invokes a mental uh, image that I am not. Is I'm not folding paper the on their microphone? Yeah, I'm folding paper on my microphone. Really. I apologize. <laughs> what are you it's doing? a very sensitive microphone. I'm folding paper. Oh, oh, fo folding I or, or my business papers? I'm folding them. <laughs> 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 Or are you perhaps moving them in a circular manner around an axis? Are you referring to a Rolodex, perhaps? No, because I don't know anybody that would use a Rolodex anymore. You, you gotta use a Rolodex. What if you're? Uh, what, if, what if there's an electromagnetic? Pulse? But roll. I mean, do? you're close How to How are you going to get in touch with Dominoes if the Russians attack? That's you bring up true. a strong point. Yeah, that's true. Please. I never understood Rolodex is more than just. Well, I don't keep a like. A, like a composition book with phone numbers in it. Because the Rolodex allows quick and easy access if you're familiar with how to operate one. Like, like you know, a, a proper secretary back in the day would have, you know, been really proficient with a Rolodex. She would operate it in a way that you'd be like, oh, wow, that was fast. I Same remember, way they used to be typists. Thinking about Rolodex, I remember my fucking elementary school library had the, uh, still had the card system in effect. The Dewey Decimal System? Come on, that's... I'm talking about where you had to like look up a, like a like a card. Yeah, system. that's the Dewey Decimal yeah. System. Yeah. Yeah. Um, still what are you doing? Hey. What are you looking at? Diablo I'm watching three. Video games. You said you wouldn't do this for the show. Yeah, we were gonna. I'm a, I'm a horrible liar. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even look towards the camera to say that. <laughs> okay, so so on that qu I have a question. How is the Diablo three port to PS3? Is it any good? It, it's a very boring conversation piece. It was just Wait, a question, not a show? conversation piece. It's it's closer to the screen. There you go. There. Did you even hear the question? How is the? He asked is me how the Diablo three port is, and I said nobody wants to hear it because like there's like oh, three I people understand. on it. But I wanted to hear it. Yeah, well, I was curious as well. I just. I, all right. Tell us, Papa Fine. Wicks. Tell us. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Fine. All right. I played both Diablo 3 on the PC when it released in May of last year, and this one right here currently. Uh, this one right here currently is the 1.08 uh, patch, and it's been dramatically increased since the last time I played Diablo. I feel like the game itself is a very smooth, it's very fluid. Uh, it's a port that really hits back home with me from uh, being a gamer in the 90s versus you know somebody that might be getting into gaming now in the 2000s, uh, mainly because it's it's four-player co-op on screen. Like you can actually get your buddies and actually do couch co-op again. And it's a very fun experience in that way, but it also lends itself right over to the multiplayer. They did very good things that really that took away from Diablo on the PC, such as the auction house and Always Online. Those are two things I really didn't like about the PC. One, Always Online was a bitch because you couldn't ever play by yourself and be without internet connection. And two, the auction house really took away the feeling of finding a good item from you. And when you actually found something good it wasn't impressive because you could have found that same item easier on the auction house for like 25 cents. There was no need to actually farm anything because you could buy everything. Being a better profit modem for Blizzard, well, Activision Blizzard, it is, I think it took away from the game itself, and the console port does not have that. And I think it plays very fluently on the console, and all classes <clears throat> transition greatly. The only problem I've seen was with the Witch Doctor and his targeting targeting issues, but it's still fun to play as a Witch Doctor, and he's probably still the funnest class. I give it 7 out of 10. It's not a perfect game, because it's just a remake of a PC game, but they did a very good job port-wise. There you go. That, that was, was a very... Good, you should yeah. chop that up and put it on your channel. So di Review Diablo 3 PS3. Just title it that, put that there. That should be its own video right. for you. And I'm addicted to it good. right now. That's pretty so. good. So, uh, obviously, the next question I have to ask you how do you feel about polygamy? <laughs> Obviously, that was the I, I, I got an answer for that one too. I feel like polygamy is wrong because I, I already have one woman upset with me in the morning in the bed. Why would I want to? Um, they're not on the same bed, so they don't do that. 
Yeah, I know that's the worst part. I've been looking at me when they will stay in the same bed because I'm too fucking lazy to walk across the houses and figure out which day it is. Yeah, that's So true. I've been watching this show on HBO called Big Love. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are familiar with it. But basically it's it's Bill Pullman, and he's uh, he's the star of the show, and he's got three wives. He's got like a, you know, a wife that's his age, a wife that's maybe five, seven years younger, and another wife who's only like 23 who's hot. And to me, it doesn't look like... Everybody thinks of polygamy as like, oh yeah, you just you got like eight wives and you just fuck them all the time. No, no, no. It's it, it's a nightmare scenario. Like you have to, you have one of the guys who's a polygamist. He's got like he's like he's like Bill. I got sixteen mouths to feed. And it's like shit. Yeah. This guy, you know, and what he's done, which is really cool. It's the it's the main premise of the show is he bought a house for each of his wives. And they each get a night of the week with him for like like you know they sleep with him and on that night they share the same bed. So like he goes to a, a different one of these three houses, each of which each of which he owns every night. And he's got like he doesn't have that many kids. He's only been doing it for like ten years or something. He's got like I don't know six or seven kids. It's a cool show. But I don't think I'd want to be a polygamist. No, it's not for me. <clears throat> I mean, it, one the pressure would be outstanding. Just to keep one woman happy mm-hmm. is enough work. To keep the kids all you know, happy and on the right track is a lot of work. You get up to ten kids and three women, and that's a big freaking ship to steer. I, I don't know that I want all that. Yeah, and that's why that's that's one of the charming things about the show. I think like if this guy were just having a great time, it was really easy. You'd almost be like, yeah, but you know, it's kind of gross, dude. You got three wives. You're only doing this because you know this is a sexual thing. But that's not what you see. You see how fucking impossibly hard it is, and how they're like they're doing the things you just described. They're trying to keep the kids on the right path. Um, you know, they've got kids that range in age from you know months old to like sixteen or seventeen years old, and and you know they're all spread out in, in between there. So one kid's got a dance recital, and one kid's you know going to the prom or something. And meanwhile, he's having to keep all three of these very different women happy financially, and you know, in every way, I guess that a man. Keeps his wife happy. Now you're talking. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't seen this show, but I've seen Sister Wives. Have you seen that? I have been. To- I've I've heard about it. Yeah, I, I I saw the first three seasons. I don't know if there was more than that. And um, it was the same deal. One guy, three wives, maybe eight kids or something. I'm going off memory. And his wife seemed pretty happy, but every so often, like the he had two wives, and then when he got the third one, they felt a little. I don't want to say betrayed, but that's not a bad word to choose. And they're just jealous of the new wife, and she's clearly like you know, the youngest, prettiest one in the group. And you know, that must happen all the time. And at some point, he'll pick up a fourth wife, and the other three will feel like they're you know tired and old. Yeah. My, my question about the polygamy is like, how do you got that kind of game? Right. Because right. it's not. A, I mean, so like, like. I, so it's not like that. So you're. So the way it works is. A lot of times, not always, and not in the situation of this show necessarily, but a lot of times, it's you, so the polygamists that I'm talking about are, are um, a branch or, an, or a sect, I guess you might say, of the Mormons or the Church of Latter-day Saints. So they are like following the original teachings. Of Wait, Jesus. those are basically uh, Christians, right? N- um, like I, Christians, maybe man, a little bit. I, of, with I know a, a good bit, bit about the Mormon religion, but I. I Still don't feel like I'm. Uh, I still feel like I'm too ignorant to uh, to speak about it. But broad strokes are that uh, some guy claims he found some um, some golden plates, like in <laughs> cent- central United States. I don't remember exactly where, like Missouri, for example, somewhere in there, Utah, whatever. And uh, his name was Joseph Smith, and he claimed that when he put these golden plates written by the hand of God Himself into a hat, much like the sorting hat from uh, Harry Potter, if you will. And when he peered into that hat, he could read the, you know, the the, the word of God himself. A, a new scripture, I believe, is what you, is how you would put it. But but only him, right? Nobody else. Like, only can I read that? No, and nobody no, just else. me. Just and me. And they Doesn't wrote down his words, and they started a new branch. Is there a thing where he like lost the words and then he read them again, and they weren't the same? But that was like to be expected. I, like I said, I, I don't I don't know all the details. I don't like judging people's religions. <laughs> he was a con man. <laughs> was. Oh, don't I'm sorry. That's what but he was. I don't really apologize to any Mormons and their in their nicely dressed attire. Man, you guys are great. Really, yeah, you're are. really like, nice. Like, I like, will like, say, yeah, you know, as a 
uh, you know, I'm generalizing, and even positive generalizations can be a negative thing, but all the Mormons I know are actually really nice people. They really are. Yeah, you they're... guys are great. We like you a lot. We just find your religion a bit difficult to stomach, to believe, <laughs> not really. It's not yeah, that your religion is gross. Mean, hey, I, I don't feel bad. I find all religions hard to stomach. <laughs> no, it, it's not as hard to stomach. I, Thanks I, for I, taking I, the pressure off me, Wings. Yeah, yeah, good job. Good stomach, job. I don't think, is the, is the phrase you want to use. No, it's, it's not. It's not. Unbelievable. And, and I think wings means that, too. All the religions yeah. are, are difficult to believe. Unless you have faith, unless you were given the gift of faith, it sure seems like bullshit. <laughs> it's like Daniel Tosh. Daniel Tosh has a joke, and it goes something along the lines of, you know, I'm not going to believe in a religion that's so young that I can ask my dad about it. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, that's not real. <laughs> I'm not and looking this way. It's kind of how it is, man. That shit's just like 100 years old or something, 200 maybe. How long have I known Woody now? Five, six years? Whatever. Something like that. Yeah, if, if Woody goes, Wings, give me $100, I make it $200 tomorrow. I don't have enough faith to even go with that. <laughs> yeah, but you haven't checked out his Minecraft server. He could probably do that in an hour. I, I do totally. need to check his Minecraft server Which, out. by the way, where is that? Woody, tell us where we can go to check that out. Woodycraft.net, actually. That's the IP address. Really? You just play have it. you mentioned that before? I, I don't think I've had it on my channel. First time yet. I've heard of it. No, I, I, so this mine Minecraft, that's that... What is this sorcery? It's, is it a digging game? <laughs> it is, yeah. No, dude, so I, I want to talk about PC gaming for a second. In, I've grown to discover that what's popular in PC gaming oftentimes is games with a level of depth that doesn't happen on the console. The console stuff I've played... So much of it feels arcadey by comparison now, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, in today's video, I did Explosion Man, and I was looking for something that was on the extreme end of arcadey. But even like Call of Duty, like the the level of depth that exists in PC games, the, <coughs> the, the not it, there's engineering that happens in Minecraft, you know, and people build these contraptions, and it's, I I look at the essentially the schematics of what they built, and I don't understand how it works, and. It's impressive to me. There's and then the factions and the powers and the fighting and the you know, gun fighting in Call of Duty is fairly simple. Be the first on target. It helps to have cover. That'll cover most of your of your troubles, you know. Um, oh, be the first to start the gunfight, meaning like be the guy that moves away from cover and you know, out of the side. But in there's there's so much like preparation and you know what you eat and what you're doing and you know what you've how you've enchanted your weapon and, and which weapons to use to which advantage that exists in minecraft that it it's blowing me away there's so much to learn and i don't think minecraft is unique in that way pc games and and their mods take uh, league of legends is another one right i'm not an expert in league of legends so forgive my ignorance on this but i think the depth of knowledge that it takes to be a great league of legends player is somewhere on the level of chess you know, it, it, there are all these things have so much to know and so much to learn, and I'm like, huh, so that's one of the differences. And it doesn't make console gaming bad. It's really not. I mean, I love console gaming. It just makes it quicker to pick up, and it depends on what you want. But anyway, back to Minecraft. Yeah, I've been playing it. I've been learning it. I've been having a good time with it, and I've only scratched the surface on what there is to know and do. Woodycraft.net. Check it out. It's free. Mm-hmm. Um, what is your favorite boss in Fallout Wings? My favorite boss in Fallout? <laughs> yeah. The, 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 define what you mean by boss. Right, you know, uh, a unique a unique <laughs> character, one of the souped up characters that has their own sort of, you know, special. They're, they're loaded up with special armor, special gun. They got their own name, you know. There's Are you only talking one. about like a special NPC? Yeah, well, a special NPC or even something like Lanius, you know, like a, like a, a final boss, anything like that. Who's your favorite boss? Big bad guy. I mean, my favorite NPC would be Joshua Graham. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I can't really think about it because I want to ask Woody a question. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm going to have a hard time with your topic because I'm still on the one I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. My brain's still thinking about Minecraft. We'll well, talk, it, fall we out were later. talking about PC and the depth of Minecraft, and he, he, he referenced Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think... Everybody's here is in the same boat with Call of Duty. I'm not about sure about Kyle, but like, what would it take for it to make you excited again? Isn't that tough, man? Like, it, I feel like Call of Duty fatigue hit me later than the bulk of YouTube, right? You know, and 
I promise you, behind the scenes, when you talk to Call of Duty YouTubers, a lot of them have played a lot of COD, and they're doing it because it's their job, right? That, that's the deal. A lot of them started in COD 4, and sometimes even earlier, but I was genuinely loving COD all the way up until, you know, a month and a half ago. And then I, I stuck my head out of the rabbit hole and saw all their stuff and was like, wow, you know, there's so much more out there that I haven't been checking out. I need to do that. And I do that every year to some extent, but this time last year, we're sitting here asking ourselves, is it too early to start Road to, to Call of Duty or Black Ops 2? You know, we're like, ah, well, I can't wait to do Road to Black Ops 2. I want this game in my hands. I'm already, we're like planning and scheming on how to get the next one. Um, and we're like, it's just not on shelves yet. We can't do Road to Black Ops 2 right now. This time this year, I mean, Activision's treating me better than they've ever treated me. They flew me out to play COD Ghost and check it out. And I played it. And it was good. You know, it, it has seven new game types. I don't know them all yet, but I know, I think, three of them. It has character customization that makes the Pick 10 system look like checkers. You know, as compared to the chess that is the new character customization. It has, uh, you know, of course, all new maps. It, it, like, they've done way more innovation in COD Ghosts than I expected to see. Uh, I, I feel like, you know, every year the game innovates to some extent. And the, you know, sometimes they move one step forward, sometimes they move four. This is like a seven step forward game with all these new game types, all this character customization, all this, you know, it's the new console maybe that opened up this thing. Dedicated servers. COD Ghost has dedicated servers on the Xbox. PS4, probably not. But Xbox and PC have dedicated servers. And everyone's just like, eh. Have you seen Titanfall? I, yeah. It's like they can't do anything right at this point. They had seven new game modes, character customization that is outrageous. And I'm not talking about decorative characters customization. That's not the kind of thing that excites me. You know, if you tell me mm -hmm. the guy can put on a green helmet, I'm like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. I don't care. But <laughs> if you're telling me that setting up a class is way more sophisticated than it's ever been before, like it, if you go back to COD 4, right? There's like one class that's right, maybe two. Your perks are going to be Bandolier, Stopping Power, and Dead Silence roughly all the time. And your gun is going to be, well, you've got a bunch of choices. There's maybe six guns I could run through them that work in COD 4. You advance to when they drop Stopping Power as the second perk, and all of a sudden more options opened up, like in Black Ops 1. There were different things that you could do. And then you go to Black Ops 2, and the character customization, all the classes you can choose are, are way more options than you've ever had before. The things you can put on your gun matter more. They're almost like perks. What's coming is at another level. And I cannot tell you what a good class is yet. I have... I, I, what's the number? 200,000 options to sort through so I understand which of these things is most valuable. And you know, you know how everything in the Pick 10 system is worth a point. In this next one, some are worth five, maybe seven, I forget. But some are definitely worth five. And some cost one. You know, So you might run Ghost, it takes five perks. You run some other thing, it takes one perk. What they've done with COD Ghosts is really great. And they personally treated me greater than they ever had before. And in return, I'm playing Minecraft. I, I feel like it's not their fault. But um, but at the end of the day, they're still kind of adhering to the same... It's still COD. ...formula. It's, it's close quarters action at a high frame rate, action-packed, more tactical than... Uh, Strategy. strategic. I, guess, I think that's fair yeah. to say. Yeah. And, and it's just it's kind of the same formula. It's it's embellished, it's 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 amplified, but it's still that, which okay, I I mean personally I've been playing on small maps since COD four and it was fun in COD four, a little less fun in Modern Warfare two, but still fun. Black Ops one took some getting used to and they did they went even bigger than Modern Warfare two and which I kind of enjoyed. Um but then it, progressively smaller, 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 and, and action, 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 which, okay, if you love action and you want action all the time and you want to be ten steps from action whenever you spawn in, okay, but I just, I like, okay, I've fired a lot of, you know, bullets in close quarters. Okay. I like close quarters. I, I think I'm unique in that way. Like, I, I forgive some of the downfalls of close quarters, like, um, uh, you know, lag, right? If Everyone shooting from across the map, it's a little less connection sensitive. But when I get into a room and then I got a lobby with a bad connection, I just go to the next one and I understand that that's the price I pay for having the close quarters action that I prefer. Um, what I don't like and what I did see in, in COD Ghost in terms of map design, 
Traditional Call of Duty map design, the traffic flows like this. Picture a capital H in your head and draw a vertical stripe down the middle. That is COD map design. You know, do um, sub base in Modern Warfare 2, right? You've got the two routes on the side, one in the middle. Do overgrown, which is Modern Warfare 2 and COD 4. You've got the two bridges on the side and that route through like grandma's house across the ravine in the middle. Do zoo, right? You've got the two things on the side, one in the middle, and that one kind of had a, a, another way too. Um, most of the map flows, the, the map traffic in Call of Duty history is a capital H with the sh with a vertical stripe down the middle. In Modern Warfare 3, there were maps where the traffic flow was just like a child scribble drawing. Um, Arcaden is a great example of that. In Arcaden, people came from wherever, right? That escalator thing, they, mm -hmm. they some people would be up by, the call out was boobies that had all those posters on the ledge. Some people would be looking out the window some people would be in the escalator area, some would be downstairs, upstairs, there's that statue, there's that underhang by B-Dom. There was no traffic flow to Arcaden whatsoever. They just came from all over. And if you're playing Dom, you kind of know they're roughly in front of you or behind you because of the flags. But the traffic flow in Arcaden is crazy. The traffic flow in the COD Ghost maps that I've seen, which is like three, um, it was like Arcaden, where people come from everywhere. And if that's your style, you're going to love it. If it's not, I mean, I kind of like the capital H thing. I, really I love the capital H thing, yeah. but even then, like, I think I'm done with shooters. Like, I think I, it was a period of my life that's over with. No way, really? Just done with shooters in general? Like, you say Titanfall, I say, I don't care. Like, people are like, play Battlefield 3, that's fun. Not for me. No, I mean, like, I'm sorry, I'm, talk I'm doing all the talking right now, but in Battlefield 3, one of the problems I have, if you play Battlefield 3 on PC and you start today... There are people who've been honing their Battlefield 3 skills since the day it dropped. They play every day. They're like pros. They're crushing it. I get in Battlefield 3, and now I've played enough PC gaming that my mouse and keyboard skills are that of a gamer, right? I'm not a pro or anything, but look, I'm playing it every day. And, um, but still, like the way the map control works, the way these guys know how to play Battlefield 3, it's like trying to start Counter-Strike or Team Fortress. There are people out there like at a pro level ready to eat your lunch. I need a fresh game to start even with everybody else. Battlefield 4, October, woo! That doesn't like, work, be that for Battlefield 4, dude. Like, it's yeah, like, that's gonna it, help. It, how, Do you think anybody from Battlefield ever says that? Are they ever like, yeah, I want to play Call of Duty, but you go in there and they just take your fucking lunch money. Well, the new Call of Duty Ghost is coming out. I bet everybody will be new at that. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Battlefield don't work that way either, I mean. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it just gets to the point. It's like, what can they do for first-person shooters for people that are grizzled veterans? Because I know you always want to get new guys, and that's that's the route that you should go for. But you got to keep the people there too, and you got to do something for them. And like, I don't honestly know what they could do to keep me and get me excited for first-person shooters. Titanfall seems neat enough. I, I mean, like the, the mechs that you jump in and people fighting against. I haven't them. seen even one screenshot of Titanfall. That's how little I cared about it. Hmm. Well, I, I bet if I showed you a Titanfall trailer and put headset on you and you know gave it an oppor uh, like a, an opportunity to awe you with the audio and a proper video, that you'd look at it and say, "Oh, probably get that." You know, I've Tom Clancy's games, The I Division. Play I play some very dull ass games. <laughs> like to, to me, a video game needs to occupy my brain. What Call of Duty did for me back in the day was I was astonished my sound horn. I love the fact that I was using my brain to win battles. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that I was using the map strategically to win battles. Before being strategic was even popular. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, before YouTube was even popular in YouTube commentary. You know, just picking people off and you won your battles with your mind instead of with your gun skill. I love that. That's why I play games like Final Fantasy. That's why I play games like Diablo. It's more about character setup than it is about actual gaming skill. Depth of game. That's what I was trying to say about PC gaming. There's there's a depth of gaming that I'm getting into now that, like, I don't know. Like, excelling in COD is, it's a step beyond excelling in a platform, you know, like a, you know, a jump on the platform type game. But it's only one step past it. Excelling in some of the other PC games are, are so strategic. It's more like excelling in chess. You know, what? League of Legends I imagine to be that way. I'm not a League player. Um, Minecraft feels that way. Like it just, 
the, the way that you there's an economy in Minecraft. There's a legit economy. People are setting up sugarcane fields and and like get this. So cows breed, and um, you you can go. You, your cows grow. They breed, and then when they reach adulthood, you slaughter them. You get leather. You get meat. And then if you have a farm, then you can get money. And when that money, you can go to the store and get all kinds of things, diamond armor, and etc. But that's a pain in the ass. So you want to automate it. So people make cow farms. They're only one level tall. So they have like an area where it's one level tall and and they breed and they have babies and then as soon as the babies reach adulthood they're two blocks tall they suffocate and they drop meat on the ground and i'm like that's a damn clever idea i see all <laughs> these farms with like roofs on them so that things automatically drop and it's easy to crop them and and uh, like like the farming and the mining and the animal farming operations that people do the redstone there's a depth of play to minecraft that I hadn't seen before, and it's super interesting to me. I bet that guy that thought about that one level, that, that suffocating tactic, felt really good about himself when he seen it, and it worked. Yeah, and he's like, yeah. yeah, this is great, dude. And then other people started praising him for it. They seen it, and they praised it. And I feel like being a part of the Call of Duty community, you don't get that anymore. Like, when I first started doing this, nobody was mad at me camping. People were like, wow, this is great. You know, this is I like this spot. Oh, yeah. And now, and now it's just like you're an evil, evil person. I re that's interesting that you say. So two things I could talk about. I do remember that. I remember you did a video. I, I don't know if it was a video on Rundown or if you gave me a personal tour, but you showed me lines of sight that I hadn't seen before. You run down the Modern Warfare 2 map. If you guys don't remember, it had like a river in the middle and three bridges. Again, capital H with a stripe traffic pattern. And uh, Wings would go in the like towards the back of the map and show me a line of sight against a particular camping spot that I had never seen and, and they wouldn't think to look for me there but there they are I can pick them off behind their thing and it was like this is great with this this is worth four kills a game which is nearly a predator which is you know it can, it can escalate into a predator hairy or chopper like this line of sight was so valuable it was fantastic now if Wings would have showed that line of sight today oh hate it on Oh my god, you're not running around with an SMG? I hate you. And like I love those kind of lines. I love when maps were designed like chessboards instead of, you know, scribble drawings. Uh, scribble drawings. Like th there was PowerPoints on the map, but every PowerPoint had a counterpoint. Mhm. Mm like for, w the biggest one that comes to mind was Jungle in Black Ops 1. I mean, Black Ops 1 didn't have a whole lot of like strategic maps, but it had some. Like Jungle, the big spot when you were trapped on sea was there was a barrel that went across the, like a rope bridge, and there was a barrel sitting at the end of it. People would sit on that barrel and shoot you as, as you come out that fire base. But if you mm -hmm. stood on the left side of it, there was like a like a, almost a head high box on its side, like this, and you could take that box and shoot over it and take that guy on the barrel out, allowing your team to funnel and get access to the bridge above B. Well, just think of something like the trash pile in Bog from COD Four. Yeah, that's you know that's the PowerPoint. If you've got that, you've got everything. <laughs> in jungle, if you play in domination, that hut above B Dom, right? It was dangerous. Mm -hmm. I used to spend I spent an entire year every time I played that map. I try to control the hut above B Dom because you control that hut, you control B Dom itself, and you usually only get like three kills or so if if you're doing well before you die. It's competitive, and you're gonna be you know, people are gonna know that you're there, and if that's the case, it's hard to win all your gunfights. Oh, I love the hut when you're using like the thermal. Like thermal sucked on Black Ops One, but the hut, if you stood to the right side of the right door, you could look through the bushes with the thermal and see people coming down that path. <laughs> yeah, I, I I used to I I put up games on jungle where I had like a two KD, but I'd have eighteen defends, and I felt like everyone was looking at KD, and it's like you don't understand. I'm the reason we won this game. Right. The KD might have been two, but you know, my persistence on this power position is why we had two flags instead of one all game long. 18 defense. That's, that's the Call of Duty I miss right there. When Call of Duty was a strategic game on YouTube and not a a, a, a slam dunk contest. Hmm. It is right now. It's a slam dunk contest. I got into a lobby with people that didn't leave, and I got my dogs to swarm and low star three times. That's a good game. Game. I think it's a hypothetical game. That's a hypothetical oh, game. That's okay. what a big 200 understand. kill game is. I, I just, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I've been getting games easy on COD. Like, I don't play as much COD as I did two months ago. And, uh, you know, I pop in, play two games, one of them had 60 kills. I swear I had a harder time getting 60 Are these, kills. Are these ground war games? 
No, it was domination on slums. And I like didn't even have game. high kill streaks. What'd you say? I'd like to see this game. It's on my channel. Like 60 kills on 6v6 is hard to do. It was actually 59. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's 60. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. That's, I hear you, baby. That's 60. Um, yeah. You ever got 60 in a team deathmatch? No. I no. think the house I got in team deathmatch was like 51. I don't I think I've 60. had 40 in TDM. I may have had 40, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't play much TDM either. I played 10 times. I remember that 51 too. It was on Wasteland. Wasteland? Oh, that, that, that. Like Wasteland's well, got like a play-by-play -play in his head saved up. Like, no, let me take you guys through this match. I, I honestly <laughs> have how it happened. I, I, kill, I, I think I got like 60 kills on uh, block. Is it time to change up the topic? I know totally. I, totally. Yeah, it's, 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 I, I'm having fun with it. Like, this is, like, I'm having more fun talking about Call of Duty in like a reminiscing way than I do playing it. Like, I, I rage quit on the fucking screen where the three guys are standing and ask me to get online. Wait, what? I didn't understand that. Is that a con? You know, that when you load the game up, it goes Xbox Live, and it has those three guys pointing the guns at you. You're already rage quitting? I'm already upset. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I was thinking about? Winter's coming. Are we happy about that? I'm kind of looking forward to winter. I'm always looking forward to winter. Are you? Yeah, it's my favorite time of the year. I don't want to smell green trees and pollen and wildlife. I want to get cold as fuck and, you know, everything that... I usually run over with my car. It goes and hides in a hole for the three or four months. I, I swear, North Carolina is my climate. That, that's my declaration. When I lived in New Jersey and winter was coming, uh, and I mean in Oct, Jersey, Jersey fucking rocks. I love the people. Jersey sucks. Dude, no. Jersey. Especially that show that they had. <laughs> it smells so bad and you know it. The one spot on the turnpike smells bad. Get, get it, me some there is one part of New Jersey where you drive for like an hour, and it smells really bad the whole time. And I'm talking about what, like, like a paper mill or something? Yes, it's there? that it kind of smell. Is. Jersey, I still got you. Jersey, you, you <laughs> live in Georgetown. Smell Georgetown smells that's, like why, shit. that's why we don't like you. You were the smelly kid in class. Jersey's awesome. You, you don't know what you're talking about. I Smelly up. kid in class. <laughs> you get your pants and your mom didn't even show up. But here is the thing with the climate in that region in the country. it The winter is nine months long. You know, I, I might be exaggerating a bit there. But the winter's long and it feels and the sky is gray all winter. In North Carolina, like it's sunny five, six days a week here all winter long. Even when it's quote unquote cold. And by cold, I mean like 48 degrees. Um, it's blue skies and it's nice out. Like you know, I take my kid to the swing set or something, and it's like this is February. This is so easy to get through. In Jersey, I didn't feel like that. I I'm almost looking forward to winter now, and that never happened to me growing up, because winters here are kind of like a spring or a fall. This is this is my place to be. Lefty, you're from Chicago. How do you feel about winter coming? Uh, I like winter because. I like celebrating Christmas, even though I'm an atheist, which is kind of weird. But um, it's I don't know. It's fun. It's a fun time for me. I like the I I like the cold, but then like in some things, the cold is nice. Like when it's like it's later at night and it's cold, and you want to go to bed, and you get on you got to get under the covers and and try to warm up. But it's it's you know it's like a little game. It's it's nice. It's cozy. You get to be cozy. I guess would be a good term for it. But then, like, if you try to go start your car, and it's, like, zero degrees outside, and you've got to start your car, and then you've got to wipe the snow off of it or crack the ice and then scratch the ice off, and then you got to let your car warm up for about 20, 30 minutes so that, you know, you don't start hurting things, um, It's that's when it's like, oh, yeah, the cold kind of sucks. So there's there's good aspects to it and then and then bad stuff, but it can get it can get pretty cold, and it sucks. Does it get cold enough to hurt you when you breathe? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Mm hmm Yeah, I... I don't know what zero feels like. I mean, 40 degrees is about my top we get zero here. Zero is not a pop. temperature. People who say it is are full of shit. Zero is not a thing that should be a temperature of Earth. <laughs> Global warming is good. Get rid of zero throughout the planet. Get rid of that. <laughs> I live in a swamp heavy area, like 50, 40 what heavy? degrees swamp area. Swamp? Swamp? How do you spell that? 
<laughs> Swamp, I guess it's going to be. Uh, Kyle, do we have to start talking about when your accent slips? Shut up, Dusty. You shut your dirty whore mouth. Cool Whip. <laughs> I got my, let me tell you guys, I went to the kitchen, I got myself some Cool Whip out of the refrigerator. <laughs> First yeah, of but all, I live in a swamp that is how you really pronounce the in the last 48, 50 degrees is about as far as we get. If you look in the dictionary, it's clearly spelled out that way phonetically. There are two <laughs> acceptable ways to pronounce the word what. Yep. And mine is <laughs> one of them. What? You know what word you No, I, I honestly didn't hear. It sounded like Q U I. What? What? Oh, what? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? What <laughs> people always get us on. Because it's spelled W U T. Walter. 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 Say oil. 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 I get that. Oh, one. that's normal. Yeah. 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 I can't stand people that are like pillow. Like hand me that pillow. Like what? What is a pillow? What is that? A pillow. A pillow. Pillow. Oh. Or milk. Milk. <laughs> yeah, people say milk. <laughs> you ask me for milk, I'm gonna slap you in the teeth. <laughs> I'm a, I always wonder what wash was. What the fuck's a wash? That's when you wash something, you clean it. Yeah. Oh, what I don't like in particular is Washington. When they put the R in Washington, that that's not for me. I like that. Washington. Really? I, I yeah. um yeah, I don't have uh, I, I guess I'm, I, everyone has an accent, but I guess mine is kind of neutral. You know, the, the You do have that thing. problem with that one word. What word? That alternate type of energy that we use that's not hydroelectric or oh, coal no. or solar. Know. You know, it's the one that gives off radiation. What is it? <laughs> I'm gonna start right. I'm gonna is it nuclear? There you go. <laughs> did, I, did I even fuck it up? I don't know. I can't. Yeah, you got it. Nuclear. It's not what I said though. No, he said it, what he said. Nuclear. nuclear. He said yeah, nuclear. Was, I was gonna give it to him. My, nuclear is my attempt at pronouncing it's, it not nuclear. Nuclear. Yeah, nuclear. Nu yeah, yeah. George nuclear. Bush, George Bush just pronounced it as nuclear. Oh, but I have the same one with documentary. And it's nuclear. Oh, oh what do you say? Documentary? documentary? Yeah. Documentary. Yeah. I, do, I drop a documentary. All That's right, acceptable, so, though, right? That's an acceptable I think pronunciation of all those And the reason syllables. we do that has something to do with when your brain is multitasking. And something about the way... It, it, I don't know. Something about the way our brains process the word documentary. If we don't think about it, it spits out documentary. So like, when you're commentating a video, I bet it's happened a bunch. It's happened to me, and I don't say that well, shit. I, my like. favorite is this. If you can get Wings to talk about the Kennedy shooting, he'll oh, eventually God. tell you that the shooter was in a book suppository. Oh, and that's <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> book suppository. That is a hell of a shot, and that is a tiny man. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but yeah, on the winter thing, I'm, I'm excited about winter coming, and I'm... I was never like that growing up. It's kind of nice. Can we try to get Grand Theft Auto Five early? Since I want to play that. Oh, I don't want to play that. Is Grand Theft Auto Five, dude? Pre-sales of Grand Theft Auto Five are higher than COD Ghost, according to an infographic I saw today. And these are stats. Painkiller already official oh, stats. Not facts. Shit. Stats. Yeah. Different. So you can take Better. those to the bank. Just don't expect anything in return. No, no, <laughs> not, not not legal tender. <laughs> not legal tender. Expect but, an overdraw fee. But yeah, mm. I, I started one. Like, is Grand Theft Auto V just the cool game to like, or is it that amazing a game? I haven't been into Grand Theft Auto since the PS2 days. I forget if it was Vice City or the one before that. But I think it was probably Vice City for you. The best one. Vice City was my favorite for sure. Okay. I'm still like a San Andreas first guy. One that was popular. I think what this the fuck? <laughs> What the hell? Oh, yeah. Get oh, the no. That oh, is a haircut. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, and wow. Oh, wow. Wings is excited. <laughs> That's something. See, the Diablo oh, 3, it gets the bitches. <laughs> oh, damn it. I wish I had the main... Google's so <laughs> Diablo 3 gets the bitches. I figured yeah, you could wow. use that to break, you know, into another subject. Yeah, when you... when you Wings, when you cut up your... Your review of Diablo 3 on PS3, put that at the end. <laughs> like, like if you have an outro, put that and then like fade back in to that, and then just you Diablo 3 gets the bitches, and then you just cut it. <laughs> that would be great. You see, I'm excited for Grand Theft Auto 5 because I'm a big fan of the series. I played it since Grand Theft Auto 3 uh, on the PS2 when they first went uh, 3D or you know the third person kind of thing that they did. Well, I guess the other ones on PlayStation were third person. But you get you guys yeah, fans know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And but when Grand Theft Auto 4 came out, I wasn't in YouTube. 
this it was 2008, and now as a content creator, as a content creator and a fan of the series, I'm really excited because I really like the RPG elements and the quote realistic canon that they try to that they're trying with Grand Theft Auto 4 and now 5. I like that, but the RPG elements that they're reinstituting from like San Andreas, I'm really interested in as well. Um, and so, as just a fan, as somebody that's going to play the game, but also as like a as a content creator, because I I think I could play that game and be entertaining and comedic and work well within the game and make entertaining content that people will hopefully watch. So I'm it's like twofold for me. So I'm kind of really excited. Uh, for I have a question. You can do it with the end game. You kill black or the lefty. <laughs> <laughs> you were sitting on that one, weren't you? You were sitting on that. That was good. I joke. My bad. Um, good. I got a question for you as a GTA expert. So this guy with a website approached me, and it's like Grand Theft Auto cheats, and he's like, if you pimp it, then maybe we can both, like, you know, whatever, rise to the top with it together. And my stance on cheating in games is that it's only okay if your victims are AI, right? Mm. You know, if you want to, whatever, glitch out the map and kill AI, if you want to go into God mode and kill every zombie in the world i don't care knock yourself out if your way of enjoying games is that then go play your game but if your victims are other people like you know it's a competitive environment and you're running extra health or something that i'm not not cool with it what kind of cheats are typically in grand theft auto are they multi oh cheats? yeah okay so i got this one. i still have i still have the grand theft auto vice city cheats memorized like, i could still <laughs> punch those out on my playstation 2 controller left down, left down. um yeah, the cheats are fun. They make the game better. To me, using the... So, there's a couple different combinations, and um, there's three different combinations that are weapon packs. So, it just loads you up with, like, ten different weapons, and, you know, you if you alternate one button on the com on the button combination, you get a different set of these ten weapons. Um, things like increasing your health all the way, and lowering your wanted rate. Um, so who's your victim? Or, is it other people? Nobody, just NPCs. Just, just yeah. you know, ah. just the police. The police in the game. It makes the game a lot more fun. If if you're the kind of player who occasionally likes just going on a rampage, then why have to shoot your, you know, your good gun or, you know, something you actually earned? Why not just have, like, an endless supply of Molotov cocktails or something or RPGs or mm. M16s or whatever? It's fun. Oh, yeah. No, that's the... If your victims are NPCs, which means non-player character for you guys who don't know, that which is the computer, dude, rape your computer. I don't care. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Literally. We support yeah. PC rape here. Yeah. Be sure to use your wet. <laughs> this graphics card will burn oh, you. God. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Um, Always use wet platinum when penetrating your computer. Drive. Oh, the disk drive? Is that where you're going to stick it? I don't oh, know. Wow. The disk is too small for me. Maybe you... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to open the back cover plate. <laughs> I was going to take that 144 millimeter fan off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, but I think that's, that's coming in the future, right? Like, how long is it before they attach some sort of a sexual device to, to, to your computer? Not so that soon you can... enough, right? A USB flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> what if there was something that, like, you know, like followed along with the uh, the video you were watching and and and, uh, and did something to you? Video, no nah, business idea. Let's get the Kickstarter up and going. I want, I want no part of this. I want, I want to be on this Kickstarter on a USB flashlight that actually moves up and down, USB power, and you like have a program that comes with it, so you can, you can have it either blow you. Or like fuck you, loose fuck, tight fuck. What loose fuck? Who wants to lose fuck? I, I want, I'm trying to bridge all the demographic here, guys. <laughs> what demographic <laughs> is that? Uh, well, I mean, what if what if instead of we? I mean, you can even do tight. fat fuck. You can like have it push down even harder, so then you like wait. <laughs> it straps around behind you with a belt and just pulls on even tighter. <laughs> it sounds like a rape machine. <laughs> We're going beyond USB power here. There's like a gasoline engine that drives. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this um, is diesel powered. Well, I want an image of this. Someone sketch it up. No, no. <laughs> nah, don't. Don't nah. do that. This don't belongs do that. on the subreddit. I would like a 10% cut of this when it becomes a multi-million dollar idea. <laughs> this is, I want no part, you want no part in getting it there, but once it is, give me that 10%. Because yeah. I'm uh, a fan of that. So do we, want, do we want to actually talk about Syria? I'm down. I'm not, I'm not, I swear all I, I do is so, I used to read I thought about putting a good gamer tag. What's that? 
Vladimir Putin. He, I thought I thought of a good gamer tag for him for Call of Duty. What, what would it be? Shooting Putin 187. <laughs> What's the 187? <laughs> Murder. Murder code for California. Nice. Shooting um, Putin 187. So I don't know. Not, not much else has happened. Obama's basically saying that he's going to let Congress decide if he's going to strike or not. Uh, at first, Obama said that there would be limited strikes, but now it's come out that it's basically going to be like 200 uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles followed by two days of bombing with B-1s and B-2s. And, uh, uh, you know, over... That's a serious bombing. Yeah, That's bombing war. That shit That's yeah. war. That's war. That's <laughs> war. Like it... What is it? A, a two hundred tomahawk missiles and like nonstop B one bombing. That's three hundred million. And they mentioned B fifty twos too. They're they're, 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 they're going to use are bad because they typically drop cluster bombs, which are basically dropping landmines, and they don't all explode. So you drop this... that shit, and, and and they make tacky ass songs. Oh, God. <laughs> they actually said that they were going to use oh, air to ground missiles shit. that were going to be launched from the B fifty twos. That, what'd you say? They dr- air to uh, air to ground missiles with from the B fifty twos. I guess that's a thing now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. How old are the B fifty twos? They're like six years is old. Scary as fuck. I imagine the bottom of a B fifty two now looks like the back of a porcupine, and it just shits <laughs> missiles all day. <laughs> like instead of those, instead of like a hundred cluster bombs, it's just a hundred smart missiles coming at you, and they're a million and a half dollars each, and they don't give a fuck anymore. Dude, this. I so hope this doesn't happen. Oh, he wants to do it bad, man. He's but you know what? You know what's him. awesome? He asked Congress. It's almost like he read this thing, the the Constitution, and talking about like Congress declaring war, and he's actually gonna be like, yeah, no good for you, Obama. Reading the Constitution. Well, I'm just saying, he's, he's ready to spend half a billion dollars to bomb a country because they killed 1,400 people. I I, I don't yep. know about that cost. That you came up with, it's it's, it's well, expensive. I'm just, saying, I'm just doing on base what Woody said. You know, 200 cruise missiles at a million and a half pieces, 300 million, Bob. So yeah. I'm sure the B-52 raids can cover the other 200 million. Yeah, you're probably right. Probably Not a billion dollar number, enterprise. Number. Yeah. Um, but I I don't think. And and what's so bad about Kim? I, I talked to. It's actually so the guy I live stream with Andrew. I, I live stream with a couple of people, but he's one. And I was like, what's such a big deal about chemical weapons? Why is that like the thing? Because we have nukes, and we, I mean, Bush was trying to get more nukes, little nukes, you know, bunker buster nukes. And um, we have napalm, and we have, you know, the things that are similar to chemicals. No napalm. Uh, nope. Okay. I guess we don't use napalm anymore. That's a historical thing. Um, but, you know, like, the, the, US is, dude, the U.S. is all kinds of shit that will kill you. But for some reason, the way we kill you is better. Like, ah, we use bullets. That's legit kill stuff right there. <laughs> you no, know, we use missiles and we use cluster bombs and we use you know explosives and we're thinking about using little nukes, but they're just little nukes. So you know, don't get don't get all worked up about it. But you use <laughs> chemical weapons. Oh my gosh, you're the most horrible, terrible person in the world. I, so, I think I've got more. So okay. I started. I asked, why is this such a big deal? And he says he thinks it's a holdover from World War One. World War One had the first like weapons of mass destruction. And chemical weapons just did this weapon of mass destruction thing, right? They, they ra- rained down a hell that we didn't see before. It was the first mega effective weapon. And now there's still a mindset that these chemical weapons are extra bad, that it's something you shouldn't use, even though really they're kind of out of date compared to some of the ways that the U.S. has for killing you. Because they're chemical weapons... Now it's an extra horrible, terrible thing, and uh, and that it really they should be classified in the same way as some of the other weapons we have. Can I can I throw a counterpoint here? Yeah. All right, you're thinking about taboo gas from World War One, which was basically designed just to kill people. It's not really a thing. I think chemical warfare eight t- turns into or biological warfare, which is morally called. What happens when a country sends a virus over that eats flesh, and you get sick because it's airborne, and you have the like- whole country just Sounds eaten like away and sick me. and just sickly and diseased, children dying in the streets. I mean, a bomb blows you up. What if you're not in the bomb's vicinity? You're good. I, but somebody can get sick from that chemical warfare and drive to your house, and now your family's no, dead. but not from the chemical warfare, from the biological warfare. And I think if they had used biological warfare, like if he'd sent some weaponized smallpox on these people, I'd be feeling a lot different about it. Yes, I would too. If he was sending a contagious disease. 
then I think the whole world would be like, dude, you don't mess around with contagious diseases. That stuff can spread way beyond your intended victims. We're going in. You're it's done. Like, it's like, haven't you ever seen a zombie movie? We're going to fuck your day up, dude. Right. But he's dropping the equivalent of napalm, I feel. I'm, you know, these are PKA facts. But, you know, <laughs> he's just he's killing 1,400 people with the big strike and these chemical weapons and stuff. And I think, you know, man, I'm sure if he knew you are going to get this worked up, he would have used bullets. You know, all right, just let us know how you want us to kill our people, and we'll use that instead. You can mind your own yeah, business. Yeah, exactly, and that, that's what we're saying right now. It's ridiculous. It, it, and the, in the end, I just feel like it's like, why do we care so much? Don't we have enough shit going on domestically that we can handle? Yes, exactly. I mean, with that $300 million, couldn't that be spent somewhere else? $3 million. Maybe, I, I have maybe to pay off her debt a little bit, just a little bit? That's a thought. <laughs> would that even make it? Maybe would that even uh, scratch the pain on the thing. We actually are at risk of getting Let's our country killed. Let's some real assholes. Let's do that for a change. But we're we're the real assholes, Kyle. That's the problem. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Canada. Oh, I'm looking oh. at you. <laughs> Talking to you, Canada. Cocksuckers. <laughs> Canada's with us on that. On, on why don't this, we on just? This why don't we shoot know that? This was in North Korea. So, so I, I think um, I'm pretty sure about this. I know for sure that the countries that are with us are France. They're ready to like. Put boots on the ground. Probably they get. They're sending a boat into the area. One of the biggest uh, aircraft carriers in the world, I'm told. And they, uh, um, Canada. Canada's with us. And I'm not sure who so else. So we'll have the Mounties. The yes. Mounties, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I heard England's not with us. No, they are not. It was, um, you know what? Pussies. No, Pussies. Eng England should be with us a little bit, right? They should just be with us with a display of encouragement. Well, they kind of did. So the you okay. know the prime minister over there was like. Like, yeah, let's do it. And he goes to the, I think it's the House of Commons, maybe? He goes to them, and he's like, you know, let's put it up for a vote, let's do this. And for the first time since, like, 17, I think it was 1791, first time since 1791 that um, they didn't, you know, agree with him on the basis of war. And the last time it happened was when we fought for our independence from England. And uh, and they were like, no, we're done. Stop the war with America. We're getting fucked up here. That, if Britain was smart, they'd, they'd send over, like, 12 guys. Because the United States loves England. I swear to God. If anyone ever messes with England, the entire country will rally. You know, like, ever have that friend who's on your side when you're wrong? That's what England did with Iraq. I don't care what happens to England. Same team. Right? That, that's, Absolutely, right? They yeah. don't feel that way about us as much. I saw, I saw a survey where like 66% um, said that they didn't care if the, the recent vote about the war damaged their relations with America. And I'm just like, why not? Why don't they like us? We really like you guys. You got yeah. those cool accents. We like putting you in our movies, making you butlers and shit. I don't know. Some of, them are, some of them are fucking assholes. Yeah, mo most of you are okay. You got that queen over there. She's like 114 years old or I something. You got that it. cool royal family. <laughs> got those guys with those weird Yeah, you got hit shots of the, of, the, of, the, of the prince's wife. Yeah, whatever people her are always title getting is. married and your, your, your royalty runs around naked a lot. It's awesome. So I, I like you guys. I mean, I mean, and, and the funny thing is, I mean, you're just a tiny island country now. You're not that empire that we used to be friends with. We stayed friends with you, even though pretty much, you know, you shrunk down from a giant empire to like a tiny island country. Every time the U.S. goes to war, England is there for us, and they they should just keep that streak alive, even if it's just a display. You know, it, like, <laughs> like, all right, yeah, hypothetically, if Congress approves, we're gonna hook you up with the missile. Like just one. Sure. Here's yeah. our missile. Dude, I don't even want to go to war. But if I do, I want England by my side because they're they're our same team. That that's how mm -hmm. we do it. And uh, and you know, heaven forbid something ever happens to England, it, the U.S. is there too. Like I think yeah. that's the job. I want to say we'll destroy we Italy for World you. War Two. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I swear to God, the U.S. If Italy were to like, if Italy were to like shoot a bunch of rockets at like London and fuck it all up, we would shit on oh. them. <laughs> you don't know <laughs> what we do to those fuckers. <laughs> they mess with England. We would take that fucking boot of a country and drop it in the middle of the Pacific. <laughs> Just... we, we would blow the Colosseum up. <laughs> all that shit's gone. <laughs> Isn't the Vatican near there? I apologize in advance. You're we do a real favor if you blow that place up. <laughs> uh, I've yeah, been watching a lot of the video coming out of Syria, and it has been, it has been an interesting couple of weeks. So if you go on Reddit, there's there's always some subreddit for like military, you know, videos and stuff like that. And I have seen a lot of people die this week in Syria. 
And those are just the ones I saw. Do you, do you, I always, like, I think sometimes about my dream job, like what I'd like to do if I could, if I could do anything and start over and, dude, wartime uh, video journalist or wartime photographer seems like a really cool gig. That is a fantasy job. You think so? I think it's a job you can get shot in and beheaded. Yeah, Kelly was like, "Yeah, man, scary shit." Now, leading up to there, though, it's incredible. <laughs> like it's it's right. nonstop action. It, it's like I I swear I think it's it's right there. Like Call like, of Duty, Indiana the, uh, Jones, right? I, like like it's some crazy cool shit. This word is a bad word, but I don't think it is in intelligence circles. Like it, it's called a spook when you're with the CIA, right? You're a spook. Yeah. Well, you're clandestine agent. Yeah, yeah. I think I swear. I, I, it's it's also a racial term from like the forties or something for black people, so it's hard to say. But, At least um, you said it, not me. Yeah, but I think a, a CIA agent is often referred to as a spook, and that seems like a really cool gig. Um, like I don't know, real life Jason Bourne shit. But photojournalist in war is I don't know. That just seems like a really neat job to me. You think every now and then, you know, maybe you get to pick up a gun, and do some shooting. If you want, you can do anything. There's no rules <laughs> yeah, for photo Exactly. So I was yeah. I was talking to a guy over there one time, and we were discussing. I was like, maybe I could come over there, and I could film some. He's like, yeah, you can do that. You come right on the front lines. And I'm like, isn't that like crazy? To, he's like, yeah, you'd be in the war zone. And I'm like, and that would be cool. You can get, get us clearance for that. He's like, yeah, totally. I was like, well, what if we were like getting attacked? Could, could, I, could I get a gun? He's like. You have a gun no matter what, bro. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, wait a minute. Are you telling me I can go fight in Afghanistan and I can leave whenever I want? Hmm. <laughs> Ultimately, I was not allowed to go, but but that was going to be an interesting trip. That would have been awesome, dude. <laughs> like, if we go to war with someone, I don't know, grab North Korea or something, right? United States and North Korea are going to war. I'm going to get in the vacation business and just be like, come on, you want to shoot some people? Grab your gun, hop on Woody Express Airlines, I'll drop you in North Korea, you'll do a week-long uh, soldier vacation fantasy. Soldier <laughs> vacation soldier fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Soldier we vacation fantasy. Oh, it's, there, my, it's my new money-whoring scheme. I'll hook you up with an AR-15, some Gamma Labs, a Netflix code. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you should you, you should totally put this prize pack together and take a picture of it. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you thought this out through this far. How much would this fantasy trip cost? We think twenty five thousand. Twenty, dude. But, but lucky this week it's 000? on sale for twenty. <laughs> yeah, for twenty five thousand, we really set you up. You All right, the, you, wait, 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 we're wait. gonna put you behind fifty caliber machine gun, and we're gonna go for a little ride in the Humvee. It's a twenty five thousand dollar vacation. But this week only, coupon code Woody twenty thousand gets you it for twenty grand instead. Well, it's got to be about twenty grand. You're flying somebody across the Pacific Ocean, mm -hmm. and you're giving them all AR fifteens. Uh, they're about a thousand bucks a piece. Nah, the military don't pay shit for those things. This is, this is all in conjunction. This, this is, is a big commercial Woody for the, the Navy. Military. No, no. The way you do this thing, it's a big commercial for the Navy. They pick up a little bit of the tab, you know, and you see Woody <laughs> in yeah. there with like. like six or eight Navy SEALs, and he's just kind of there, and he's showing off his calves, and they're kind of sold on the whole idea, and, you know, <laughs> next thing you know, there's a movie about Woody, and it's it's, it's about his involvement with some sort of Navy SEAL Absolutely. raid, maybe. And, and Wings, that yeah. AR-15, it's only a rental, you know? Yeah, it's a rental, man. It's a yeah. rental, dude. It will, uh, yeah, you bring him back, you clean him up, clean the blood off, you're all yeah, good to go. Get the blood <laughs> off, you know, maybe he gets to keep the bayonet as a souvenir, we drop a new one on. I was about to say, like, so, so bayonets aren't really used too much in modern wars. I think if I was uh, if I was over there, I think it'd be fun to put a bayonet on your rifle. I think it was. It's a, think, think of the statement that you're making when you do that. Yeah. <laughs> that that you so often find yourself in a position where you need to stab someone, but they're just too far away. <laughs> so you've went to the trouble of attaching a knife onto the end of your killing machine <laughs> and make it. You've made it a fully automatic rifle with a. Never-ending poking machine on the end. I just, just that, occurred to me. Is that something you need? If you go on the Woody vacation to murder people from North Carolina, Korea, <laughs> I will hook you up with a donator rank on WoodyCraft.net. Oh <laughs> shit! Maybe oh, have yeah. laptops on the plane to North Korea so you can play Minecraft on the way. So we joke about this, our flight. but this can be done. This the stuff we're talking about. You can do this stuff. You, there are people who will, you know, take you on one of these crazy third-world vacations where you do crazy shit like that. You go to Cambodia, go out in the jungle, shoot some water buffalo with an RPG. That shit happens. 
Yeah. Oh, I that know sounds it. like more of a trip I'd want to take. I know, right? <laughs> did you say shoot a water buffalo with an RPG? Shoot a shoot a water buffalo with an RPG. Yeah, we I know about a guy who's done before. that. Yeah, we, we were like, is that a good video idea? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> that would get age gated immediately. <laughs> yeah, you, but, all you have to do is. But age gated videos do well video. sometimes. At the beginning of the video, you just point at the water buffalo and go, "He's coming right at us," <laughs> and then you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> and then and you're you're all... to the water buffalo, and he's like casually eating he's like, grass huh? on the ground. He's like, huh? <laughs> and like some grass falls out of his mouth, and then he just like, <laughs> the fucking rocket propelled grenade. <laughs> just to be sure, sprinkle up. some crack on him. When, you, when you're done, sprinkle some crack on him. <laughs> <laughs> he had crack. Oh. I'll tell you another thing. Um, this, is, this is a little bit off topic. We were, we were talking about the, the, you know, the Syria thing. So the Russians are kind of you know sticking their nose in, in this thing, too, and they're saying they're going to back Syria. Uh, Syria. My thing is this: it's, I was a little afraid for Obama at the uh, the G20 thing the other day, the convention, wherever it was, and I think it was in Germany, because he's got to meet up with, you know, um, Putin. You know, they actually met, you know, shook hands. You know, they're in physical proximity. And I thought to myself, what would happen if Putin literally slapped President Obama? What would happen? Obama would bitch out. He'd just bitch out. And, and what? Okay, but what would the repercussions be? Nothing. Obama's a bitch. They'd be asking for an apology. Let's let's think about this seriously, though. What if the president of Russia bitch slapped the president of the United States? And I don't know if you guys are are aware, Vladimir Putin would beat the shit out of Obama and George Bush at the same time. Are we sure about that? You throw Clinton in there, and it's a royal rumble to the death. No, Putin's, so, a, Putin's a very smart Clinton's got man heart there. problems. He's not going anywhere. I'm He's talking about Clinton from for... 1990, my friend. <laughs> oh. That guy Dude. will fuck your wife and kick your ass at the same time. <laughs> Putin's, uh, Putin's a very and jog on down to McDonald's for some breakfast. Let me jump in here. Is Putin actually tough? Because the Putin being the badass wrestles bear thing is kind of a meme. <laughs> In real I life. have seen him shirtless in the water, though, like swimming in this frigid ice water and shit. President Barack Obama plays basketball with collegiate athletes on a weekly basis. He's good. He's an athletic president. He's probably the most athletic president that I can remember in my lifetime. Yes, absolutely. If, if, you, if you strip away all the fanboyism and Democrat and Republican whatever and just talk about... Who would win the decathlon amongst presidents of my lifetime, which is, of course, all of them? I think, <laughs> I think Obama wins. I think Obama is the most athletic president we've ever had. Now, flash over to Putin. Obama's like a foot taller than that guy, right? I, I, I don't know if he's the most athletic we've ever had. I don't know. I think Teddy Roosevelt, when he took office, was, was probably still pretty athletic. And, uh, I still and, take Andrew and, Jackson think, over Obama. I think, oh, Andrew Jackson was a scary man. And Kennedy. I, I think Kennedy was still in pretty good shape. He's, he's laying it to all those supermodels and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but he had horrible back problems. I didn't, didn't know anything he? about that. I, I don't yeah, know. He was in the Navy. He had like some serious, serious back problems. He was problems. in the Navy. Yeah, his ship got sank. Get those guys on the boat. Yeah, um, he did. He's a hero. World War II. Yeah, yep. I, it's funny. I, I heard he was talking about that privately, and they were like, you know, you did this thing where you got off the boat, you swam to safety, you saved all these people, and he's like, that story's been changed so many times. I don't even know the truth anymore. Oh, like, that's oh, interesting. But um, uh, yeah, in terms of athletic presidents, Obama's certainly way up there by the top. Yes, he I is definitely. Think, is. I mean, the ones we talked about, Kennedy and Jackson, I still take Obama, but whatever. Um, now you can flip over to Putin. Putin actually is kind of a strong, uh, strong guy. I have seen him shirtless, and he looks good for his age. But Obama's way taller, and he's very athletic. Is Putin the man anywhere near yeah. Putin the mean? I I would bet. I would I would totally bet that on on Putin in a fight. I think Putin would be. First of all, Putin is former KGB. Mm -hmm. This guy's hardcore. Okay, he's a leftover from the Cold War. He's older than he looks. But he's kind of, he's a really outdoorsy kind of guy. Like he does go and swim in the ocean. He does go on these like crazy big game hunting trips where he hunts bear and stuff. And he's just a he he's, he looks to be a, like a super manly man. Bro. On the other hand, I feel like Obama's the kind of guy who's you know he's just you know he's you said he played basketball. Uh, and... Putin is actually a martial artist too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, do you, he took he took judo. He was in judo for Judo's a while. Pretty legit. Yeah, I got judo pictures right here. I've been whooping some guy's ass. 
<laughs> Don't look at Winks. I got pictures of Vladimir Putin. But we'll link it. If, if you have a video of Putin fighting someone, you definitely have to link that. What if What if we look at the video and it's like that kung fu uh, artist guy who's who all the students feel bad for him, so he's just allowing them to like throw them left and right. <laughs> what if Putin is fighting like thirty of those thirty guys at once and they're just flying everywhere? Did you see the one where the guy? Um, I think it was a video of him. It, it leads off with him and the students who all kind of take dives. Like all he does is wave yes. their hands at him. That's exactly and then what it's I'm him fighting an MMA fight. And <laughs> the other his like his real life opponent has no respect for his fake powers, and he just beats him in the face. Like, he gets all bloodied, and the guys it's he seemed to be genuinely confused. And yes. then he comes back for like a second, like let me try this again, and he gets beat even worse. And you feel almost bad for the shyster. Like like yeah, he believes in the hype apparently. Yeah yeah so so, you know the kung fu master guy he comes out with one of those crazy stances where you're just it looks really funky and your knees are bent your arms are doing all kind of wavy stuff and it looks scary if you've seen Karate Kid enough, but that's I guess that's not really how people fight <laughs> definitely not an MMA anyway an M MMA fighter comes out like I don't know like he's a boxer or something and he just punches this guy a couple times times in the face and when the guy starts bleeding he looks genuinely confused about what blood is and why it's coming out of his face. Yeah, yeah. He's like, what is this shit? How did that guy uh, get through Did you throw shit? blood on me? You threw blood on me. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna kick your ass for throwing this blood on me. Like it was like one of those. And, and his moves were funny because they were like like that's not even a hit. That's a chi wave that's supposed to like shock you into flying backwards toward the cage. It, there wasn't a cage. It was like a wrestling mat. But just the same. And um, it's like the guy was like, what? And I'm fucking right in <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. It was such a mismatch. But I yeah. I, I like watching bad fighters lose. I um I linked a video of Putin wrestling with the National Russian like wrestling team. Like he's, It's just like rel basic roles. Look at the number two comment on this, on, on this video. I'd like to see Putin break a bastard's fucking neck. Above that, this is on this is on uh, uh, Russia Today's YouTube channel, which is RT. And then Putin is the best. That that's even higher. That's even more highly rated than I'd like to see Putin break a bastard's fucking neck. <laughs> I'm waiting. The minute the video is only a minute and a half. I guess I'll get to action soon. Around 50 seconds. Right, I'm skipping, which is dangerous. Putin's gonna kick his world. ass. <laughs> I, you know, I was I was skeptical because Barack was a bigger like person than him. I think Putin will kill him. Oh, this is oh, absolutely. That guy's not offering any kind of. Counter. I understand he's practice his practice roles, yeah. but I mean, looking at the Wikipedia of Putin, <laughs> he once ate a lion. I would so ways you're gonna get hate for that. Oh my God, you're reading from Wikipedia. Oh no, Wikipedia is uh, legit. No, oh, yeah, source that shit. That's what you write on your term papers in college. Source Wikipedia, bam, instant A's. But what would the Secret Service agents do if Putin just bitch slapped Obama? Because that's the that's the thing. Well, we're not talking about a continued attack. We're just talking about a bitch slap. We're talking about like you know, get out of Syria, whack, and that's it. And he just walks right. away. According to his Wikipedia, he's a sixth degree black belt in judo. He's a champion of Lingard. He's a master. He's a champion of Lingard and Sambo, and he's a Cairo Kushin Kani six degree black belt as well. But a lot of that stuff means nothing to me. Like, black <laughs> belts are easy to earn. And um, and then he's Putin, right? If Putin wanted the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, which is actually very difficult to earn, I imagine there's a guy out there that'll be like, dude, I got you to hook up. You know? I can't have the, the leader of my nation not having a black belt. It If he was a non-famous person, those things I wouldn't call into question in the same way. But, yeah, anyway, so he's a martial artist. I guess he beat Obama. I bet all Obama is is a natural, accurate puncher. Of Stevens <laughs> what, what are we doing, Wink? Right, never mind. Forget I said anything, Wink. He was, he was presented at Black Belt in December 2009 by Japanese champion Kohorokushin Karate Do Master Raiho Roma. Yeah, I'm sure Roma. that's his instructor, and he's carefully Asura. evaluating his skills. <laughs> Not just hooked up some guy on the other side of the planet with a black belt. Out of Can we side. have a segment where Wings reads Japanese things? Yes. <laughs> like Japanese <laughs> names and places. and. Hold on. My deep southern mind can't take on these. It's funny. Things. No, because 
I I can't speak. To, I have no idea how to translate the language or how it's supposed to sound, but it just sounds funny. I have a question. This guy right here behind me, he wants to be a little Asian man, dude. Like he corrects See, every here, little. Here's, here's the difference. He assumes I want to be a little Asian man. I just like the culture. You are not a little Asian man. Dude, he's uh, that kind of guy that you see standing at like, like 280 Asian pounds with like a Hello Kitty t-shirt on. Whoa, 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 whoa. My oh, you read a, oh, you're one of those guys. You read a lot of manga and you watch Akira and you're like, oh, it's like I'm totally Japanese now. So no. Please, how's the weight loss video? See? Like, um, how, how much have you lost? Um, overall, 0. 0.8. There, now we're talking, bitch. 0. 0.8. Says, All right. All right. That's, so far, we're making uh, moves. Uh, first video, weeks, right? I, first video, I laid like 428, and then I discovered that it was if I lean forward with the camera, that it takes weight off the scale. Yeah, that's good. That's because it takes technique. center off. So the next, second week, I actually got the accurate weight, and it was like 430, 436. 436. And like today, yes, this this week I weighed 435.2. <laughs> there it is, 0.8. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, there's a lot of stuff I'm messing up with, like um, like like just still eating late, and like I'm not eating the right, I'm not making the right choices with my food. Um, that that's the stuff I got to cut out. That's where I'm messing up at. Um, I don't know. I'm hopefully I'm hopefully I'm gonna lose weight. I, my goal is four pounds a week. I think that's a little high. I'd like to see you lose weight, but I'd also like to see that scale become a really good investment. I want to see you make so much money off these weight loss videos that you're like, dude, I bought the scale for the scale bucks. of the weight loss videos. Just the three I've done. Paying for so, the scale is I don't like one. the scale. I think we need to get rid of the scale and instead get one of those balance scales where there's another object on the opposite side and you know, figure out how many watermelons you weigh. You're talking like a, a gigantic scale of justice, right? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I, I, wanna I am out. down two watermelons this week. <laughs> yeah, I want to find out how many. I want to like, side, how much a, is it like three weigh? goats, three goats, a pig, yeah. eight chickens, and a skinny blonde chick. I can just see the other person like like you got two pigs on there. I don't know how much a pig weighs, wings, so don't. <laughs> Don't get inside. Way more than I do. A pig's like five, six hundred pounds. No, these are pot billy pigs. Yeah, we'll get some smaller pigs then. We'll put two <laughs> okay. pigs on there, and like if wings still weighs more, we can just like add chickens. <laughs> I want to see how many farm animals wings can weigh. <laughs> I know. We're like, all right, we you know, still offer move a chicken. I got, I got it right here. You know, some people that watch my videos are from other countries of the world, but they don't use our system of weight. <laughs> To make this more universal, we're going to weigh ourselves with things you might see in your everyday life. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, there's like a bunch of dogs fighting together in a <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how many Pomeranians Wings of Redemption weighs. That's a lot of Pomeranians, Bob. <laughs> I go keep dumping them in the basket. And be like, how many buckets of fried chicken do I actually weigh? <laughs> <laughs> We can work these out. I mean, I, I'm sure somebody over on the uh, Painkiller Already Reddit or uh, subreddit could make a scale, make a whole graph based on the fact that Wings Redemption weighs 428 pounds, I believe. Um, you know, go out, go out there and come up with things that weigh the same amount, like how many potbelly pigs, how many chickens, how many uh, buckets of fried chicken. I want to know. Hmm. Cut now. I don't want to derail this topic because it's awesome, but I had a question for Kyle. Uh huh. So about a week ago, I did a little video shoot, and I put explosives inside of a watermelon. And, yes. Um, I guess I blew up explosives between testing and shooting three times, but one of them, they didn't explode. So I assumed I missed my target, and then when I saw the little baggie of explosives, uh, it was all ripped in two, and like explosives were leaking out, and... Do you think it didn't go even though I hit it? It's possible. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah, it's possible. Hmm. Sometimes they just don't go off. Yeah, I was like, did I, I thought I mixed it pretty thoroughly. I mean, once you it's... start mixing it, you can't see in the bag anymore, so you don't exactly know what it looks like inside. Yeah. But sometimes they don't go off. Sometimes they don't go off. Back up to it? Sometimes, no, it doesn't work that way. What, sometimes what it doesn't go off. He was asking if he'd be scared walking up to it. It, it just doesn't uh, work that way. It takes an, like, an impact to make it go. But, you know, on the other hand... Maybe I should have been. I don't know. It doesn't work that way, like Kyle said. But, like, sometimes bullets have a delayed shot. 
Shit happens. Yeah, I won't worry about it. Hmm. I wanted to see you microwave the stuff. I was interested. I, 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 I really wanted to see what would happen. Dude, I had a microwave ready to go. We were going to put explosives in a watermelon in a microwave, and that's a bomb, right? That's an enclosed, explosive in an enclosed area. And uh, my agent has, like, an acre, and she's like, oh, you can do it in my yard. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. So I just I threw a baggie in the grass, and I shot it with the FN2000, which people don't know. It's a, just a two two three round. And um, uh, it... It blew up and it was so loud. All their neighbors came out. They, they like <laughs> live on a cul-de-sac, but they have unusually large lots for cul-de-sacs. And um, yeah, they're like gathering in the middle, wondering what happened. They thought there was like a a, a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> the Syrians are coming. Yeah, and, and <laughs> my agent and her husband were just like, "Whoa, oh my god!" And they immediately start brainstorming for other places to do it. And I thought like that worked out well. That was awesome. Let's let's start the shoot. But they. Uh, they like put me off in the woods somewhere for the actual video shoot, and in that place we didn't have any way to make the microwave fire up. Like it, that's it, a shame. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, that's, dude, it's not a shame. Video idea number two. <laughs> yeah, I want to see what that's gonna do. Yeah, do you think well, red target? Do you think it's microwavable? Do you think it'll blow up? Yeah, totally. You can stick it. I I I shouldn't say that on the internet. Um, I don't you know. Come to Wings House. <laughs> is, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Is there it's a way you can rephrase it? Yes, it is microwavable. And the, is there an item in there that you think will react to it? Like, is there magnesium in it? Yeah, there's magnesium in there. There's magnesium in it, so that should start. There's red, fo- there's red phosphorus. There's magnesium. There's a lot. There's a few things in there. And Basically, it, when it gets, if it gets hot enough, it'll just go off. This is, dude. So I'm, my camera has come out with an upgrade, and it's kind of expensive. I think all put together, it'll be like four grand. But I'm gonna do it. Right now, my slow mo camera records uh, slow mo in eight second bursts, and it's kind of tricky to capture the moment that you want. And uh, you can set it so it just keeps recording, and then you hit stop, and it gets the most recent eight seconds. But what I really want is for just continuous recording, and I'm going to upgrade. And with that, I'll be able to get slow mo and never miss the shot. How many frames per second? Two hundred and forty. Okay. So that's it's. Nice. What it is, is like, for people that don't know slow, camera talk, if you, if, if 240 does human speed stuff really well, like some, I, I think you can do another montage, like imagine filling a, a glass like you drink out of with colored sand and hitting it with a baseball bat. The effect you would get on something like that at 240 frames per second is silky smooth and awesome. The, uh, like a water balloon moving on somebody's face, that would work really well. Um, I got a better idea. Hitting a baseball. Oh, slapping a person. Like a like like hypothetically, imagine I were to slap a person and like the waves of skin ripple and stuff. It does that in slow mo. Great. But things like explosions, things like bullets traveling through the air, that takes a hundred and fifty thousand dollar camera, not a ten thousand dollar camera. Could it? Could it? Would your camera do well with like my back hairs getting picked up with like a, a ceiling fan? What? Wait, what now? <laughs> like my back hair like one of the things I do sometimes is take my shirt off and have my fan turned up so the back hair is lifted up off my back and it gives a cool little feeling of like being in a wind tunnel uh, yeah my camera would do great for that <laughs> I think we could capture that yeah we should do a shoot sometime but um, I love my camera do you guys want to see it yes yeah, do. yes what do you have uh, uh, I'll show you Wings in your back. <laughs> My back hair is epic. Oh shit, dude, that's the realness. Okay. This is a Sony FS700, and um, I guess you could say it's a pro quality video camera. It does 4K with the upgrade I'm talking about getting, for you guys who are video nerds. This is the kit lens on it, which is good, but not great. I also have adapters that let me use my Canon lenses, which are great. But I like this because the, um, the zoom is so far. I think it's... I mean, it I almost looks like a rifle sight. It looks like you had a Picatinny rail thing set up <laughs> on the bottom of it. The zoom goes from 18 to 200. So with just one lens, I can capture every scenario. And I feel like going like super high-end on the lenses 
doesn't really help for YouTube videos, but I could be wrong on that. This is the ND filter, so you can still use the ISO you want, even if it's really bright out. And, and it does 240 frames per second. That's, uh, that's my camera, and I really like can it. Can you imagine pornography? <laughs> oh crap! Now, okay, so now imagine Wings of Redemption POV pornography at oh. 40 frames per second. Doesn't the GoPro do slow mo fairly well? See, it's got a pad. I, I bought a little rig for it, pad for the shoulder. Shoot. Right, so that was the Sony FS what 700? That's right. All right. You're googling it, aren't you? I'm looking. I'm at B and H right now. Let's see how much I can't afford it. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, here you go, Woody. You don't have the SRW 9000 HD cam. That's $132,684.95. Well, we're going to get. We obviously had a sponsor, Lefty, so we, he can afford that after the show. <laughs> no, it, I don't think it doesn't come with a lens. I think it's just the camera body. Yeah. Wow. What's wow? That's insanely. So you have to buy a $130,000 camera body and then the lens for it. Some of these lenses gonna... run 80 to 120 grand, too. It's, That's uh, not even fair. Yeah, lenses are fairly cheap if they don't zoom much. Or, or they're fairly cheap if they zoom a lot and the aperture is still not tight. Like this one, you don't get a super depth of field on, so things are kind of in focus foreground and background. Mm -hmm. And I have other lenses if I want to get that effect, but I usually don't. I usually feel like, well, I'll just get it all in focus and not miss the shot. That's my fear. With the next one, it'll be easier when I upgrade it. But... um. The, the business case for those $100,000 lenses is when you have like a crew, like imagine you're filming Scrubs and you know, you've got like 40 people on set and five actors in the scene and you never have to change a lens all day long because you have a great lens that does it all. That's the business case. And the other option would be everyone waiting for you to change and do your thing. I would be a horrible boss. I would like change the fucking lens, son. Well, uh, well, in effect, what you're saying is, all right, I'll pay all your union salaries while we set all this stuff up and relight and, you know, do your thing. <laughs> and I'll pay the, the guys who edit it and try to color correct it so it looked the same on every lens. And, you know, there's yeah, a... the difference is wings wouldn't pay. Well, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> he make you do it on your break. He make you do it on your break. Uh, yeah, so it's... it's yeah, and I, and I, I repeat myself constantly in, in, on woodycraft.net, right, as I work with all, like, the plug-in developers and builders and stuff like that. I'm like, you can't be against an idea. You're not allowed to be against an idea. That doesn't get us anywhere. You have to be for some other idea, you know? And, and that's, that's, it's like a Woodworth family rule. Oh, no, mm -hmm. my last name skipped, but, uh, or slipped. But, yeah, in, in my house, you're not allowed to just say no. Right? Just saying no is, is not something that we do here. Like, and, and that goes for everything. Like, hey, do you want to go to Salsa Fresh? No. Not no. No, I'd rather go to Long Star or Lone Star. No, I'd rather go to Wendy's. No, I'd rather go here. Because just no's don't get anything done. It's got to be solutions, not just denials. And um, uh, so when Wing says you can't have that land, it's like, all right, you got to come up with an alternative. And your alternative is paying the editors and the people as they sit around and do nothing. Yeah, but see, I'd be a little more hardcore about it. Like, all right, we could spend an hour doing this, or I can find somebody who can do it in 20 minutes. <laughs> Good job. Well, anyway, I, we're going on and on about this lens change, but it, that's that's the business case for it. You're a little yeah, more this hypothetical lens changing situation we just got into somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my shoots, it's always just you can work harder and use one lens, but um, I don't think like the differences in lenses are really subtle. And if you're doing high end photography and you're selling it, then it matters to you. If you're an amateur photographer and it really matters to you, then it really matters to you, right? But if you're doing YouTube videos. You know, as much as I love high-end equipment, I think the differences are so subtle or could be matched in like post that uh, I've mostly been opting for the convenience of a wide zoom. But that's just me. Anyway, camera talk. Cameras and mics. I love mics. Better than Game of Thrones talk. I could build you a oh. damn good sork on Diablo 3, but I don't know what the fuck you just said. <laughs> uh. Uh, it's like it's like Game of Thrones talk. I don't know. It's like you're speaking Japanese to me. Kyle, did you say someone did analysis on the fact that I'm like Fallout talk racist or something? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. I was on the the PKA Reddit uh, subreddit. I read all that you people write, and uh, there are a lot of you. There are a lot of you that want to have sex with me. Apparently, I I'm cool with that. Um, you <laughs> know, we could, that could be arranged in some situations. But long story short, yeah, they were like. 
a lot of people were upset that Woody shut down, or they, or at least they felt like Woody shut down Fallout talk last week a little bit prematurely. And they, you know, they went into the trouble of measuring how long, a, you know, the average Game of Thrones talk used to last, and they found that you were, in fact, prejudiced. <laughs> and I agree. Just like Fallout talk. We were talking about those I vaults. I love Fallout talk. Everybody was so absorbed with us talking about those weird vaults, like the vault where the guy, it was just one man and, like, a, a bunch of puppets, and he was in there for, like, many years with New the topic. puppets. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys never get to hear the story of the no, 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 in Vault no. 77. I'm doomed. I ruined it. I'm where does this stuff, know. where, Kyle, where do you, like, learn this stuff? Is this, like, all part of unpublished lore, or is this all in the games? You just got to know where Some to go. Some of it, it literally is unpublished lore. There was a game called Fallout Tactics that I think never was, but they've got all the info about the game. Um, I get it from the Fallout wiki. I go on there and read for hours at a time. Um, Oh, oh, okay. So, so if you're a fan of the Fallout wiki, what was the, what's the troll thing where it's like something having to do with three dog and like uh, oh, that's Fallout Three. Yeah, some kind of beeps and message like oh god, what was it? Fallout Tactic is actually technically the third game. It came out years after the second one. It's uh, instead of one character, you, you actually get a couple more right off the bat. Yeah, and it's got the Master Vault in it, like mm -hmm. Zero Vault and all that stuff. Yeah. And you play as um, the Brotherhood, if I remember. Yeah. You talk about I, some games that nobody gives a shit about. No, dude, Fallout has a very big. I'm telling you, like on the on the subreddit, there was a lot of people who who were talking about how much they love the Fallout talk. I mean, I understand. I love Fallout talk, but like, people are gonna give some hate on me for bit no. about this. No, they're well, not. I don't the think first so. two games of the series, I could give two shits and a fuck about. They could be ground down underfoot, and I would not lose a bit of sleep. I like the Bethesda titles. I think a lot of the same developers um, came came on board with Bethesda. I think I was reading that the other day. Uh, I don't know much about the, the previous Fallouts. I, I just don't. I'm not opposed to them or opposed to playing them, but obviously I think for you know a modern player, Fallout 3 and New Vegas are going to be the games to go to. Mm -hmm. Woody's just silent. Did you guys see that <laughs> article I just posted? We have to do something with that. And we have to have Lefty read it. I, I'm sorry, what article? What is this? this there's an article like... I just put in. It was an image. In the, in the image, there's an article. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> read it, Lefty. Oh, read it. No, I'm good. Come on, dude. I don't want to read it. Come on, man. You need to. <laughs> Did, didn't we read this already? I'm pretty this, sure yeah, we already read. did this. this. It's like a repeat. Yeah, yeah I think it this is... is... Yeah. Nice so, try, Wayne. those of you who don't know, this is the uh, Rent-A-Nigga... Uh, service, this guy on Craigslist who literally rents himself out as, you know, just a black comrade, basically. You know, if you need a black guy around, for whatever reason, or you know, it's going to spice up a social situation or, you know, add a little uh, flavor to the business meeting, he's there for you, basically. He's got some photos of himself, looks like a looks like a cool dude. He's rocking, you know, one of those baseball caps with the bill flat and the sticker still on it. He's a... We should try to get him on the show one time. Holy shit. Well, I mean, hell, he'll come and hang out with you all day for seventy-five bucks an hour. Yeah, for seventy-five bucks an hour, we can book him for the show. Hell, he'll suck <laughs> Wings' dick for two fifty. <laughs> and Wings will play. And Wings will suck his for fifteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> we already know the price. One thousand five. No, I, I did it wrong. That's fifteen hundred. Uh, fifteen thousand dollars, and you go the other way. The worst yeah, part is that's gonna be real money. Some people. If you guys noticed, they left in his Craigslist URL, so anybody who wants to can email this guy. Oh, Wings. I don't. I know you did a video about it, but you didn't tell PKA about the truck and how the sale fell through. Oh, shit. I've had three sales fall through since then. Can you tell us about them? Yeah, I can tell you about them. Well, the guy kind of got cold feet like I thought he was going to get cold feet because he had such a long period of time in between the... Um, the idea where he wanted to buy and the idea where he was actually going to buy. I thought that was going to work until Kyle spoke up. Like it, you um, you were like, he's here, he already got the loan out, this and that, and I thought, yes, yes, yes. And then Kyle said, you know what? As a guy who knows a thing or two about car sales, Kyle's an ex-car salesman, stretching out a deal over the weekend is not a good sign. And I was like, oh, this sounds like someone whose opinion we should value. If you like, got to I nail it down right then and there. 
Like, like I was trying to, dude. I was trying to nail it down right then and there. Like you've got to get it. I to wanted it that Friday. I'm like, dude, I'll come to your work. Mm-hmm. Get the paperwork you need to sign. I'll take it to the bank for you. I'll go to my bank, and I'll. And I'll by the time you're done, you'll have the keys waiting in your hand when you get off work and your new truck to drive home. What was the conversation like when he backed out? He he didn't. I, I he wouldn't accept my calls. He texted me saying that he didn't feel like he wanted a loan as big as he was getting. So he we last PKA he actually had the loan that turned out not. He did have the loan. I even talked to his bank. The bank the, the bank woman said the loan was on her desk. He's to pick it up Tuesday and go bring it to me. But he can just give the loan back and pay a little bit of interest and be done with it. And that's what he did. But didn't he sell his truck though already? Yeah, he did, so he's still looking for a truck. I've seen that happen before, too. Like, the customer will literally put themselves in a position. because. So some people have this, uh, I'm sure there's a name for it, this sort of disorder where they cannot commit. They're, they're, they just have a really non-committal personality, and it's almost the, to the level of someone who's like a habitual hoarder or something. Like, these people have an issue with saying, yes, I'll you know, buy this car for $40,000, done deal, Done. You know, if I say that to you, I mean it. I mean, I'm gonna, mm-hmm. I'm gonna sign papers right now. Like we're gonna do this today, right now. As soon as you can get them in front of me, now. Yeah. I've seen women who, uh, there was this one woman in particular. She agreed to buy the car. She comes back two days later, doesn't like the car. Now she's deci- Now she just realized that she has six fucking kids and there aren't enough seats because she thought the third row folded down, but it doesn't. And you know, just a bullshit story. And we're like, all right, well. We're not just going to give you your money back. If you'd like a different car, we'll do that. So she switches from the Ford Freestyle to, like, a Ford Expedition. She takes it home with her. She signs the papers, legally buying the car, comes back the next fucking day saying she didn't, the DVD player wasn't working. Now she doesn't want the car. Now she wants a minivan. Now she – it went on like that until we had to, like, get rid of her. Like, people were fucking with her in the showroom because nobody wanted to, like, waste their time with her anymore. Like, like her kids were sitting with her, and there were, we had all these balloons in the showroom, these helium balloons, and people were shooting their rubber band-powered staples at them to pop the balloons around the kids and scare them. To, like, make the kids cry, to, like, make the woman leave the dealership because nobody wanted to deal with her anymore because she could literally not commit on a car. Hmm. Yeah. And she had sold us her car. We had hers and had resold it so we couldn't give it back on the other way, like I, I have agreed to buy stuff or agreed to do something, changed my mind, and followed through just because when I agree to something, you should feel like it's a done deal. Absolutely. You know, I've done like, the same thing. I've been like, you know, I need you like, to buy my car then. Damn, where are you at? <laughs> I need a person just like you. And uh, like one of the things that's really fucked me on the other two deals is Ford is having a sale right now, and they're trying to clear out all the 2013s for the 2014s. And they're giving like eleven thousand dollars off, and these trucks usually retail about forty-five grand. If you take eleven grand off of that, it's right in the ballpark where mine's at. I'm selling mine for thirty-three. They're up here at like thirty-six with hidden paperwork. Yeah, but people this, like I can get three thousand yeah, dollars more and get a brand new truck. Mm-hmm. Right, but then once they find their out the out the door price with taxes and papers and all that isn't thirty. Six, it's yeah, like forty something. That, but it's competitive. That's that's the problem. It's I, I've been thinking this a long time. I was talking to my dad about your situation like I guess three or four months ago, and uh, and I, I think you're gonna have to sell the truck for less than what you owe and keep making payments. With I you. am on three thousand dollars less than what I owe right now. I think you're gonna have to go lower. I can't. I I, I literally do not have the money to do it. But you do. So you you sell the truck for. You sell a truck for thirty grand flat, and then with that cash money, you you know you, you continue making payments on the truck while you try to, you know, make that other four thousand dollars up or whatever. I can't it is. do that. If they get a bank loan, they the bank's going to want the title to go against it. Oh, that's right. He can't keep the loan if he doesn't have the truck anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, like, don't, you just don't tell them about it. You, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, it does. How many people well, have thirty grand? What's you've never written out a fake title for somebody, so you know, little loansies on the on the. This I have to pay the loan off in full. Illegal ish. So illegal ish. Everyone, everyone here is thinking wings. It's simple. 
Finish it for that truck. <laughs> burn the truck. Dude. If I'm you know what the worst part is? He, he can't burn his truck now because he's become famous for talking about burning trucks. Right, the he insurance investigator is going to find out about this show. Yeah, they're like, going to play hmm. tapes of him talking about burning the truck. They're going to present memes of this they're man's gonna, face. They're going to pull the fucking forum post up. I can't do that. Yeah, he's a truck <laughs> burner. I have no But you wouldn't be the that. one doing it, though. You wouldn't be the one. You would I mean, have an alibi no where you were. That. I mean, like, if I was literally going to do insurance fraud, I'd tell you how I'd get rid of it. I'd back it into the fucking river with a boat trailer. So it's now simple. he's got a new one. We sink the truck. I mean, <laughs> the fact is, it happens every day of the week. You know, people backs the trailer and just a little too far. Current grabs the truck, takes it right on down the river. You hop out. Kelly, let me ask you a question. If Wings of Redemption asked you to, in private, to burn his truck him. for him. To, I know you wouldn't, but I'm asking him. If he did ask you to do this thing, would you burn his truck for him? What do I get out of it? Wings he's gonna he's gonna slip you like he's gonna slip you like two hundred and fifty bucks maybe. <clears throat> Let's see, Grand Theft Auto. No, he wouldn't get Grand Theft Auto. He wouldn't press charges. Your charges, if you get caught, are going to be insurance fraud and you know uh, filing a false police report. You know, uh, accessory to you know some. It's gonna be some bullshit. You're gonna plead out. You're gonna do like eighteen months. Worst case scenario. I'm gonna need at least a couple grand, but I do. That's pretty weak shit, bro. You're not much yeah. of a henchman at all. So, <laughs> you know much about I know Chai's gonna do the worst for less. Probably four hundred bucks, right? <laughs> <laughs> we were t Jeremy. Jeremy, you need a Jeremy, man. If we could get Jeremy down there to you, I think. If Is you that the same guy that banged a girl in a portage? Please tell me, Jeremy, yes. somebody that has about thirty-three okay. grand in his pocket, needing an F one fifty. No. no, he is the exact opposite <laughs> of that. Jerry is a guy he, who for $15 will burn your truck. <laughs> he will burn the shit out of that I truck. I got Jeremy's. I got Jeremy's all damn day. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody does. Woody, back me up here. I've got the best henchman ever, right? Indeed, yeah, without a doubt. Like, like he's loyal. He'll do what needs to be done. He's a big guy. He's got it all, and he, and you know, he's not gonna, t he's not gonna ask a bunch of questions. You tell him to burn the truck. He wants to know how much gas he needs to buy. <laughs> yeah, and he's gonna want you to pay for the gas. He's gonna want you because <laughs> he's got no money. He's got nothing. He's got no cash. On him. <laughs> Can I get a uh, ten bucks for the gas, man? The gas. Yeah. <laughs> he needs ten bucks for the gas for his car, and another ten for the gas to burn the truck. <laughs> he's not, he's not trying to screw you. He's just trying to get yeah. there. The and dude doesn't, doesn't have gas himself, money to commit to to go. crimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, in all hopes, best case scenario is, you know, I start making good money again, which, you know, that's not likely. Girl Worst is. case scenario is I end up losing the truck and I have to start over with bad credit, which it isn't even that bad in my eyes to look at it that way because I've already concluded I don't want to buy anything on credit again the rest of my life. I have, a, I have another option. Why not refinance the truck? Um, because the refinancing won't be as well. Like for example, like I originally bought the truck. I, I think the, the note was forty three thousand. Now the note's somewhere along the bonds lines of thirty four nine hundred. And like even if I refinanced it, it'd be like a hundred bucks at best. If I refinanced it for like six years. Yeah, Jeremy's cell phone number. Could you, <laughs> could you find someone to perhaps take up payments on the vehicle? That's that. I'm selling it three thousand dollars cheaper than than I owe on it right now. Ah, that's true. That's true. I'm trying to give it away. Yeah, you, you could do a scenario, a redneck scenario, where they just slipped you, you know, five hundred bucks a month, and you let them borrow your truck. <laughs> you yeah, could be like see, a. Let's see what happens in that situation. What happens? They run with it. And now I have a truck. I got well, a repo, and they fuck the truck up, and I can't even resell it after the. Well, I, I wouldn't give it to anybody who's gonna run with it. That seems Wait. extreme. If someone watching the show wanted to buy your truck, what would be their first step? I mean, you probably don't want to give out your cell phone number. Send me a message on YouTube. Will you catch it? Yeah, I'll catch it. I'll check them every day. There you go. Yeah. Send send I me mean, don't message. be if you're going to send a message, please be serious because I might get ill with you because I've had 20 people joyride it. At least now, I will say this. I will not get ill with you if you message me on Facebook or on my fan page. I'll respond almost every single time. I love reading those. I was saying, like, I had a guy that said he was in Fort Bragg, and he, and you know, like he, he came into it like on cold feet, like he wanted a truck, but he didn't know if he really could afford a truck. He's like, I really want to spend like twenty eight thousand. I'm like, well, you don't want a brand new truck. What you want is this, a hundred thousand mile truck on his third owner. This is where you're at. 
That seems pretty harsh for 28. <laughs> you're telling him all I can get is a piece of shit for 28. That's you about what you're going to get. Right here. Duster Wait for 28 grand. My my Tacoma's probably sell for six and a half. And it's <laughs> yeah, the man. best truck on the podcast. <laughs> I don't understand. But I'm dead serious. Around here, a uh, truck with 100,000 miles on it will sell for about 25, 26, and a really nice one like a XLT or like. I mean, like a LTZ. I'm sorry, not XLT. LTZ or like a, um, a, a the Denali. They'll be twenty eight, twenty nine ballpark. I don't know, Wings. You've seen my truck, right? Yeah. Now be serious. All jokes aside, do you think I could get six and a half for it? No. <laughs> How much do you think I could get for it? Like literally, like yeah. Five. Twenty five hundred thousand two two thousand three. Toyota's Toyota's, it's got really beat up body on it. Um, $2,500. $2,500. dollars $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, but you probably realistically get $2,500 because it's straight drive. A dollar, Bob. <laughs> it's, it's, the straight it's drive will turn it off on a lot of people. Does it crank on the first turn, or it's, do you got to give it a little 20, low? 25 no, no, it's, it, it runs beautifully. It is trying to Here, it here, we'll, looks we'll, like shit. here I'll, I'll run it right now. Hang on, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you exactly what your truck's worth. Really? Um, all right, all right. Kyle's going to Yeah, give me a second. Yeah, let me, look, Kyle, if you, you want to run the NADA, not the KBB. I'm KBB doesn't make those things. It's a whole. I think Kyle knows what he's doing in this. This is one of his areas of expertise. But what your truck would be? They have a term for it's the a car thing. Two thousand three. Yes. yes. Fair is fair. the word you use for your car. Fair. Yeah. Is that fair. Right. I think it sounds generous. Fair means it's in working condition, but it needs some body touch up and paint. And then the bullet point under that. Body touch up is in so, every single panel that's on. You know what's not dented on my truck? The roof is as good as new. <laughs> so is it a double cab, a regular cab, or an extra cab? Extra. Extra cab. Thought so. And then a bullet point could be best show on it or best truck on an internet it, podcast. Woody, yeah. What is your? Uh, oh, never mind. You don't. Did you have that. the? Did you have the the off road suspension with your four wheel drive? Or was it just a standard four wheel drive? Um. Did it have a big old sticker on the back of the bed when you bought it? Uh, you think of the TRD sticker? So is yeah. it the S yeah. Runner V6? The pre-runner, the base, or the V6? It's the V6. Is it the S-Runner V6? I don't think S-Runner was an 03 thing. False. It was an 03 thing, you say? It was. I'm looking at it. This is totally your truck. Um, five speed. I think it only came in this in the way you bought it. Like I think the options you got were the only options available. 4x4, four 5-speed four, manual, 3.4 liter V6. That's my truck. All right, I'm gonna add. So it was. It's red. It's it is red. I like it's yeah. kind of maroonish, but whatever they call it, red. Oh wait, wait. It's called. There's a name for the maroon of my. How truck. many miles on this bad boy? 112, I think. Thousand. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the? No, 112. Only drives here. it on Sundays at church. Impulse red. That's what it's called. Impulse red. Mm, you impulse. must look very close to home. Ah, we were all wrong. Yeah. All right. So, private party sale, uh, forty-one hundred bucks. Yeah, baby. Trade-in value, thirty-six hundred dollars, and dealer retail would be four four thousand nine hundred twenty-eight dollars. All right. And you know, I did all this off the top of my head, but realistically, you're looking to get maybe three three thousand out of it. Thirty-six hundred because... to forty-nine hundred. Was that the range that Kyle gave? Yes. Yes. Thirty-six to forty-nine hundred. I don't know. If I'm insulted that my truck is worth so little, like less than my camera, or if I'm proud that my truck is worth so little, it's, <laughs> I know, right? It is, it, it's a tribute to my frugality. I, I, want, I want to go ahead and let's say and, and beat Woody's truck. How much is my Silverado worth, Kyle? All right, let me give me one second. O two, right? Yes. O two thousand two Chevrolet Silverado extended cab. Z seventy one with the yes, five three okay. motor. Z seventy one with a five three motor. What's Truck the, value top. What's the good motor? Is it a six one? What's the big Chevy? The big Chevy in that year was a six liter. Six and liter, it, that's right. That, yeah. yeah. That six liter has a strong reputation. Yeah, and the, they got a extended six point two now. He did say extended cab. Mm hmm. It's a six two is the new Chevy. L S or L T? It's a LT. 
That's the higher trim, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's got the heated uh, leather seats in it. Do you know? Um, seats. What a pansy. Do, do you know what's, what length the bed is? You know if it's a six six, a eight one, or it's a it's a six it's a it's a six and a half foot bed. So whatever's close to six and a half feet. I got yeah. Claw and seat. the five it's the five three. It's the five three. Yes. Four by four. Four by four. My truck gotcha. is a manual transmission, and it has cloth seats that slightly smell of gear oil. <laughs> That's a man's truck right there. I, I buy leather because I don't want leather to stink, and I don't want to stink like holding into the cab. Kyle, Mileage? what did you call gear oil? Goop. Gear oil. Oh, dope. 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 You, we call it dope. Uh, what's the mileage on the Silverado? Uh, One hundred and twenty-three thousand. Roll, I'm. I, I kind of want to say it's in. Do we, would we say clean or outstanding condition? Um. I'll give them outstanding because it actually does take care of it pretty damn well. So clean is some normal wear, but no major mechanical or cosmetic problems. May require limited reconditioning. Outstanding is exceptionally mechanic. Um, exceptional mechanically, um, exterior and interior condition. Requires no reconditioning. Clean. Clean. I can't say that because I paid that one person to detail it, and they swirled the paint on the hood. Mm-hmm. So it's fifty-seven hundred dollars uh, trade-in value, sixty-four hundred dollars private prop uh, private party, and your dealer retail would be around seventy-six hundred, seventy-seven hundred. You and your high-end trucks, wings. It's a year older than yours. More miles. It costs more. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not as good, which we've established on this show many times. How, how do you figure this? It has more pulling power, more horsepower, and more torque. It it's kind of funny. Power. Even on the even on uh, their own page, they used a picture of the wrong truck for the O2 Silverado. It's got the 2003 headlights on it. Did that happen on the Tacoma? <laughs> um, no, it was a no, perfect yeah. green Tacoma, yeah, actually. And, and, and that's one of the ways in which we measure goodness. <laughs> Agreed. 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 See, there it is. Half the pot. Second. I second that. <laughs> Best truck on the internet. So now that we've we've meandered down Truck Talk Alley, and it just got real bad there I for got a while. Really excited for Truck Talk Alley. I, I don't know. I just like hearing about oh, my man. truck and people saying his name. I get so happy. Oh, that's disturbing in my a scary kind of way. My, Dude, I, let me tell you a story. I, I, Wings, I, if you kill I, people, would you take physical trophies? Do you think? Yes. What would you take? Ear. You, but I mean, you wouldn't yeah, literally take an ear. Like, like, if, you know, you got to keep something that you can hide, like Dexter's little vials of gla- of uh, blood. I would, take or the, I would take an ear. I would, you know, petrify it, and then I'd put it on strings, and I'd put them in in like drawers. Would you ever like make a necklace and wear them? Yeah, that's that's exactly where I went too. I think you put them all in the same string, and you wear it in, like as a gangster style necklace. I've and done that before. Down below your nipples. Oh, you've done that I mean, before. <laughs> Have you Vietnam vet Kyle? I didn't say they were human ears. Oh. I mean, I want ears because, one, you can't really tell who they're from for the most part. And, two, if somebody would find them in your house, just a bunch of shriveled up ears, you could fake it off as, like, a novelty gag. And, three, I mean, like, you don't want to link DNA link back to you. I guess that goes with one. But you know who it is, and the ears are there, and you can wear them out in public, and most people would think you're joking. Wow. I walked into the hotel room one time in Houston, Texas, carrying a bag full of pig ears, and with my blood, with my pants completely soaked in blood, and um, it was a four, it was a five-star hotel. I'm gonna be honest. There was, you know, there was a guy playing a grand piano in the lobby, and there was a five-star restaurant right there next to it, and nobody really, nobody really thought that was weird, and that's what Texas is all about. <laughs> Soaked in blood. Literally walked in. Like a grocery bag full of pig ears, like one of the plastic ones. You could see the blood at the bottom. And I took them upstairs, threw them in the hotel mini fridge, you know, for the next day. And I feel awkward wearing flip-flops at a, at a five-star hotel. I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. That was a good day. I wear my Guinness shirt. Don't give a shit. That was an interesting night. That's another Jeremy story. So Jeremy's a guy who works for me. And uh, and so I'm in my hotel room. It's it's pretty late at night, and uh, and my cousin and Jeremy they they come to my room because I've got a balcony and they wanted to smoke without having to go downstairs. So they smoke off my balcony and we all say good night and everything. And they go back to their room. I you know I stay in mine. I, I finally get the lights turned out 
and the the phone rings, and it's not my cell phone, it's the room phone. And, you know, if, if you get a room phone phone call in a hotel, something's up. You know, you've parked wrong, or somebody's been in your car, or your credit card's bounced for some fucked up reason. So I'm worried immediately, and I'm like, hello? She's like, yeah, yes, um, so there's a Jeremy Smith down here who's saying that, uh, who's locked out of his room. And uh, he says he's in one of your rooms. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's in one of my rooms. It's, it's room 101 or whatever. He's in there. I was like, just give him a key. She's like, well, we can't do that. That's against hotel policy. We need you to come down. And I'm like, wait, wh do you think that I'm an imposter answering the, <laughs> answering the phone in this room? She's like, I'm sorry. It's policy. you got to come down. So I'm like, fuck, fine. So I get dressed. I'm pissed off. I, you know, I was about to go to sleep. Finally get down there. And like I said, this is a really classy hotel. The, you know, marble floors and stuff. It's one of the nicest hotels I've ever stayed in. It, it's, it looked like something out of Vegas. Anyway, I, I, I walk downstairs, come out of this hotel, this bank of elevators. They're all gold-plated. It's beautiful down here. The guy's still playing the piano, even though it's late at night. There's this black woman wearing, like, a businesswoman suit, maybe 35 years old, very attractive, sitting at the desk, looking really awkward, like she's confused and she doesn't like what's going on. And then just in front of her... There's Jeremy, a guy who, you know, he's a redneck. He wears his ball cap all the time, so his curly hair is kind of like matted. He does not have his hat. His hair is all over his head, all matted up and fucked I've up. I've never seen him without a hat, but carry on. It, it's not a pretty sight. He's drunk, and I mean he's very drunk because I, I had bought his drinks, and it was an expensive night. He is not wearing a shirt, and his tattoos, which are ridiculous... I mean, just ridiculous tattoos, you know, like rebel flags and all kinds of just crazy, just crazy shit. Lots of offensive tattoos. Nipple rings, which he is, he is scratching with his fingernail. And nothing else but a pair of pink boxers with hearts on them. <laughs> and I have a choice. I can either turn around and walk the fuck back upstairs and forget this Jer whole Jeremy guy, or I can admit to this very nice-looking lady that he's with me. <laughs> For about a second and a half, two and a half seconds, I was like, fuck him, I don't even know this guy. But then I was like, yeah, I can't do this, so I had to walk up. I was like, yeah, that guy's with me. And he kind of sparked, and I'm like, what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> How did this happen? They had gotten locked out of their room, and even though the other guy was fully clothed, like pajama pants and a t-shirt, they played paper, rock, scissors to determine who would go downstairs for a key. And since this drunk, dumbass lost, he, he, he was willing to go downstairs and make a fool of himself in nothing but his underwear. It was, the most, it was one of the most embarrassing things that has ever happened to me. Ridiculous shit. Do we need a new topic? We do need a new topic. If your life was a video wrong. game, who would be the final boss? Or what would happen? <laughs> <laughs> I love this question. <laughs> um, I, I was immediately thinking what Wings of Redemption's final boss would be, though. <laughs> what, what did you make it? The, the, um, the, either the Pillsbury Doughboy <laughs> or the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> I might not be that creative. I, I pictured it as some difficult truck negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... He does it's, his it's, entire it's, life, and at the very end, there's this guy who's gun-shy about buying a truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have me wanting to beat his ass. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, I don't know how you win this game. Do you convince him to sell a truck? I, I want to know how the hell you, you, do, you keep yourself from cussing people out, because I've done it three times this week. <laughs> I'm be like, well, fine. Fuck your ass in. Go get your ass a new truck. Hope you enjoyed his property taxes. Property taxes? <laughs> Wait, you scream at people who say they don't want to buy your truck? <laughs> no, I want to. Like, oh. especially ones that want to jerk you along the entire time. Like, you know how bad it feels to be jerked along a week. Yes, like yeah, dude. Jerked along a week. No, no, I'm telling you, selling out. cars is one of the most. It, it will make you hate people because they always lie. And if you've ever been to a car dealership, the first thing you did when someone asked you a question was lie. And you know you did because they asked you a question that you didn't want to tell the truth to. You just wanted to be left alone and look at the cars because you wanted to see what the new ones look like. But when they asked you you know, what you were doing, you just said you were just looking, but really you want to buy one. You just wanted to leave you alone, though. You lie immediately, and they're lying, too. 
I don't know. It fucking sucks. Like it's like, come on, do you? I I went to the bank. I, I I made all these fucking things. I'm talking to the I'm talking to my my bank officials. I'm trying to get my loan son. I'm up more of a swallowed my pride. Said, yeah, I can't pay for this truck. I'm trying to get rid of it. You know, all this to my bank, and the bank's looking at me, taking job information and shit down. Wait, and then you pull out. When did the new Silverados hit the lot? They were on the lot. Really? Yep. I could go drive one now. Yes, yeah. you can. I've been looking when, uh, at those things since they were just internet pictures. I've been I've been reading rumor sites about those. New I saw one the other day. Follow me on Twitter, Happy Woody. I, are you he Martin? he only follows T Martin's mom. <laughs> <laughs> like I have a so, campaign on Twitter. Like every time I pass one, I take a picture of it. You know what we're gonna have to do? Oh, I can't say that. Never mind. Okay. I just want to go back to wing screaming at people I had that to don't want to buy a truck. Quickly. <laughs> that would have gotten messy if this were wing screaming. It's, it's fucking annoying, dude. Like, you want to scream at people. But I just okay. picture you as George Costanza trying to sell computers. And because you're screaming into the phone. You want to buy a computer? Why not? You're trying to have Fuck a you. $4,000 under fair market value for this truck. Fine. Go to a dealership. Pay 40 fucking grand for a truck. Or you can buy mine for 33 with a seven year warranty. That's a it's quite, got a seven that, year that warranty. That is an awesome deal with a seven year warranty. If you're thinking about buying this truck, shoot Wings of Redemption a message on YouTube. And I got a I got a Ford ESP plan backed by the Ford Motor Company that is just like the standard 336. It's no bullshits, no deductibles. Ford guarantees this truck will work like the day came off the factory line to 75,000 miles or seven years. And no joke. Wings oh, of Redemption. We've said it on this show a hundred times. So you, if you're a longtime fan, you know we're telling the truth. Wings maintains his stuff. The carpets in his house are nice. The couches look like they're brand new. His other truck, the the burgundy one, looks like it's brand. It's clean inside. Wings smells good. Wings maintains his things. My stuff, it gets worked. Right, and you know, unless if, you're a PlayStation controller. If, if, <laughs> yeah, if you want a used computer from Woody, that shit has seen some shit. Like a, a, a used, a used anything from me. It, it, uh, don't even ask what those stains are. It, it's oh dear god. Yeah, I, <laughs> but but if you buy something from Wings, that stuff looks like the dealer selling it. It just exists in that that pristine condition all the time. You, you want to try? <laughs> Reach out to him, but don't jerk him around. I'll curse you out. And I mean, like, guy, if, you, if you really want to, you can give me thirty-four, and I'll take the other thousand to ship it to you. Out of that thirty-four. Uh, he doesn't have to do that. Well, somebody, I'm sure somebody would be willing to make a road trip out of it with Wings of Redemption. Road yeah. trip of redemption. Wings yeah, you might be in a Wings of Redemption video. When yeah. you buy the truck, you get the bonus of if being a Wings of Redemption. Truck, could you get a gangster grandma signature included in that? <laughs> I got. I can have Gangster Grandma go on the test drive with you. <laughs> That's that, that. would kind of be cool. That would kind of be cool. So, somebody. There, I, I'm sure she, she might, might try to sell you some drugs. <laughs> she might try to sell you some drugs. That you, you have to sign truck, a waiver. It comes you have to sign a waiver immediately. If you're interested, we can get a little codeine in the glove compartment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not selling drugs. They just happen to be in the truck I sold. <laughs> We can hook you up. <laughs> uh, Lefty, if your hmm. life was a video game, what or who would be the boss character? The Pope. The Pope? The Pope. And, and, and what do you do to the Pope? Do you shoot fireballs at him? That be my uh, hmm. I don't know. This Pope actually seems kind of cool. I was kind of hoping the other Pope would stay around for a while. Pope Benedict. Uh huh. Wherever he is, you go find, po you go find Pope Benedict. Yes. You... You just absolutely you massacre him, and you make him suffer and burn and scream and cry. All right. That's what you do to Pope, former, you know, Pope Emeritus. When, I like that new Pope. He's a good guy. Yeah, I, the new Pope is what I wanted the last Pope to be. Yeah, new, yeah, new Pope and not and not, and not a guy that he he didn't cover up child diddling. Yeah, and yeah. new Pope does new Pope doesn't care if you're gay. Oh, it's either it's either it's either the Pope Emeritus, Pope Benedict, or Joe Paterno. Has has the new pope come out with a stance on contraception? No, no, he hasn't said anything about that. Though he did, you know, they said today he called like a gay cardinal or something and reassured him or something like that. So he's he's, he's so far he's been pretty lenient about that. Hmm. Yeah, well, once yeah. he gets when he gets a contraception in Africa thing, I'll be like, okay, pope, good for you. You can go on poping, whatever you do. <laughs> 
We I don't know if we need contraception in Africa. They all seem to be dying out so fast. <laughs> That's awful. That is absolutely awful. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> Isn't it bad we use left hand so we can be racist? There's nothing racist about that at all. Right. Yeah, it's, that it's only factual. No, children are being born with <laughs> HIV. <laughs> But that, that's, not, that's not racist. That's just awful. Yeah, it's just off <laughs> color. A little bit, I guess. Uh, uh. Yeah, he's not. He's geolog geographyist. <laughs> it's just that continent. <laughs> they they struggle. Yeah, but they've got they've got. I, I saw on Reddit. I didn't what read the the article, but there's like a some kind of uh, HIV vaccine they're working on, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy who's like uh, working on it didn't uh, ask me anything on Reddit today. I didn't read it, but. Um, I would ask him the first question. How much would it take you to sell out the big pharmaceutical? Um, I don't care. I mean, is there anyone here who? I mean, if you're if you're an active sexual, you know, adult, I, I would pay a lot for for that to like not have that like weighing on your mind anymore. That that's well, yeah. But here's the thing, though, the vaccine, weird possibility. If it can give you, it can also give you HIV because it's not a cure; it's a vaccine, and vaccines don't always work the way they should. I'm not gonna be first in line, Lefty. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of Wings of Redemption to show up for their shots before I actually show I, I up. Wanna, I want, first of all, I want to state Why do you I think I'd be the first person to try? I, not you in particular. Say, Wings and Woody's and Joe's and John's. What Lefty said about vaccines is wrong for a lot of vaccines. A lot, a lot of them are a dead version of the virus that your body works just fine with. Oh, okay. And there's no... like So the way the vaccine typically works is like you give your body like a taste of the disease... It creates the, the natural immunity for it, and the antibodies. It, it, the antibodies for it, and and then you're free, you're invulnerable from that disease. You're protected from it. Like so, Superman. And, and like a lot of these flu vaccines, for example, they'll give you dead cold virus, so it can't give you a cold. And but your body produces the antibodies that it needs to protect yourself from the live flu virus. Like that, that's what happens a lot. So. I didn't want some like national rush of vaccines give me AIDS. <laughs> no, I don't know about this vaccine. I have no expertise in it. But ask the question. What, what, be advised that a lot of vaccines are really safe. What if two years from now everybody looks back on this and was like, he knew it. Lefty knew it would give us all AIDS. And that's what he got. <laughs> Where can we get that Woody? I was just talking from a sense, of not the you know, vaccination is a you know, I'm 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 bored. Vaccination is the thing. I'm not. Uh, who's that ex porn star or whatever? You're thinking not of a porn star, but of oh Jenny McCarthy. I guess she's kind of a porn star. She did Playboy. Uh, yeah, but uh, Jim right, Carrey's she's... wife claims that these uh, vaccinate certain vaccinations, I suppose, cause Down syndrome. Is that correct? No, she thinks autism. I think autism. Okay. If okay. I'm right, she used to claim. That certain vaccinations cause autism, and she backed off from that assertion. I don't think she backed but off from it. My point was more that there, there are some cases where the vaccination, like, gets you sick with what it's supposed to vac, you know, vaccinate. Is that the right? I don't are know. Protect you from. Maybe there are, but you're gambling with H. You're you're not gambling with influenza. You're gambling with HIV. It's just what's the risk. Of it's like you know when you play Russian roulette, people always play Russian roulette probability games. Like, well, you got a one in six chance of dying. It's like, well, yeah, but what happens at one time you lose Russian roulette? It's boop, over. Yep. That's you have, you have it's 50, just 50, it's 50 a, you say the same thing about right? Polish prostitutes. As you and I play, we play until one's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood that game. People who are there people who like actually every now and then break out the old six shooter and have a game. Like, is that a thing? I know at the end... I mean, spoiler alert, at the end of <laughs> the Black Ops 1 campaign, that was a, like a... That you know, campaign, man... You know they that, ripped that off, right? Oh, did they did? I don't know. The whole, the yeah, whole Russian sucked. roulette thing is stolen uh -huh. from the Deer Hunter. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the Deer Hunter is... The, the, there's a scene in the Deer Hunter where um, these American soldiers are being held in this sort of under... There's a cage that's in the water, and they're in it. So they're kind of chest deep in water, in like the garbage disposal of like a hut that's on the that's on the water. And so the bad guys are above them in the hut, and they're down chest deep in water beneath it, and they're stuck down there. It's like a cage, 
And every now and then, they get a couple of Americans up, sit them at a table at gunpoint, put a revolver on the table, and make them play Russian roulette. So at the uh, at the end or toward the end, you know, the big moment, they the, the guys get crazy with it, and they they tell their their captors that they want to play with like three bullets or something or four bullets, and they're they're like, oh yeah, that's a crazy game you want to play. This guy's hardcore. So they put three bullets in the gun. And they still have to snap it on their heads at least once, so they know that it's a, a halfway effective weapon, so they can start their, uh, you know, their their breakout, and it it's, it gets good from there. Ooh. Okay. The deer hunter. Is it on Netflix? I'm talking about deer hunter. I yeah, don't know. Like four deer hours long. Dude. It's a very long movie, and it's slow, and the pace changes a lot. So deer sometimes. hunter. Last I checked was on YouTube. You know, sometimes you're in Vietnam, and then you're back in like. I don't know it, what I think it may be the Northeast, uh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, somewhere up there. It seemed like it's where it was based, and you know, it's it's a weird movie. Mm. Wings, did we do your boss character for life? Oh yeah, I thought y'all were gonna pick the truck guy. My boss character for life, Peter Popoff. Peter uh, Popoff, who's that? I can't. I know the name. He was the preacher that is a televangelist that would make people stand up out of wheelchairs and stuff. Oh okay. He's the guy. See, I thought it would be someone who was your personal life challenge. I don't have a personal life challenge. The biggest person I have to defeat is myself. What an ultimate twist to the game, then, Wings. You beat your own you end character. Up fighting yourself. My I mean, boss character. It had to be a doppelganger if you wanted to do my own That's personal right. life. I could see you both like in a in a street fighter face off with a mag light in your hands, like ready, <laughs> fight. But one of you <laughs> is wearing a different colored T-shirt, just so you could tell right. which one's which. I'd have some bull ride choke moves, like I'd fart and like the gas would like stun him. <laughs> and then you hit him with beard. You'd like squeeze your cyst and spray him with acid. Like, I actually thought <laughs> about moves. Because like me and Woody were gonna do like a like a YouTube uh, Ultimate Fighter. My eyes, my eyes. <laughs> Kyle, who's your boss character? It would be it would be IRS man. It would just be like it would just be like a the, it, he would look like the mysterious stranger from Fallout New Vegas, and he would just be from the IRS. It would be that guy. But I got good news today. It looks like my taxes are not going to be that bad this year. Nice. <laughs> so um, instead of paying for like what were those one of those javelin missiles and like eight M16s this year, I'm only paying for like a handful of grenades and some claymores. So, <laughs> good stuff. <laughs> Lefty, your boss character for life. I said I said either the Pope or Joe oh, Paterno. That's right. That's right. So now it's on me. I don't know who it would be. Maybe some. YouTube common hater with a bunch of like fuck nards swarming around as like you know like they do like he drops an egg and sixteen fuck nards come and dislike my videos. But, like, oh, that sounds like well, the bad guy from Sonic the Hedgehog. Robotnik will be into it. Yeah, yeah, like the bad Professor guy Robotnik. Is that who he is? I, I can see that. Yeah, something. Along I think it's pro- I think he's Professor Robotnik. He's that he's like he's got like red hair and it's like yeah, yeah, that it's crazy mustache and it's always egg related. God, now it's, I can only think of the robot the music that plays when you fight him at the end. <laughs> Which time level. you kick that guy's ass like thirty times? I never, I don't even think I ever beat Sonic. I don't think I ever did either. Not the, not the you Genesis, see, not that Genesis game. So I had this problem growing up, and when I hear kids, when I see Reddit posts and people talking about beating games when they're growing up, like the Mario Brothers games, the Sonic the Hedgehog games, and stuff like that, I can't relate to that because at my house, the console got shut down like at the end of the day. Like, the, your parents didn't care that you were on a, a one-man mission to save a princess. <laughs> it was lights out, and that thing wasn't going to be on all night. So I never beat any of these games. I just went on, I went as deep as I could reach in one, maybe two days, and then that shit got shut off. So the first, like, 20 levels of, of, of like, Super Mario Brothers got it down. After that, I don't know what the fuck happens. <laughs> I never made it to that part. So I've never beaten any of those games. I've just gotten really far into them. As far as you can get in a one-day play session before your mom shuts your Nintendo down and ruins your fucking life. Yeah, early on when I was playing Resident Evil, <laughs> I, I was never able to beat it, like the, the first one on PlayStation. Um, but later on, a friend uh, a friend of mine was like really... He was like Wings. He was like my version of Wings. He was like, I have to win every single game all the time. And, and he showed me how to beat it, but... I had never beaten it myself personally, and that's why one time... What, Wings, when did you do that Resident Evil Let's Play? Do you remember that? Was uh, like that two was years ago? two and a half years ago. I remember watching that. Like I waited. I camped my sub box every day 
wanting to watch that because I'm like, oh, I remember this part. I was like, oh, I would get this far, and then I would, you know, I would screw this up or that, and oh yeah, I have to, you know, got to. F- well, I've actually wanted to do that again because I didn't feel like that Let's Play was my, my best effort. But again, I'd, I'd watch it. Again. Watch it. I'd watch it again. But what I was thinking is, I think there's a whole new generation of gamers now who, who don't understand that game systems didn't used to have a save option, where you could stop and shut down your console and come back months later and you know, get back to action. It wasn't like that. If if the power went out or somebody tripped over the cord, I mean, a game like uh, Super Mario Brothers three, I don't know how long it takes to beat it, but you know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was 15 hours or something. Or when you first get a PlayStation or a PlayStation 2 and you didn't have enough money to get a memory card along with it. Oh, I remember that. And so you're like, damn it. Like, Do I want to wait to play this game until I get a memory card or am I going to try to beat this thing in one sitting? And you try- I, when I finally got my own personal consoles, I you know, I could leave it on all night if required. Like if it was, I think the Sega Saturn, I don't, know, I don't remember if you could save. I guess you could save. Um, but I would. I, I've always, since then and to this day, I just leave consoles constantly on. They're always running. That way, if I want to play Fallout, I don't have to go through a lot of stuff. I just pick up the Xbox controller and I press the input button on my TV, and it's just there waiting. I don't give a shit about electricity. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I went to my girlfriend's house the other day and I set up. Uh, I, I kind of invaded her office at her house and, and brought, like, an entire gaming setup, including a TV, and, uh, and like, you know, two laptops, a TV, um, like, Xbox, Elgato, big, big-ass big microphone rig, the whole thing, and she's just like, holy shit, my power bill's going to be off, just ridiculous, and I'm like, nah, there's no way, but now that I think about it, I think her power bill normally is, like, $30 a month, so I think I might have fucked her power bill up this week. <laughs> just give her like a four. Just give her two twenty dollar bills. Like here you go. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's gonna be like that. I think it's gonna be like a seventy or eighty dollar. Get me no bill. more fucked up than my power bill. Wow. Oh yeah, you've got really bad uh, something going on over there. How much is it? It's like it was five fifty last month. Yeah, dude, that's extreme. And like it's usually two ninety, two two eighty to two ninety. That's what it's been for the last five years. All right, man. You know what you're gonna have to do, right? What? So the reason you're so, do you have gas hot water or electric? I have a uh, electric hot water heater. Yeah, that's your problem. It's the it's it's two things. It's people leaving lights on, and it's the hot water. And I bet running your dryer and stuff too with all the people you got there. That's I've been is, cutting man. my I've been cutting my computer off recently. Like I've been leaving it on because L monitor over there. That thing. <laughs> it um. It was pretty much what kept keeping alive by electricity going through the conductors in it. I was keeping it alive, so I, I couldn't shut the computer off if I didn't want to keep that monitor. Because I knew as soon as I cut it off, it was just it just wouldn't power back up. Hmm. But um, I've been cutting the computer off. I'm hoping the sounds like he hot wired a computer monitor. No, <laughs> like what it is. When I was stealing this out it's of Best Buy. It's an old HP monitor, and like it did it once before, like it would blink. When after the computer went off, so the, it, they'd be blinking light. I looked the blinking light up, and it's like a, a code for the conductors inside the monitor itself to fail. But after it cools down for a while and it's off the juice, it'll fire back up. And I knew that I didn't want to go through that period of letting it cool down every day, so I just kept the computer on. Do we need a new topic? Eloquent solution. Yes. Let's start with wings. What are you pretending not to know about yourself? That I'm going to die at age 35. What's going to kill you? Bad habits, stress, eating bad patterns, heart attack. That's a good one. Lefty, what are you pretending not to know about yourself? Uh... Hmm. I don't know. Let me think about that. Pretending not to... Like something that is off in the distance I know that I that I just don't want to think about. A truth that you're in denial about. 
in denial. Well, a lot of times people would just be talking about you know just how attractive I am in my presence, and I'm just like, no, no, don't say that. And I'm just, but it, at, at at heart, I know I'm lying. I, I know I'm just really attractive. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my lie. Oh, you know what it is? My car is probably gonna need some some kind of uh, work done to it that I just don't want to. I I I have been putting off buying. I've been pretending like I don't need to buy uh, tires for my Camaro for like six weeks. Your stuff sucks. <laughs> I got it, dude. Those tires are crazy expensive. They're like two hundred bucks a piece or something. Oh, More, I think. This is, Kyle, I've been putting off buying tires for five years on the Silverado. It works great. Oh my god, the, the, the wires aren't <laughs> showing or anything, but like. It's it's plain to see uh, that I need Well, when tires. you buy be a good rich tires, they're ten layers thick, so the dry rot doesn't mean shit on the surface. Well, I'm not gonna get dry rot or anything, but I, you know, it's a sports car, so it's the tires are really really expensive. That's, that's for burning out and stuff. Lefty, what, what what's wrong with your car? Uh, there's uh there's fluid um that's leaking out of out of the bottom. I don't I don't know what it what is exactly. What color is it? I uh, I I don't know. I haven't uh, I haven't placed anything. Under we need to check. know what color the fluid I is. Know, I, I know that. But is it I, black? Is it red? It, is it green? What does it smell like? Do you, can you give me an example of this? Did smell? it taste sweet? <laughs> when you rub it, what on am I your like? Nipples, a, am I like a Native burn. American tracker? Am I like? Yeah, you know, I mean, no, like, my you, ear to the ground? Turn the car on. Does it? Does it? Act, is there kind of different colors? Smoke coming out the back. Not that I've noticed, no. If it tastes okay, really good, good it's either it's antifreeze, antifreeze or battery acid. If, um, <laughs> if it's red, it's automatic transmission fluid. And mm -hmm. if it's like brown or black, it's oil. Yeah, I just, I don't know. And the, the gas mileage on it, I can't tell if it's because I've been doing a lot of city driving lately and not highway. The gas <laughs> mileage is gone. Uh, around 75,000, I want to say. But you don't have any deeper lies that you tell yourself that your car needs repair? Well, there's the, the death is the obvious one, I mean, but that, I figured somebody what else What year is it? That. Uh, 01. Alright, we'll talk about cars. It's a 01, 75,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. Do you have a cooling problem? Like, do you ever have a cooling light come on? <laughs> no. No. I'm sorry. I love I mean, it's a New topic. All right, just stop right <laughs> fucking now. This is so stupid. What we're we'll, we'll talk about. later. He's like, he's like, does it have? A... We'll talk later. <laughs> that's I, here, here's what's really simple. I'm gonna go tomorrow and check the fluid levels, and that's it. That'll be the end of it. That will tell me what fluid is low. That's oh. not good enough. I need you. All right, so this is gonna be hard. Okay. Kyle, I will tell you. I will text you and tell you what it was if this is gonna bother you, so you can know if that. You have. Want to do something, wings or lefty? I'll tell you what to do. Hmm. Put your finger in the fluid, get it off the ground, and take a cell hmm. phone picture of the fluid on your index finger. And anyone yeah. on this call but you will be able to identify the problem. That's not good enough. How, you know what what makes you assume down. that I can't identify the problem? Oh. I just haven't applied myself yet. I can tell if, I, I, I can tell if a hub's going to No, you guys know. You guys know more it. about cars than I do. I'm not even going to pretend that. <sighs> All right. New time. What about you, okay, Woody? What about you? Oh, I, I didn't know I was getting an opportunity. Um, I thought we were just going to car talk. And, um, what was it? What do I? No, I meant. What do you think is wrong with my car? I was oh, just kidding. Forget your fucking car. <laughs> what do you? What, what's a lie you tell yourself? Jesus. <laughs> that people don't hate me. I'll do it. That's the one. You know, okay. like I, I like to think. Well, everybody gets DDoS, but no one gets it at the level that I do. I like to think eh, everyone has videos with dislikes, but no one has campaigns of haters like I do, right? Like, there's other YouTubers who make it their mission to attack me. And I don't know why. Like, the real me, I'm actually a really moral guy. I'm extremely hardworking. I'm a good friend to have. Yet, like, I don't know why. Like, I get a tremendous amount of hate. You know, I put Minecraft on my channel lately. People are furious. But when CNATers did it, when Syndicate did it, when lots of other people did it, Captain Sparkles made a switch from COD to, to Minecraft. They didn't get the kind of negative backlash that I did. People fucking hate me. And I don't know why. I, like, I, everything I do is walking on eggshells. If somebody said, you know, whatever, I like Obama, they wouldn't get any heat for it at all. If I said it, it would be, people would furiously attack me for making even the smallest thing that they disagree with. They, 
it's like they're searching for reasons to hate me and I like to think everybody gets that but nobody gets it like me and I don't know why two things that I think one um, and I want to get to talking about constructive criticism but that's the second part because I know somebody's gonna say it in the comments if they haven't typed it already um, one thing I think is one after I, I've been watching your channel for a long time and when you would talk about things outside of Call of Duty, outside of tips and tricks, like you would do commentaries about, you know, tech stuff, or and you, know, I remember a Modern Warfare Three commentary. You talked about Google and how Google's approach as a company may not be good for, uh, I believe it was Google Plus was starting out and the whole social network thing, and um, and I think what some people when you for lack of a better term or phrase, assert yourself as an intellectual of some kind, as somebody that knows a thing or two or has a reason to be listened to about things that they want to say and opinions that they have. When you do that, people, especially, well, if you're, you know, if you're a Call of Duty channel, you're appealing mm -hmm. to kind of a younger audience and, and a more childish mindset. And, an angry you know, audience. There's an angry audience no and stuff. more pissed off than COD players. And you may not want to admit it, people watching this video, but you know, look at the look at the YouTube comments. Young and and angry, and you know, they don't they feel like it's a challenge. Like you are, it's it's very it's kind of animalistic. Like it's a it's you're challenging them, and they can't allow themselves to think that maybe yes, they should listen to you about this or that. That's not all people. Not all people that have a negative thing to say. Not all people that disagree are thinking that. But I think it's a it's a larger, a, a more significant percentage of dissent than we would like to admit is people being like, ooh, this guy thinks he knows a thing or two. Well, I know a thing or two, and I know it better than him. But just because he's got a lot of subs and blah, 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 because once you start looking into these people, you find they upload videos or they try to upload videos and all this stuff, and it's just, it's it's like that. And constructive criticism, being a dick is not constructive criticism. Saying, I don't like this, or this sucks, or this shit is boring, or blah, 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 all those kinds of things, not constructive criticism. Stop saying that. PK subreddit, entitled Biatches. <laughs> Stop it. It's not constructive. It's just not. And also, if you're fans of this or that, you're fans of Woody, you're fans of PKA, why would you err on the side of being disrespectful and blunt in your criticism and not on the side of like, oh, I'm going to be respectful and try to try to cou properly couch my criticism as being nice and being like, hey, here's my opinion, here's what I think about this. But no, they just they just bitch and complain and whine and they try to rationalize it in this bullshit constructive criticism. It's not saying, I don't like this. I think your content sucks is not constructive criticism. Stop it. I'm sick of it. That's enough. Rant over. Yeah, I've pretty much left that subreddit. I've stopped by maybe twice in the last week, uh, which I used to be there every day. I used to be, I used to visit ten times a day. And, I still um, like you guys. I stalk you. Yeah, it's not a friendly <laughs> environment for me. And, you know, they're just all... You know what? They're not Team Gamertag. They're not, like, on my side. Now, I'm sure a lot of them are going to say, oh, I am on your side. I'm just trying to get you to change to the way I want you to be. And whatever. You know, it's really hard to read that subreddit. I take more negative feedback on a daily basis than most people get in a year. I swear that's true. Um, you do. And, and, and those of you on the subreddit who are, who are being like this to Woody, it's, it's not cool. I'm gone. I, Fuck your subreddit. I'm out of there. Um, yeah, and they're like, oh my god, the mods are censoring all the hate against Woody. We should have free speech. You know what? I was fine with what the mods were, do were doing. I really was. You guys, it wasn't like, the, the feedback is never phrased in a way that makes me feel like you're on my side. So, I don't pay attention to it. You know? And that's the ultimate bullshit of it, is if some constructive criticism is blunt and people that are criticized even constructively may not like hearing it and that's fine there is constructive criticism that is abrasive and okay but if you're going to turn around and say no we're just fans we just really like this and this just isn't limited to the PKI subreddit this is synergis synergistic synergism like comments big words in the, big words yeah um, in the in the youtube community in the comments and stuff 
if you're going to say that you're a fan and that you like this person, not just Woody, anybody else, if you see it around, oh, well, I'm a fan, but your content fucking sucks. If you're a fan and you're going to try to say that you're giving constructive criticism, if you have to err on either being abrupt and possibly disrespectful, sometimes blatantly disrespectful, or being completely respectful, maybe even to the point of not getting your message across 100% effectively, if you're a fan and you love this or that, why aren't you erring to that side? Why? It's yeah. not accepted. You're not a fan. You're just a jackass who's trying to rationalize your bitching. Way beyond the PKA subreddit, right? So, like, five YouTubers have started Minecraft servers after I did. Mm -hmm. Mine is being attacked constantly. Now, mostly our DDoS protection handled it. There was one who was on the same in the same data center as mine. And by the way, I've already contacted the federal authorities. They have their cease and desist letter. They stopped. But I'm not done till you go to jail, because fuck you. You know, you don't get the fucking takedown Woody Craft because you're upset that it just got bigger than you. Fuck you. That's it. Woody Craft is the best fucking thing I can do, right? I work on it 18 hours a day, sometimes 20. Ever work 20 hours a day? I bet a lot of people listening to this have never pulled a 20-hour day. I have. I've pulled a couple of them in the last month. This thing I work so hard and I want it to be so great. I am a striving for excellence and nothing else is good enough. And then I've got guys like on the same data center able to get around our DDoS protection because they're not coming in from the external network and uh, you're going to jail. But the other YouTubers aren't having this that, that are running uh, Minecraft stuff. The, um, you know, my videos get disliked all the time lately, you know, and, and like I've been giving them what they, they didn't want Minecraft, I gave them COD. They didn't want COD, I gave them Splosion, man. Like I gave them whatever, and they're unpleasable. And um, the the other common haters, right? The, 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 there's a lot of, hand, like, it was like a little bucket of like fat, older, balding commentators who, um, you know, who attack me all the time. And they're not attacking other people, and I'm not talking about like well, not right now I am, but you know I typically I don't give them any attention whatsoever. Yet they're there attacking me, and so if there's a secret that I'm pretending not to know about me, it's like I'm actually quite a good guy, but there must be some reason that I get viewed in a harsher light than it seems like everybody else does. And I don't want to hear. I... <sighs> It can't just be don't respond to it, right? Because that's that's the cliche answer. But that's what I normally do. You know, you don't see me responding to this stuff, making video. I bet it's been yeah. a year since I've responded to a hater. But it's, I, is that it? It's it can't. It, maybe it is that simple. I don't know. I think it's maybe a good it policy. Um, you know, everyone. C Niners is the shining example of a guy who's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like five years have gone by and he's not acknowledged a single negative comment. You're wasting your time if you leave one there. And, and here I am, I, I guess, perhaps making that mistake. But the question was, what am I pretending not to know about yourself? For some reason, a lot of people don't like me. And if you knew me, you would. You know, if you knew me, you'd find me to be quite a loyal friend, quite an honest guy, a man who's true to his word. Um, the, there's my secret. Very true. All those things are true. Woody's, Woody's a great guy. Yeah, when that check clears, I'm Woody's best friend. <laughs> and I saw on the subreddit that some of you thought that it could be possible that Woody was actually my father and that we had recently discovered it, and that's why we were hanging around with, with each other so much. And that is true, but Woody, 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 Woody made love to my mother when he was only 13 years old, if you do the math. So that is impressive. I'm quite the baller. Thanks, Dan. Big Woody had a new loaded gun, and he decided to use it. <laughs> yeah. Sadly, at 13, my gun wasn't loaded at all. <laughs> it just wasn't. <laughs> That's a bit of a late bloomer. That shit fired blanks at best. That's literally what the next comment on, on the subreddit was. Somebody was like, he'd have to be 13, and he was a late bloomer. No way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, guy, that guy's a fan. He knows the, the, the canon. All right. A new topic? Who else has one? Uh, the NFL settled their concussion case. Ooh, sports. Uh, hmm. what, what do we have to say about that? What do we know? Well, the uh, NFL uh, was being sued by a collection of former players about um, their about possible liability for medical expenses incurred and, and even uh, uh, damages um, incurred by these former players, by the NFL knowing that um, 
playing NFL football and um, having concussions, repeated concussions, was very, very, very detrimental to your health. Not just the cliche, oh yeah, he's a football player, he's old, but scientific evidence, specific data that said if you receive concussions, you are this this much more likely to be um, you know, to have early onset dementia, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and all these other bad things that happen to you after repeated brain injuries, and sci- people that science that's, that says um, that football, NFL football, makes that happen, is more likely for that to happen, and that the NFL tried to cover it up. And the NFL reached a $750 million settlement with this group of 4,800 players, I want to say. Ooh. Someone do the math. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. I think it's like 100 and something grand. I did the, I did the math, but I forgot it. Can, can you help me with the numbers again? All right, so $750 million. <clears throat> oh, Hold on, my numbers aren't punching in. Let's call it 4,800 players. Is my number? And that, co- that comes out to $156,250 per player, or thereabouts. However, two things. Number one, that, that $750 million is paid out over 20 years, and um, the NFL does not have to admit liability, which means uh, this, their settlement is not an admission of liability, which means they are not opening themselves up to being sued by every NFL football player that has... Uh, concussion-like syndrome. You see, so I, I think I'm on their side here. I think... I mean, they... They signed up for a violent sport. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, nobody thinks that football is safe, especially at a professional level. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to know that there's going to be head injuries. I talked to Joe about this, actually. Joe Lozon, the UFC fighter. And he's mm-hmm. not a football player, but I think UFC fighters have a similar kind of, you know... I wanted to ask him about that. You did? And, well, yeah, on the show, but I, it's kind of like a, you know, hey, how do you feel about maybe you'll go crazy later in life? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like... Well, first of all, he listed his fights. And um, uh, I guess in his most recent one, he had some kind of concussion type thing. And this was before that fight. And the Pettis one, he had a knockout. But mostly, he's like, you know, if you look at a lot of my fights, they're not wars. You know, he has a lot of first-round victories. That's why he gets so many bonuses. And, and um, he's like, you know, I just don't take a lot of head injury damage. He's like, but, you know, if I'm 5% slower after my career ends, I'm okay with that. You know, he's, he's like, I'm more than 5% How about the fact it only takes one good hit to the head to make you dumb? Uh, that's really uncommon, though, right? Yeah, I don't think that happens much. He had just... He had sort of calculated the odds and accepted that he would be 5% slower than the potential version of himself later. And much richer. <laughs> the, the idea being, right? I'm assuming and, that's and, the trade-off. Yeah. And not just richer, but live in a life that he enjoys, right? Like, I, I think he actually likes training most of the time. You know, I think he enjoys being fit. Right? We'd all like to be Joe Lozon fit, right? I mean, who here doesn't want a six-pack? I don't care about a six pack. I'd like to be able to buckle a, a seatbelt in my truck without a seatbelt extender. But you'd take a six pack if it were on the menu. I, I couldn't uphold I couldn't uphold that. I love pizza too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm have you, I love have beer, you guys, pizza. Oh well, man. What you so want good. is a rewiring. You want a rewiring that makes you enjoy exercise and eating right and, and I don't know if I want that. I mean like a lot of people that exercise a lot, they have heart attacks too. Mm-hmm. Have you guys seen the the clip where Joe Rogan was getting um uh, heckled by this woman while he yeah. was doing comedy and he went off stage and she called him fat. Yeah, and then he pulls his shirt up to about his nipples and there's a and he is six ripped. Pack. Yeah, he, he low, is, he's 50, right? He, he literally he has a body type like the guys from uh, the movie 300. Like he was that kind of ripped. Like everything from chest to like belly button was all like like solid muscle and bone. Yeah, it's and funny. She, if, if you were to just look at his face, you might think he's a little bit chubby. But you see his neck down, and it's he's like mm-hmm. a shaved gorilla. I I don't I wouldn't say a shaved gorilla, just just a gorilla. <laughs> well, uh, that man needs to come on, Joe. Shake your hands. <laughs> oh my God, his hands. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's it's, so, it's cool. For but, a guy you know, that holds a mic here's and the thing. Yeah. for a living, <laughs> for a living, he has 
The gorilla hands. Yeah, we. Yeah. I, I've seen it a lot. It, you know, and it bothers me a little bit because I'm thinking to myself, you know, Joe knows he's got hairy knuckles. Why didn't he shave those bad boys? Yeah, you know, just true, he's going on stage. Bit. He's putting his hand right in front of his face. That's what we're looking at. There's we're looking like at your face, your hand, your hand, face, your hand. A mic, a, a face, and that hand is Neanderthal. Hairy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that um, hand is ridiculous. How do we get on this topic? Oh, oh, oh! We were talking about Joe. He, uh, <laughs> I, I, the other thing is not just that he makes more money than regular people do. He lives a lifestyle he really enjoys, and that's one of my favorite things about like this phase of my life. You know, like right now I'm doing the the Minecraft thing a lot. Colin sits in this chair right here. When I'm putting my feet on, you can hardly see that it's a chair, but this is the back. And um, and he plays Minecraft next to me while I typically do you know some sort of admin function, and we're together all the time. I bonded with my own father because he was like a workaholic kind of guy when I started working in his office and it improved our relationship and I see it happening with me and my son like it's awesome to, to, to sit here and be next to him all day long and spend more time with him and uh, Colin you know if, if I'm to admit it to myself is probably more close to Jackie than me right not to say he's not close to me but um, now you'd have a much harder time picking a winner he loves spending his time with me and he, he looks forward to it all day um yeah, off topic last night we played survival games and colin like legit made it into the top two and the other guy was a friend of mine and he kind of did the honorable thing and, and colin won he's still talking about that you know he went to bed excited he woke up happy about it and and he's just jibber jabbering about how he won survival <laughs> games last night uh, thank you mark if you catch this and um uh you know, so that, like, I love my current lifestyle, and, and, and circling this back to Joe, he loves his. He's I'm in a Facebook group that Joe set up called Work is for Suckers, and I'm so proud to be a member. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, it, 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 not that I don't work, but I don't traditionally work, and I'm so like honored. I don't know, honored implies someone else gave it to me. Fortunate, happy to be here. Uh, it's just awesome. hope you can help the ball club. You got to play one game at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I, I don't know if the universe chose Long me. Long season. It's a <laughs> marathon, not a sprint. The, if the universe chose me to be able to work from home and spend time with my family and do all this, or if I earned it, or somewhere, you know, a piece of both, but I'm so thankful that this is my gig. Play Minecraft next to Colin. And, you know, it, I, I, I think Joe has a, a touch of that in himself. He's I'm, thankful that that's his gig, UFC fighter. I'm happy. I'm happy with my decisions too. Like you know, a lot of people say like I'm going through a rough time and shit like now monetarily, but I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world because like this job right here gave me a way to be a part of the working community longer than I thought I was going to be able to because the jobs I was doing were going to kill me. That's all they were going to do. I was going to make money. I was going to make. I was going to live paycheck to paycheck, and I was going to be destroyed by the age of forty. And this allows me to do what I love. And yeah. God damn, we're an upbeat crew, aren't we? Oh, oh, this doesn't sound <laughs> downbeat to me. We've got to we've got to get things on a happier scale. It's this just is been, happy to me. I this is happy. yeah. This, this is happy, dude. I mean, like I, I don't, I don't think you can find very many people that appreciate the job I do more than me. I mean, I might, you know, I, I might be ignorant and I might, I might get mad at people. But I've done videos where I've cried talking about this job. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I don't cry because I'm a man. But, uh, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> wow. Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, Shot fired. Wow. I, I, I cry. I, that's I cry for the out. show, Wings. I'm just teasing. I cry, I cry ten I, times a day. I, I cry all the time. I, yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, I cry in a lot of movies. For um, victory for victory. I cry at cartoon victories, man. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, um. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so Wayne, don't get hurt. He's telling jokes. Oh no, no, no. I, I, I'm not worried about that. I mean, but, like, I get choked up every time I think about what I get to do for a living. And like, yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble with ideas right now. And, and yeah, people pound me and people hate and all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, I love what I do. And like, if, if it frustrates me, it frustrates me because. It looks like an end instead of an opening of another door. I'm telling you, you got to get that uh, thermometer on the wall behind you. Get that little gag going. That's going to be funny. You know what? On that thing, 
That was something that I saw that like was a, a, a swing in Wings today, right? Like I feel like Wings two months ago, we'd say, hey, dude, this is a great idea. You should do it. And you'd be like, ah, I don't know. Whiteboards are really difficult to hang on the wall. Today, it was, hey, do you guys, let's brainstorm together on how I can make my weekly weight loss series better than it is today. And we're like, yeah, I think you should, you know, put more in the first minute to, you know, to suck them in you know, and hook them. And, you know, you should have a visual and this and that. And, and you know, of course, we joke about the, the dog justice, you know, justice scale. Yeah. But, um, you know, like, I, I, I think... You really might get a whiteboard and draw the thermometer and, and have a visual. You know, I was is. actually going to get. I was actually looking at. I don't know how this is going to date me. It's going to date me. But in kindergarten, they had those big old pieces of paper that you kind of like folded over and had the lines on it. <laughs> yeah. And like you yeah. See that little, yeah. That's what I, I wanted. Pictured that. That's what I pictured too. A big paper one, like on on that on that poster board stuff. To me, that's the, exactly what I had. The mind. whiteboard was so that like like for example, he lost 0.8 pounds, right? You could draw the tiny little bottom on the thermometer. If he gains 0. 0.8 pounds, you put your finger on it, you wipe it. <laughs> <off>. <laughs> yeah. No, that's gonna be the embarrassing part. Like if that happens, you know, like like doing it in like bootleg tight ways, like like just like stapling some white construction paper <laughs> over the red That'd be awesome. or something like that. A little white out, just draw white out. There. <laughs> like yeah, that's about a pound. That's about a pound of white out. I just <laughs> yeah, but oh, that, that white out would be entertaining too. But um, the, the difference between Wings today and Wings two months ago is you're like, hey, let's brainstorm on this. Let's execute on ideas on how I can modify the sorts of things I do now to make them better. And two months ago, it was, eh, you know, it's so much work to go on my You know mind. what would be interesting, Wings? Here's a video. Here's a video, man. Okay. Every time you eat something or drink something, you take a, you take a picture of it. And then that you could play that like as a slideshow as you talked about your 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 weekly weight loss, and you and you could pinpoint every time you made a mistake and every time you you didn't. That would be a good video. Yeah, and, and right there, you know what the Wings of Redemption would have said two months ago? Ah, that's a lot of pictures. I don't always <laughs> have a camera. You no, know, the first thing I thought about was like I really wouldn't want to take the pictures of me cheating because I'm probably going to cheat tonight. You got to take those pictures because it's not about yeah. it's, look, it's mean, about like, it's, you got to take them because you know yeah, well, you the can't, truth is going to show at the end of the week. You can't put and, four and rice so, cakes up and be like, "Damn, gain four pounds." <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> yeah, but like it, 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 it becomes like an issue of like ah, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I think like, it'll help you face your problem because, yeah. dude, I, I heard you in your video. You're like, "Yeah, I slipped a little here and a little there," but you know, you slipped like five thousand calories. Yeah, I slipped, I slipped twice, and yet yeah, it ain't in 5,000 calories. It's more like 3,000. Well, 3,000 calories is about a pound. Yeah, and like I wasn't happy with the weight loss, but at least I lost weight even though it wasn't a solid pound. Next time. Yeah, and I, like I won't – I don't know. Like I figured 400 is the number I'm going for right now. The thing is you can live on Big Macs and still lose weight. I like you can. You can eat if you just eat three Big Macs a day and three medium French fries and two sweet teas, you'll still lose weight. That's more than eight right now, and I, I'm, I can't wait. But it's not. You're eating more than that. That's why I suggest the pictures because I've done this myself before because because I thought it'd be a cool like little video, not for weight loss or anything. I just thought it'd look cool to see what I was eating because I've I've seen this on YouTube when they take a picture of like their entire month's worth of food and families and stuff. And uh, like how it differs from country to country, but if you really stop and think, there's so many little snacks and like half meals that you had throughout the day that you just forget about. There's tens of thousands of calories that are g getting swept under the rug here somewhere. All right, I'll do it. For the, I'll do it next week. From All this right. day, next week and Wednesday, I'll have a slide for you, Kyle. I'm interested. I think it would be cool, and, and you know, I would do it just like, um, like on my Apple TV. Like it plays, like you know, it plays all my pictures in a little slideshow, you know, one after another with a little, uh, you know, it's just cheesy, but it looks cool. Throw some music on that and do a commentary and be like, yeah, this week I lost, you know, two and a half pounds. That's not where I want to be, but that's still a lot better than last week. I think my main mistakes were having two bot two two French fries this day and having eight cokes this day. I definitely got to cut the cokes down, you know. That'd the be a videos good video. aren't about your success. The videos are about your honesty and your struggles and, and 
you know, wings. Yeah, majority. but you, you know just as well as me that when you have those struggles, there's somebody there to jump on your back about them. I'm familiar with that. And you know what you got to do <laughs> immediately, Wings, on Twitter and shit? you got to block those people immediately. I do. Like, I don't right. know if you noticed, my Twitter blow-ups are way down. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's kind of starting to bother me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I a, lot of it came, a lot of it came when I got out of depression. Did you guys see my tweet, my tweet today before the show? Yeah, I, I got a little <laughs> mad. <laughs> before I clicked the link, I got a little bit mad. <laughs> I told everyone that they canceled Painkiller already in favor of a Minecraft live stream. <laughs> and then I was like, before you reply, watch this video that explains it. And, and the video is 30 seconds. It ends with, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I entertained myself. Uh, and you know there was that. a post immediately on the Painkiller already subreddit. There, oh, I was like, you check it out. I gave less than 60 seconds and it was up there. They were all over it, but... And you knew the guy was the, the guy was creating the post as the video was playing, and then he's like, "Ah, oh. it was fun. It was fun." I've been biting myself to, to repeat some of the trolls. There's like there's a certain YouTube commentator right now making fun of me, and I so want to make videos making fun of him back. Nah, don't let him starve. Mm. I know. I, all I'll do is help him. It'll can you write his name himself. in the chat? Yes, I can. Please be who I think it is. T. Martin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is he going to call your mama? <laughs> I just want you to know it's not really T. Woody, have you seen anything out of his mother on Twitter about this? <laughs> You'd be the one to know. <laughs> the only one to know. <laughs> she's gotten a lot of followers since I started following her. Oh, that's absurd. Uh, I wonder how I she used feels to follow, about it. People know this story, so I'll tell it and fast forward. But I used to follow no one. And I got so much hate. What he's so arrogant. He's so conceited. He doesn't follow anyone. He think the truth. I, I just look at my connect. That's all I do. So in a way to shut up all the haters, I followed T Mart's mom, and now it's awesome. People are like, Woody, <laughs> how come you only follow T Mart's mom?" I said, "Look, I checked out all the Twitter accounts, and I picked the best one. That's it. You know, if I'm not following you, you're not as good as T Mart's mom. That's it. But uh, but wings that guy." has uh, bigger financial issues than you. So just enjoy his heart. Oh, I know he does, because yeah. I know what I make, and he makes like a third of what I make. Yeah, yeah. That guy, <laughs> he quit his job in hopes of being the next Wings and fell short. So uh, I would just sit back and smile. Yeah. Don't give him attention. Just let him, let him struggle. Yeah, but it'd be so easy, dude. That's like two or three easy videos. Uh, right now he's drowning in quicksand. Yeah. Let him. <laughs> Let yeah, him. Two or three easy videos are going to extend out that for a month yeah. on his end. That's going to give him ammunition. Just you know. Absolutely. And that guy, he's not bothered by haters. He loves <laughs> it. He's like a pig in the mud. Uh, the idea wasn't to make him to bother him. The idea was to just show him I can do it too. Yeah, no. See, my theory on this stuff with these haters is I don't attack them with the little guns, dislikes on their videos. I attack them with the big guns, financial troubles, right? There are people who try to make a living by hating Woody will ruin them. your fucking credit. <laughs> no, I'm not ruining your credit. I'm just not giving you the YouTube career that you want to have. You're trying to have a YouTube career based on hating me. I don't see your shit. You know, you're trying to have a YouTube career based on talking about me. You want to get big at the next Woody Exposed video? There's nothing to expose. I'm just working my ass off on YouTube. Try doing that. So I don't give these guys the attention they're looking for. Let them fucking drown. Let them go. It, 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 it's an act of mercy for me to make a video about you and, and you know do this battle and whatever. No, 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 no. If I really want to hurt you... I will let you suffer in lack of attention. That and that's the weapon I pull out all the time now. You, you will not get what you want by doing a Woody Hate video. All you're gonna do is make yourself look like a jackass, and that's what you need to do too. That guy makes himself yeah. look like a jackass all the time, and he's over there wondering how he's gonna pay his heating bill this winter. Good, good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, uh, you know, that was all cold blooded. I'm listening to it. I know the track record, but at the same time, I know what it's like to not have a heater, and it sucks. 
Well, you see, the thing is, I don't want to be anybody's victim. You know, I, I root the best for everybody, unless you're picking on me. You picking on me? Let's go. You and me. Let's have a financial off, fucker. <laughs> you ain't gonna win this shit. My truck's worth four grand. <laughs> you know? It goes to show you, though, like, God, trucks are such a bad depreciation item. It sucks that way. Yeah. Like I'm sure you, I'm sure you paid more than four grand for it. <laughs> yeah, years ago I paid. I'll tell you, I paid um, probably about twenty two thousand. Yeah, I think it was twenty one, but then you tax and books and whatever. Maybe twenty two is a good guess. And uh, I had the loan finished in nine months, and I haven't paid another penny toward it since. And um, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to go talking about money all the time or anything, but you know, when I look at my haters, dude. My truck's worth four grand, and the people at Wells Fargo's eyes widen when I make another deposit. Fuck you. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I go ahead, talk about me. Chip New topic. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> New topic. Thank you, Kyle. I think you're rescuing me. Uh, I think it's about time to wild card it. No, fuck that. No, no we we're talking about ways. We got a ways to go, bro. We've bro. got a ways to go. I'm in it for at least another 45 minutes here. All right. Let me uh let me let me grab another soda. But yeah, anyway, don't give haters attention. Let them uh let them fail at YouTube. If I'm by doing way, my math right, is, based uh, on if anyone is wondering, this episode is sponsored by RC Cola Cherry. No, it's not. <laughs> my part of this episode is being sponsored by RC Cola Cherry, the best soft drink I've ever had. I think. What do you have there, Wings? What what, what is oh, that? Oh, cool. that looks like the that looks awful. Is that a dent puller? Dent puller? puller? Yeah, that's what oh. Woody bought me two years ago. Oh yeah! That was his Christmas present. Yeah. Have you ever? Now let me be honest. I don't honest. think I've ever seen it. I had it direct shipped to him. Yeah. Be honest. Have you ever considered using that in some sort of sexual way? No, I haven't. I've actually helped a lot of people out with it. Have you? Which is work. Every time somebody comes by with a dent in their car, I'm like, Hey, I got a dent puller. Let's try it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those guys who get excited to use stuff I have. Does it work? It it works pretty good. Like it, like I have a dent in my Silverado, and that that's what reason Woody bought it. We tried like the hot and cold. Like we took like a can of air and sprayed it, and made it really cold, and used a hair dryer to try to blow it real hot, and it didn't work. Not like these you see on the YouTube videos. So like two weeks later, this shows up <laughs> at yeah. the front door. And I don't know about you, but I love getting packages from the UPS. Uh huh. It's like Christmas time every time. <laughs> It's like, oh, dead puller. And did you immediately go out and try it? Or just I did, it? and, it, and it, it took probably 70% of the dead out. Yeah, the only thing out. that was left was the door, where it actually hit the frame of the door, and it kind of folded on it. Yeah. If, unless you're looking for it now. Right, which is kind of the most you expect from one of these things, right? Like, you yeah. Know, it takes your dent, makes it 70% better. Awesome. You know, now it's next to nothing. And in, in a rare cases, it'll make it 100% better. As if it's right in the middle somewhere. Yeah, if, if it, like uh, if a body panel has some sort of shape to it, then and that dent is there, then it's tough. But if it's right in a flax section, like the middle of your hood, oftentimes it just goes great. Dent talk. Dent talk. All right, Kyle, you want a new topic? Give yes. Me one. Yes. Give me one. Oh, I have to come up with it? I, oh, dude, How am I, am I carrying supposed to... my weight? <laughs> no, no. I think this is ridiculous. Hey, I came I... up with concussions and stuff. That lasted for about dude, five there, minutes. There's, well, there's it's clear. The clearly, the guy hung himself. Hang on. No, 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 no. Hey, clearly, we need to go to the Wings of Redemption lightning round. Oh, Oh, yeah. damn it. Now, let me grab a soda, and I've got a pen and pad, and I think in five minutes we'll, uh, we'll have something to go on here. I'll be right back. Well, while we're waiting on this, why don't we talk about the Cleveland guy hanging himself in prison? Oh, yeah. Uh, Ariel Sharon, something like Ariel that. Ariel sure Sharon. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, I got three women. That's not his name. People are going to get so pissed. Here. I've just been, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but periodically throughout the show, I'll purposely just say stupid things about about widely known facts just to try to piss off people that should be <laughs> pissed notice. off. That's the exact things. reason I agreed with him. Yeah. You're like, I'm so angry that I can't listen to it anymore. Like you, if that bothers you that much, bro, you should go talk to somebody. Yeah, about let's, talk, let's talk about something boring. So Shaka Khan hung himself. Is that what we <laughs> <said>? Shaka Khan, <laughs> Shaka Khan. 
Yeah, Kevin Costner was there masturbating, I heard. <laughs> that's that's the truth. All right, wings, yeah. lightning round quest. Yeah, wings, lightning round question. I'm at zero. Uh, oh, I had one earlier. What the hell was it? Um, but yeah, w- w- Wings, what's the story on why he hung himself? Did he leave a note or anything? I don't know. He's in an article. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, he probably... Hey, already. He had... His name's Ariel had, Castro, by the way. Yeah, he had, uh, he had the rest of his life in prison. I, right? He was facing... He wasn't going to get out. And those guys in general pop usually don't do very well. But, um... It, well, it goes this. Castro's event said they wouldn't speculate on the circumstances that led to the 53-year-old sex fiend hanging out of his prison cell. A toxicology report is pending, but the neighbor is convinced that he took the coward's way out, adding he's happy he's gone, and now we can't ask for a better appeal. We can't ask for a better appeal? What? That's what it says. Who said that? This, uh, the Daily News, powered by Yahoo. No, but was that a quote, the now we can't ask for a better appeal? It was a quote. It's got quotations around it. What? So, so wait, they, they were unhappy with the sentencing? I think it, what, it, what he's talking about is the guy that lived next to him in the prison cell was mm. happy that he killed himself and that uh, mm. he can't ask for an appeal or some bullshit. I don't oh, know. Oh, now he can't ask for an appeal. Got it. Yeah. Probably asked this one before, but I'm just gonna ask it anyway. Monster in Life is denounced as a coward death after committing suicide in a prison cell. Like, why, why are they making this big deal out of this guy, dude? I understand he did something viciously horrible. It's almost like the Trayvon Martin crap. Like, Wait, what who? happened to Trayvon Martin was small in the in the world of crime. Lefty, how many questions do you have? Uh, I'm just about finishing my first. Finish my second. Kyle's at zero. I'm always at one. You're at one? Of course. Oh, there was one I had earlier that was just beautiful, and I forgot it. Shit. I like both of mine so far. I think they're pretty good. Mm-hmm. So, um, Lefty, what do you think about the Braves' chances of going to the World Series this year? Oh, I haven't been keeping up uh, with the MLB this season. Where are they at? First place, 20 games up. Okay, well, so they're in the playoffs. Uh, going to be top C. They'll probably make it to the NLCS. I, I feel like, I don't know, I'm scared of the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are the World Series yep. champions this year. Mm-hmm. They're scary, right? And it's, I, I can see that happening, too. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I really want to see the Braves win another one. It's been I since 1995. Gobble. Uh, the Braves, they win consistently. But they lose games they shouldn't lose consistently as well. Like we get, we got beat by the Marlins to lose our, to lose our 15 game win streak this season. The Marlins, they have an average of 1.2 runs per game, Ugh. and they clowned us with seven. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I want to see the Braves win another World Series. I mean, I've only got to see one so far in my life. <laughs> And it's like, oh man, this might be the team to do it, but dude, our starting pitching is just so so crappy. And like, the Dodgers are hot, and the Cardinals are on fire right now. The Reds are on a comeback. I mean, the National League's just tough to win in right now. I think it's going to be Cardinals Dodgers for the finals, and they'll probably end up playing Red Sox. I know. I'm, I'm glad y'all chiming in. Nobody baseball following? No, I'm not at all. I, I, and I'm also I've been following it. My fourth question. Yeah, same here. We lost Lefty. We're at Colombo now. Yeah. Well, that usually means he muted his stuff. Like, or, like turned off his monitor or his camera to do something. But that's okay. I'm almost... He's know. probably smoking that cigar again. Hmm. I didn't know Lefty smoked. I think he said it was his first cigar in ages, like implying he's not a smoker. Kyle, how's the quitting going? Honestly, good. Yeah, I don't good. smoke much at all. Okay. To Kyle, you should take a picture every time he's light one up. Mmm. I did. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even gonna address that. <laughs> I have to... At the end of the week, I'd have a picture of like ten cigarettes. 
But, you know. I have four. That's so bad. Um, Kyle, what are you up to? Uh, I, I'm working on it. Okay. I feel like when Lefty gets back, go. Mine aren't too bad this week. I, I kind of <laughs> like my questions. Lefty, how many do you have so far? Uh, I've got two in my head right now. Hold on. Mm. Let me write them down. Maybe and that will make it. three. Damn it. Oh, I just seen some bullshit. Look at that. Doug called me a, mu- a month ago asking me how much I take for my truck. And I go, 33. And he goes, wow, that's a little bit more. I, want- I was thinking more about 25. I'm like, no, the price is 33. I guess out of my league. And now he buys a $40,000 Dodge Ram. Uh, turbo diesel or Cummins? No, it's a Hemi. Forty grand for a Hemi? No, dude, dude, they're forty, fifty grand for a half ton. That's... I, I'm out of date on these prices. I should go to the Silverado dealership, the Chevy dealership, and, and, and just look at the new ones sitting there. And I won't be telling a lie. I'll tell the dealer <laughs> I'm not here to buy. And Kyle's like, "That's your initial lie, I'm not baby." Like here, here's a picture of it. But you are. <laughs> no, I really, I would consider it a personal failing if I if I couldn't hold out until it was time to get a new truck. What if the time is now, sir? What if my what daughter's if, not old enough to drive my current truck? Yeah, no, what that, if the conditions right now are so advantageous that you simply cannot pass up on the deal? Then, sir, are you telling me that you still would not move forward? <laughs> Uh, those conditions would have to be. Pre- Are you a fool, sir? Or do you just hate me? I can find <laughs> another salesman if need be. I am. I guess I just hate you. Find another salesman. <laughs> Are we ready for the lightning round? I have five now. Hey, Woody, click this link. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it will harden you up very quickly. Just scroll down. I didn't. I didn't cherry pick it or nothing. This is just. I popped in truck. I popped in Silverado at my local dealership. What am I looking for? There's no Silverado on this page. The very bottom one? Uh, the very bottom one on my page is a Chevy Express cargo van. It's 2014 oh, Camaro. It's well, nice. Use that little thing right there. Click type truck model Silverado 1500. Okay. Um, it might not have transferred over when I clicked it. When I sent you the quick link. It, it didn't, so I'll change that. Oh, the top one's a 50. Well, damn. All these things are between you 40 scroll and... down. The, the lowest one for me is a $40,000 2014 Silverado. Is that what I'm looking for? Yeah, I mean, like, the cheapest you can probably get at that dealership is 35 That's a two-wheel drive Silverado. That's not even a truck. That's a, that's a station wagon with the back missing. It, it, it does... <laughs> I mean, if it ain't got no transfer case, it ain't a truck. Tell them, Wings. Right. It, I, for, I, I can't buy a non-four-wheel drive truck. I, I get scared if I even think about it. I, like, what I, happens when I get a fl- – what happens if I bog down? I mean, I have testicles. What am I going to do with a two-wheel drive truck? <laughs> like, Tell what them, happens Wings. when I need the four-wheel of traction? Exactly. I – Like, I've used four-wheel drive in my truck just to pull people out of ditches because the two-wheel drive wouldn't cut it. I pulled a guy out of wet grass once because the two-wheel drive wouldn't cut it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't even a ditch. It was wet grass on an incline. And, you know, he called me up, and uh, he couldn't have found someone more qualified to help him. I I, another him. thing I like, I don't know if your truck has it. My truck, Both of my trucks have four-wheel auto. So, like, when it's raining real heavy, it'll kind of almost act like a, almost like an all-wheel drive system where the front wheels will kick on when you lose traction. Mine doesn't have that. I have an old school transfer case with a stick on it, but what you describe sounds awesome. My wife has full time all wheel drive in her Forerunner. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Like I've seen her get on the gas. Like like maybe she wants to make a left, and either the light just turned red or there's an oncoming car, and she wants to hustle. She doesn't even worry about it. She just hits the gas and go because it's four wheel drive. A two wheel drive truck will spin out, not go as fast as you expect it to, and you know, there's issues. I would love to have some sort of traction control because two-wheel drive trucks peel out way too easily. Are we ready for the lightning round? Yes. So how are we doing this? Are we going 
one question and then the next guy, or all the questions yeah. and then the next guy? Let's uh, let's let's alternate. Okay, I have five though, so I might you know do a couple in a row at the end. I have five as well. A lefty, what do you have? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, perfect. Strong. Lefty, question one. Um. Wings, what is your favorite sexual position not that is not missionary or doggy? I can't do any other positions that are <laughs> missionary or doggy. You can, you can't, girls can't climb on top? That would be missionary. That's, no, no that's missionary. missionary is you on top. Her on her back. Oh, I thought I thought it counted both ways. Oh, I Negative. can see why you'd say that. You know, any position. The only one that wouldn't be a variant of missionary or doggy would be reverse cowgirl, right? Like according to Wing's mm-hmm. logic, I see reverse right. cowgirl sucks, especially if you date like larger women, like I do, mm-hmm. because they put a lot of their weight on you at that point. All right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, next up, Kyle or me. What horror movie bad guy would you want to be, and why? What horror movie bad guy would I want to be, and why? Lex Luthor, because he's stinking rich. All right. Good one. If you could get away with murder, would you do it? If so, do you have the number one guy picked out? Let me think about this, because Lex Luthor isn't a horror movie. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. This is a lightning round, Okay, sir. well, we'll, we'll yeah, you, question you, right. you got a question wrong. No points will be, no points will be awarded. <laughs> if you could get away with murder, would you do it? If so, do you have the number one guy picked out? Yes. Yes and, and yes. yes. All right, lefty. Um, game you're excited for most this fall slash winter season. That would that would ask me like I actually kept up with games this fall and winter season, so I don't have any. All right, Kyle. Have you? Um, I'm sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. Oh, have you gotten everything back from your uh, ex girlfriend? No, you I have not. What are you missing? I am missing a camera still. How much is it worth? How much is the camera worth? Uh, probably about three hundred dollars used. Okay, so that's not a total disaster. When you cheat on your diet, do you hide the act of eating from other people? Yes, I do. Lefty. If you cheat on your diet tonight, what will you eat? There's only two choices: Wendy's or McDonald's. Kyle. I have a suggestion for your food. We'll get to that later. <laughs> okay. Um, would you? Uh... Would you be in a porno for five thousand dollars? Yes. Would if you... anyone is out there who has pornography connections, Wings of Redemption will be in your porno for five thousand dollars. He has nearly half a million subscribers on YouTube, and how many Twitter followers? Eighty-eight thousand. We'd all buy that porno just that to see. We'll get views. Mm-hmm. All right, Wings. Would you trade your beard for hair like mine? <laughs> no. Your hair right there has too much upkeep. <laughs> it doesn't, dude. I wake up with my hair like this. <laughs> it never moves. My hair like this never moves either. All right. Fair enough. Uh, if weight weren't an issue, would you be a colonist on Mars? One of the first? Would you be a Martian? Yeah. You can never come back. Yeah. yeah you're probably not coming back. Fuck Earth. Nice. Fuck Earth. That needs to be a meme. Kyle? Um, if you were in sort of a survival situation, how many days without food would you go before you were willing to eat someone? You want the technical term or the actual? There's a dead body laying there. I want to know how many days are going to pass before you're going to start eating. Oh, motherfucker. Look here. I'm going to be dead serious with you on this one. I'm going to do about hours. <laughs> as soon as I realize I can't get that motherfucking fire going like I like it and then the squirrel isn't going to come down here I'm going to be eating that dead body he might skip lunch <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I'm going to be looking at this reasoning like you know I'm, that squirrel's going to be mighty fucking tasty but if I don't have the energy to get that squirrel I ain't never going to eat get it this body right here can give me some energy uh, I'll eat that body before I put a damn slug Dude. in my mouth. It's, it's me. All right. When you look at a new girlfriend, what's the number one thing you look at in her? Oh, what's my Lord. It's going to sound so fucking shallow. I mean, I mean, and a lot of this comes from pre- previous relationships. That The number one thing I look for is stability and career. Okay. That doesn't seem shallow to me. 
But anyway, uh, Lefty. Uh, to you, Wings, what is the funniest aspect of creationism? Creation. The penis. No, that's 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 not that's not creationism. No, the creationism is the the Earth that's is actually only three thousand years old and. Oh, dinosaurs. How they deal with dinosaurs? We yeah, talked about the Velociraptor that. last week. <laughs> I proved my point, and you were. I thought you were talking about intelligent design. I'm like, the penis is not intelligently designed. It's a sewer system and an entertainment system all rolled into one. Good point. I, don't I like think we veered off topic. Are on the outside, but they should be somewhere safe. It's bullshit. Um, it's Kyle. Last question, I think. Are you available for private appearances? Yes. So if someone wanted to hire you to come to their birthday party, you could make that happen. It all depends how far it is, yeah. So let's say for every 50 miles from your home, how much would it cost? Oh, well. Fact, we're, we're, we're talking about a four, we're, we're going to need you for three full hours. The hours would be irrelevant. It'll all be rolled up into the same package. But like... <laughs> I'd probably for for fifty miles of files it's gonna cost me about ten dollars worth of gas both ways. There's twenty right there per fifty miles. So say on average if you're two hundred miles away, that's gonna be what? It's gonna be like eighty bucks. Yeah. And then And then you know another, you something for your time as well. So yeah, be I another two hundred some you, dollars. You, so let's just say that I'm about three hours away from Myrtle Beach and I want you to come to my birthday party on Saturday. How much is that going to run me? About three hundred bucks, because three hours away is probably going to be. I drive about sixty miles an hour. And and you'll and you'll play split screen Call of Duty with me. Yeah. And we can take pictures. If I want you to, will you curse me out? Yes. Because <laughs> you're not getting the whole experience unless that happens to you. Will you break my controller if I ask you to? <laughs> it all depends on how old you are. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm a grown ass man who's paying three hundred dollars for you to come to my house, will you Wiggs, will you ask, Wiggs, will you ask me why I streamed that shit? <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, guys. Wings, round this up to five hundred dollars because there's probably somebody watching the show right now who will actually pay you that kind of money. Well, if it's like three hours, it probably would be five hundred dollars because you got thinking. You know, I got six hours devoted just to driving. So, and then if I spend any length of time there, two to three hours, that's a nine-hour day. And then I gotta take in losses, accountability. I gotta take in gas, maintenance, oil. Accountability. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, accountability costs money, dude. What does that even mean? <laughs> Don't ask. It's, dude, it's, it's one of his expenses. <laughs> you get just a line idea. item on an invoice. Just accept it and pay the motherfucker. You get the accountability idea. charge. Two hundred dollars. <laughs> And there better be food there. I love when you when you use words that don't make sense. <laughs> right, it's wait. my favorite thing. <laughs> this is the last question in the lightning round. Uh, <sighs> would you trade the chaos in your house for peace and quiet? No. No. There it is. Nice. Another successful lightning round. So here's what you want to get. You want to go to Wendy's, and you want to get a baked potato, and you want to get everything on that motherfucker. They get chili, cheese, sour cream. And uh, it's a it's a lot of food, but it's really only like 600 calories, 700 calories. Whereas if you eat like a you know a couple hamburgers and fries and soda, you're up you at 1,200. Do you actually believe I eat a couple hamburgers, Kyle? People do. How many do you eat? I usually just get a combo meal. I don't even supersize it. I won't rat him out, but I know a big guy who's not wings. And one of the things that he does is. When he comes home from work, the family eats dinner together, and he'll stop at McDonald's, eat like a meal, like a Big Mac combo thing, before dinner. And that, to me, is like unthinkable, but to him, it's a regular practice. I do I mean, that. I've too. done something like that. I mean, I've ate dinner, and then got hungry like two hours later, went and got something. Okay. But. But like the big one with me is like hiding it. Like you said, you asked would I hide food? Like yeah, that's that's definitely happens. Like you're ashamed of it. Like you, you're like oh right. I mean I don't want people to see me eating this. So I'm gonna go sit in a parking lot, eat this food, and then go home, and then throw the bag away at like a gas station. Damn, that's some spy level shit just to get a hamburger. <laughs> yeah. 
I guess. I that's mean, why. It, that's why you do the. When you'll you'll accept accountability. Yeah. When you do the when you take pictures of whatever you eat or drink. So let me ask you this: Who's got the best fast food hamburger, and who's Who got the best, the best fast food hamburger and French fries? It could be different places. Can I do, can I break it down based on sandwich? Um, sure. Why not? There's chicken sandwiches and there's no, just burgers, just burgers. It's all about the burgers and fries. Honestly, make like chicken better. No, actually, Central Park has the best fries. I don't know if you have those there. No, I've never heard of Central Park. We're going national chains here, Wings. <laughs> I know, right? Central like, Park is a regional chain. Bullshit. It's not doing very well. <laughs> Give me that junior they regional bullshit. They're national chain, but they haven't been able to expand beyond Conway just yet. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> there's there's only one. Have you been? But they've there's been two, the there's two of them in Conway, so there's got to be more. All right, what is what is this business called? It's called Central Park. Central so Park. what are they, what kind of fries are they? Are they so there's like, lots they're like of, really do they look like McDonald's fries or do they look more like uh, Hardee's fries or do they look like uh, they're kind of like curly fries from Arby's, but they're explain Central Fry, Fry, Fries parts. Wow, that's got like really a uh, like a home fry almost, just with. Uh, damn, what is it? Old Bay seasoning or not? Old oh yeah, like that red stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Nice okay. Do it. Yeah. They are probably some of the best fries I've ever had. So, all yeah. Right, so do the burgers, wings. The burgers. Oh. Chain fast food, best burgers. Hardee's. Yeah, Whatever. probably Hardee's. Hardee's does have the best burger. Yeah. That Angus I, burger. Yeah. The, the, the um, mushroom Swiss is probably their best one. I mean, it's all opinionated, but they oh, yeah. all together their burgers pound for pound are better than everybody else's. Yep. Yeah, I think so too. Although Wendy's is good in my opinion. I like um, Wendy's as well, and like fries are obviously McDonald's. Well, other than Central Park, we're doing national. Nah, that's, that's, in my case, the best fries are um, the curly fries from Arby's, or um, mm -hmm. if you've got Zaxby's where you are, because those are basically crinkle fries with yeah, uh, that base Zaxby's seasoning in the stuff south, on them. And uh, uh, if it's not that, then it's probably Wendy's. Wendy's has good fries, I think. I don't like Wendy's fries. They're like they hollow. The sea, dude, they got the sea salt on them. They're 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 big. Good stuff. Burger King fries are good cold. That's about the only other time. Burger King sucks. Well, Burger King has yeah, onion. The burgers. fries are good cold. <laughs> Burger King is like the worst restaurant ever. Dude, the Whopper is one hell of a hamburger. It is delicious. It is, but like the service, we we do you. Their Italian all, chicken sandwich is a bad. You could be the only car in the drive-thru in the Conway Burger King, and you'll be there 15 minutes. Yeah, I don't go to Burger King. Uh, I actually, the only one I go to is Wendy's, unless it's like a you know, weird, long travel situation. And I try to go to Wendy's as little as possible, because I associate it with guilt. Like, it's just not healthy food. Yeah, we went. That, that's where we stopped both times when we were driving. It was at a damn Wendy's. Yeah. <laughs> and I really wanted to on the second time, because they had those awesome soda machines. Those soda machines are amazing. You guys have seen the new soda machines? Where you, like, I think they're called Coca-Cola Freestyles. You build your own yep. formula? They have like 90 flavors in there. And what they do is they add like peach or lemon or like cherry, orange vanilla. or cherry or strawberry or whatever. So all of a sudden it's you know like, did you even know Strawberry RC was a choice? It is. And you know, you like, all right, I want a Strawberry RC. I want to try that. These soda machines themselves are a draw to a restaurant. Yeah. I would definitely go to Wendy's over pretty much anywhere else just for that soda machine. I definitely want my soda from there. I want that cherry root beer. Cherry root beer? That's awesome. You, yeah. You don't get that all everywhere. No. You but gotta you, make it on my own. Yeah. And, and the, the, and <laughs> like everyone watches everyone else's choice. It becomes like a spectator event. Like, oh, I'm behind Kyle. I wonder what he's gonna get. You know, I don't think that at regular fountain machines. but I am... <laughs> I will say this. I was I was talking I was talking about you the other day. You you mentioned the Wendy's trip, so that I rem, I, I remember this. And my my girlfriend and I were talking about the ability to sort of censor yourself when you're around little kids. Uh -huh. And I was because she was cursing in front of these kids at this party, which there shouldn't have been kids at the party we were at. But that's neither here nor there. But she was cursing and she had to catch herself. And I was like, Woody can't stop himself at all. I was like, we were in line at Wendy's, and he's dropping some serious language, and I'm just kind of like, ner like pulling at my collar and looking around nervously. <laughs> I swear, it's not like I curse all day long or anything. This was a very exciting soda machine. 
It's it's. He, <laughs> we were like, talking about something that, that that we were you know you were passionate about, and it got it got serious. The soda machine. You're passionate well, about soda. It was it was it was during that same amount of time, and he you know he dropped a few four letter words, and and, and there's some <laughs> yeah. kids nearby, and I was just like ah. Uh, don't feel bad, point, Woody. I, I drop language in front of kids all day. I don't mean to, and it, I swear it's not like I do it all the time. But what Kyle's telling is a true story. I, I was, it was yeah. it was great. I, I thought it was hilarious. And you caught yourself. You were like, ah, I probably shouldn't be saying this, but fuck cock shit, damn. <laughs> it, was like, it was like you couldn't stop yourself. You turned into Tourette's Man, into Tourette's man for a... You had, you, you had had like a three-hour nap, and then all of a sudden you were at Wendy's about to get some sugar in your system, and you were just jacked. <laughs> uh, I'm boring. I go to those freestyle machines and get Coke. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, man. that's terrible. No, I, You're missing out on orange root beer. I don't so, want orange root beer. Okay. I want so, Coke. My favorite drink is root beer. I fucking love root beer. I'm a red. I am a root beer connoisseur. The best kind of root beer is Virgil's uh, special edition. It's got a Bavarian nutmeg in it. It's fucking delicious. It's this <laughs> microbrewery. It was voted like beverage of the year at some prestigious conference. It's awesome. I can't remember you get, the root beer I like. They make a very good vanilla soda. And they come in like an old school glass bottle. They're only sold in six packs. IBC so, or yeah, what's the other option? Um, there's one that's like A uh, and W. It'd be IBC then. I think it's IBC actually. Yeah, uh, the the bottle doesn't have a label. It's just glass, clear glass. Yeah, but it's it's yeah, it is IBC. I'm looking at. Well, it. not clear glass. I'm sorry, but right, the yeah, clear, glass clear glass is on the vanilla, and they make um oh black cherry. Their black cherry is the best. Black cherry thing. soda. Yeah, it's really good. It's, it's almost too sweet, though. Oh, I'm lightweight. You just can't handle your sugar. Root beer oh talk. Root, no, I like root beer talk. We need Joe Lozon for root beer talk. He's a big fan, too. Mm. Uh, I think me and him both agree that the, one of the best root beers is Barks. B-A-R-Q-S. Um, that's that's probably my favorite like it's gas too station root beer. for me. I don't think it's mainstream at all. Oh, that root beer is way too mainstream. You gotta go root IBC or... I, IBC doesn't have the the flavor. It's it. Barks has a. It really. Their their slogan is Barks has bite, and it does. It's got a. It's it's got a good bite to it. It's, it's delicious. Uh, I, I just see you as some sort of like mainstream root beer guy oh, pretending see. to be gourmet. <laughs> oh my God. But you know who has the advertising dollars? Barks. So. My portion of this part of PKA is brought to you by Barks <laughs> or Virgil's. If, if 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 your father happens to own Virgil's root beer, I am on board a hundred and ten percent. I would do voiceovers for just about anybody. Are, are you looking for voiceover work, Lefty? Like, I've been thinking about it. I, I I think I need a better mic. I need a uh, a condenser like this. Dynamic microphones just don't have the range. That uh, a condenser mic or does, and the, or condenser mic, and um, that's what you need, what you need to. Stuff because like like one, you're, everything you do is spoken voice, and you're not doing any instruments. It just doesn't have the range, you say. Yeah, it yeah, it's weird. It's or maybe not range responsiveness, just the ability to to capture every part of my voice with everything I say. Because you know, I could get really deep with it, or I can. They're just. I don't know how to describe it, but on a condenser, I sound richer and fuller. Or everybody does. That's just me. I'm not anything special. But on a on a condenser mic, you, people tend to sound richer and fuller. The the reason that dynamic yeah. mics are popular is because they're not as uh, they're not as fragile and they're they're generally cheaper. You don't need phantom power. Uh, but so. I mean, dynamic. So are, give us dynamic mics are used in. Uh, applications where budget's not an issue. Rush, Lumb Rush Limbaugh uses a dynamic mic. Robin Quivers uses a dynamic mic. Right, but they they also do a lot. They do radio though, and radio has a. They, there's only so many, you know. There's only so much data they can send, mm -hmm. so they can record. Even if they had condenser mics, they would there would be a um, a drop off. So give us a preview here for the voiceover work. Let's pretend like you're doing Wild Kingdom. There's a lion. He's stalking a. Uh, He's stalking a buffalo. Give us, you know, the stalk, the kill, and the aftermath. And, and stalk you know, like, the kill. But I, I, I can't do it because I just want to pretend like I'm British. I can't do it. Or Australian. Like, 
Can you do a good British or Australian no, accent? I oh, no, I can't. Come on, dude. You got to break out with that Australian accent. <laughs> I, I like. I'll start British, and then I'll become Scottish, and then Irish for a little bit, and then like uh, British, and then maybe a little bit of Christopher Walken, and it's just it's it gets bad I after a while. When I try to, I did I on Wild Kingdom? <laughs> the elusive koala. They spend most of their days hopped up on eucalyptus leaves. They do. Does anybody know that? That apparently the eucalyptus leaves are uh, hallucinogenic and koalas are pretty much always fucked up out of their gourds? You can see it in their eyes. You, you can, but like literally their eyes are like goofy if you look closely. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more frightening than a hopped up koala. I can give you the George Carlin advertising lullaby and to the people that complain about me quoting George Carlin, fuck you! Um, <laughs> you I can well, give Brandon, you a little bit of that. I would like to hear Rendezvous with Death. Do you know it? No, I don't. Google it, like, really fast. Okay. At the speed of light. Oh, God. How is like it's a game show. Uh, there it is. There's Rendezvous. Google should make their own game show that involves contestants using Google to complete tasks. What, Rendezvous with Death, Gears of War? Uh, yeah, it was used in a Gear, Gears of War ad, but it's a, it's a poem from World War One. Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't have anything prepared. See, I've done the George Carlin thing, but I don't know how to read this. I think you, should, you read it really rough, and uh, like uh, like a like an old man who's who's seen a lot, like old like the old man uh, from that uh, Hemingway book, uh, Old Man in the Sea. The old man in the sea, but I'm not old. I'm 26. Tough shit. It's radio. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not an actual voice actor. I just have a nice voice, kind of, maybe. I don't know. Oh, read it. Uh, just let me give a quick read over here. By the way, this is this was one of the best ad campaigns ever. Um, the, uh, the three big games, Halo, um, Gears of War, and uh, I guess you could say Call of Duty, have the best commercials ever. And they're in that order, if you ask me. Um, Call of Duty has decent ads, but they're not nearly on the level of Halo and, and the Gears series. Some of those ads will make you fucking cry. Some of those Halo ads? I don't know how to read. Okay. I'll, re I'll give you the first stanza. How's that? Deal? Deal. Fair enough. I have a rendezvous with death at some disputed barricade when spring comes back with rustling shade and apple blossoms fill the air. I have a rendezvous with death when spring brings back blue days and fair. Damn it, I've never read it before. I'm sorry, I suck. <laughs> if you'd like and to hire maybe. a sucky voice actor, Lefty is a very... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want shit in his thing, but other than that, he's great. This is the first time I've read this script, and you're putting me on the spot, you bastard. You guys, you guys are jerks. It's a poem, it rhymes, come on. <laughs> yeah, but I've never, I've, I've never read it before, and never, ever read it. I'm just giving you a hard time. And, I it's if funny I though. Do better on my first reading. You I, I, I kind of want to see. No, but you have to choose a different stanza because I've already read that one, and your your brain is already like mulling it over on how you'd say it. All right. Okay, I'm gonna find a part. With death and read the second stanza, but I'm not that good. Goddamn right. So. Quality, value, style, service, selection, love, convenience, economy, sales, performance. Rendezvous. It is. It's hard to spell though. Rendezvous. Rendezvous. Is it the first link on Rendezvous with death. Uh, yeah, that's oh, what I got. That's what I clicked. Let me see what I can do. You got to pre-read yours by yourself, right? Yeah, I, I read the... Now. All right, all right, here we go. It may be he shall take my hand, lead me <laughs> into his dark land, and close my eyes and quench my breath. It may be I shall pass him still. I have a rendezvous with death on some scarred slope of battled hill. When spring comes round again this year, and the first meadow flowers appear. That's very nice. It was nice. You sound like the calendar man from Batman Arkham City. <laughs> he had a bad mic technique. All I could hear was the plosives. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. What? <laughs> yeah, that's part of voiceover work, Kyle. You can have the voice, but you got to know how to make love to the microphone. Mm. Mm. God knows Twer were better to be deep. Pillowed in silk and scented down. I'm not like that guy who sponsored us. In blissful sleep, pulse night and pulse, breath to breath, where hushed awakenings are dear. But I've a rendezvous with death at midnight in some flaming town when spring trips north again this year, and I pledge my word and truths, I shall not fail that rendezvous. Did I do all right? Yeah. You didn't fuck up like I did. 
<laughs> I got all the words right. I don't know if yeah. I... Uh... Yeah, whatever. It's good. I'm awesome. That was a, that was a great ad, ad campaign. They played that uh, in... Uh, I think it was the Gears of War 2 ad. Hmm. My, I think my favorite uh, ads, though, were the Halo ones, um, the Believe ones, where they had, like... The ads were basically like Marines who had fought with Master Chief like 40 years prior were in their, like, their 80s and they were in a museum devoted to you know, what Master Chief had done. And it's like such a psychological thing. It's like, wait a minute, you're telling me there's a video game in which I can play this guy that, and, and do these things that are so incredible and amazing that they built a museum about it in the future? <laughs> Did you guys of see course. the Halo movie? I uh, know that that it was I, good. I thought really? it would suck. I was very much engaged in that movie. Movie based on video game? Gosh, everyone knows movies based on video games suck, and video games based on movies suck. But not this time. I really Except Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Like oh yeah, that was. Great I loved movie. it. I loved it. It wasn't for me, but the Halo movie was. I really liked it. Hmm. I liked it, and I saw it on Netflix. Netflix.com slash Woody. Get a free month. And while you're waiting to buffer your Netflix stuff, go play Minecraft at WoodyCraft. <laughs> it better not take long enough to buffer that you play Minecraft. But, but I like well, I, well, I don't know if you don't want to deal with uh, Maybe you've got Wings Internet. There you go. There you go. You got but, a high-ass ping. <laughs> no, I, I saw it on Netflix for real, and I really thought it was good. So. Oh, by the way, uh, they added... Um, what two movies did they add to Netflix this week? Uh, there will be blood, and uh, something else. There will be blood. Is it, it, it? I strongly recommend it if you can appreciate a movie that has a slow pace, but really strong lead acting. Daniel Day Lewis does a does a really really good job, but uh, it it can be slow. I like it a lot. What's the the Netflix original series are hooking me in a really big way. Like I, I swear they're they're approaching HBO in terms of original series now. House of Cards, Orange is the New Black, Arrested Development, um, no, no, the, Hemlock no, Grove. Hemlock Grove wasn't my cup of tea. No, I'm being stick honest on these things. That one wasn't for me. But uh, but yeah, like if I hear that Netflix is doing an original series, it, it it resonates me just like HBO doing one. Like, huh? I wonder if it'll be awesome. And I know for damn sure they'll release it as a binge watch, which I prefer to sleep, you know week after week like Game of Thrones does. Hmm. Is it time for wild card? Yes it is. Wild card. Wild card. <laughs>